May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in Yahweh's sight. He is our strength and our redeemer, and it is in his name, which is his authority, that we pray, praise, proclaim, project, and protect today's message. Aman. Hola, mi nombre, my nombre is Kofi, como esta? Bonjour, shalom, kofi, kofi, sava, ni hao, namaste, osai, enikete, we are, ohio, I see you, kamsa, kamsa, mida, manut, wagwan, aloha, Jambo, mi mini kofi, nina franco, kitana, na wewe, habarigani, aqua ba, matase, etc. Boker tov, boker tab, bakwara tav, varakala, chami hava, shalam, ala chami hava, shabbat shalam, ala chami hava, ah, and I, um, uh, rashan, uh, raishalan, um, um, well, or I'm sorry, uh, well, yes, welcome everybody in Pastor Kofi, Pastor Servant to Christ, where we are always changing lives one mind at a time, but being the voice of the voices and speaking the unspoken. Um, we thank you everybody for coming on. Thank you, ministerial staff, for coming on over from prayer uh, for us that we had for ourselves that we do every Sunday. Um, we appreciate you all, and thank you everybody for attending. One more again, if it's your first time, if it's one time, many, whatever the case might be, we appreciate your presence. Thank you again. Thank you for your prayers for my family as we were doing quite a bit of traveling the last few days. Uh, still st coming back to the same area, but doing quite a bit of traveling. So hopefully all is well with each and every one of you. Thank you for finding us. Um, we know it's been a little more difficult as a recent for you to find us, but we thank you so much. We appreciate you. Um, I don't really have much in the ways of announcements other than just recall that next Saturday, which should be the 30th, uh, we'll be meeting together for our SOC community meeting. And then um, we'll actually probably do that and do the watch party, start the watch party back up on Clapper on Saturday. So we'll we'll kind of do both, uh, put both together. So if you want to just kind of recall that, I reached out to the brothers who are on the men's committee for trying to do our men's meetup. We'll try to do something on Monday. And I haven't sent out a message, but to the ministerial staff, it won't be our ministerial staff meeting. But this Thursday coming up, we'll try to excuse me, do a little uh, teaching on some social media stuff, especially those who are going to be preaching on Facebook um, to help out with that. To, to make sure that we're staying committed to giving a message every other week on Facebook. So um, we'll try to have that stuff for you guys as well. So please, man, please, sir, if you can kind of govern yourselves accordingly. Other than that, everything is still as is planned. But today, today is day number 12 of our uh, Removing the Leaven from our home series, and we're going to get into that right now. So uh, we give our honor and praise once again to the Most High, Yechava Elohim. We give our praise and honor to him for my wife, the Honorable Amma, who lives a life to save it to be honored. As always, you can check her out on TikTok, YouTube, her website, and Pinterest at Bloom and Flourish, not A and D, the letter N, Bloom and Flourish. She is a healer, herbalist, chemist, and biologist, biologist by degree. And we thank everybody for being on with us today. All righty. So we're going to go to a couple of scriptures. I actually got them saved to make sure that uh, I... Uh, that we can go there together. So we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23 first, and then we're going to jump over to Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. So if you have your Bibles, your devices, whatever it is, and you'd like to be able to turn there, feel free to go there. Um, once again, we're going, to, we're going to go to 1 Samuel 15, 23, and then we're going to go over to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 20. I'm on. Once again, we're going to go first to, uh, I'm sorry, y'all, I'll be right back. I thought I had something over here in the other room. Sorry about that. Coming right back. Um, uh, all right. Galatians chapter. I'm sorry. Excuse me. First, we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. And then we're going to jump over to Galatians 
chapter uh, 5, verse 20. While you're turning there in your Bibles, once you have it, say amen. Say, I got it. Say, I'm with you. While we're turning, let me say hello to everybody real quick. How you doing? If you're joining us on the podcast later on from Clapper, if you're on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, we appreciate your presence. Um, and uh, let's say hello to everybody. How you doing, Sister Renee, Sister Joy, uh, Sister Pearl, uh, Book Plus Nothing, Sister Dawn, Minister Steven, Darius, Monica, Charles, uh, Char Charles Greer, excuse me, we got a bunch of Charles, Charles is Charles on here. Uh, I guess it's Charles is right, plural. <laughs> How you doing, Oak? Uh, Pastor Ricky, uh, Darius, I said Darius twice. Sorry, Alyssa or Lisa, please forgive me if it's Melissa, maybe it's Lisa. Thanks for being part of the community, appreciate you. How you doing, Sister Kimberly? Uh, I still haven't sent you what I need to send you, Sister Kimberly. Uh, King D252, Angie. Can you do me a favor, uh, Sister Renee, um, when the live is over, or even if it's not today, you know, when you get a chance to, can you remind me to send Sister Kimberly, um, I need to send Sister Kimberly what we had from our last, or even if you're able to, um, and I can give you her information, but either way, just remind me or something like that. Um, I need to give her the information from our last, uh, the last prison ministry meeting that we had. We're still trying to find a name for it. We're not going to call it prison ministry overall, but you know, if you don't mind, please. <laughs> and I need to send Big Brother Thomas directions to the land, too. I need to do both of those. I keep forgetting. Um, how you doing, Keith? How you doing? Uh, I've been in Sace already, Sister Dawn, Robin, uh, Big Brother Thomas, everybody. We appreciate you. How you doing, Ray Finn? Uh, let's see. Sinner or in Saint. Okay. Uh, Yahashua Hamashach, the Messiah. I have a relationship with him, his father, Abba, Yahweh, and the Holy Spirit, Hadavach But you're exactly right. Um, not only does he want it, not only does he seek it, he he has it. Uh, and I'm going to continue to progress in the interdependence of said relationship. So thank you so much. How you doing, Burnell? How you doing? Everybody, if I miss your name, once again, charge it to my head, not to my heart. We appreciate everybody on here. How you doing? Um, uh, is it mining games, everybody? Sister Sheila, everybody, appreciate you. All righty. So once again, we're going to get into uh, continue to remove the leaven from our home in this series. We're going to start off with 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. Then we're going to go over to Galatians chapter uh, 5 and start at verse 20. Once you have it, say amen. Say, I got it. Say, I'm with you. I'm listening. Whatever the case might be, we'll get ready to do our Bible pledge as well. If you're not familiar with where First Samuel will be in your Bible, by the way, you don't want to. You can go Genesis if you start from the beginning, right? Of the typical Bible, right? Um, Sixty-six books Bible. You have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, right? And then you're going to get into uh, uh, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, and then First Samuel. That's the way my mama taught me. If you know the first five. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then think that Joshua judged Ruth. Didn't necessarily, right? Didn't. But if you're memorizing it, Joshua judges Ruth. And then you get your 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles. That's the way mama taught me. So I always recall that. Praise God. Alrighty, and if you're using Roman numerals like I am, because I'm very bad with Roman numerals at times, um, you're looking for Roman, Roman numeral xv which gives you 15 or just look up chapter 15 praise yeah all righty so we're going to start at uh first samuel chapter 15 and verse 23 then we're going to go over to galatians chapter 5 and start at verse 20 how you doing minister shante everybody who's on appreciate you all righty you said that's how you how you how you remember how you recall it too there you go hey and how you doing noel how you doing, JP? You got it? All right, cool. All right, so we'll say our Bible pledge real quick, and we'll get right into it. If you're able to reverence the word of Yehovah in any kind of way, including if you're able to stand with us, we appreciate you doing so in advance. This is how our Bible pledge goes. This is my Bible. This is my sword. And this will I trust. For Yehoshua is Lord. No sword of God shall ever be heard. For this is my Bible. And this is Yah's word. Amen. All right, we're going to start. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. It is a Sunday, so we're going to take our time. We have a little more time on Sundays. Amen. And then I shall see you guys tomorrow after this. Have family day for the rest of the day. Praise Yah. Um, and how you doing? Um, Sister Cher, hola. Como estan, mi hermana? Uh, uh, so let's go ahead. 
First Samuel chapter 15, verse uh starting to verse 20 or at verse 23, it says this for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. How you doing, Sister Deborah? How you doing, DB? We're gonna read that again. For rebellion, if I rebel, yeah, right now this is 1611, right? But for for rebellion, as I rebel, here is now. For rebellion, if I rebel, what is that? For rebellion is as the sin, it's as the leaven, it's as the as the falling short, the same way that you rebel. If you rebel, you fall short in the area of what? For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Wow. So if I rebel against you, it's basically the same as witchcraft. Because I have to craft things to control the narrative. Witchcraft, right? That's a witch is one who controls somebody. How you doing, shoe queen? So once again, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, right? But watch this. Don't stop there. Uh, stubbornness and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Iniquity means to be on the opposite side of the law, to be lawless, to be carnal, right? And idolatry idolatry, right? So we'll get into that a little deeper later on. Because thou hast rejected the word, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Mm. So if you reject the word, if you re you rebel against it, if you rebel against the word, you are in, you have to use witchcraft. If you use witchcraft, that leads you to being stubborn. If we're going to be stubborn, then we must recognize we are in iniquity. If we are in iniquity, then we must realize we have to now have some kind of idolatry. And when we have idolatry, now we have rejected the word of Yehovah, and therefore he has rejected us from our royal place. All right, let's go on now to Galatians chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 20. Once again, if you're not familiar with your Bible, if you can find Matthew, right, or you can always look in your table of contents as well, but if you can find Matthew, you're going to go Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, in the English, of course, before somebody corrects me. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then you're going to go what? You're going to go Acts of the Apostles, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and then Galatians. The way my mama taught me on that one was you go Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Then you think the Acts of the Apostles or Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the Acts of the Apostles, because those are all apostles. And then Rome, right? The, what they had to deal with in Rome. Then she taught 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Then she said Jeep, which is G-E-P, not J-E-E-P, but Jeep, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. So if you're not aware where that is, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then go Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and then you should run into Galatians. Amen. How you doing, Sister Beverly? How you doing, Ahabaya? Prayerfully, all is still going, but going well. And for thine progeny. So we're going to go now to Galatians chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 20. And we'll read through what actually we did for Shabbat Shalom service yesterday. For those who were on the podcast with us yesterday or those who have watched the recording by now. This will be fair. Some of this is going to be very familiar because this is exactly what we went into yesterday. Praise Yah. How his word consistently flows together. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 20. All right. If you use the Roman numerals, of course, that's Galatians chapter 5. 5 is a V. All right, so Galatians chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 20. Matter of fact, let's, excuse me, let's start at verse 19. Excuse me, verse 19, verse 19. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, it reads as follows. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest. Wait a minute, the works of the flesh begin to show themselves. All right, how you doing, Auntie Marion? How you doing, everybody? So the works of the flesh um, are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, traitor, heresies, um, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before as I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. You do any of those things, you shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. 
right? Because it's against the law. How do we know this? Watch this. But, but means canceled or on the opposite side of that. But the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of Ravak is uh, Ahaba, love, joy, peace, shalom, long suffering, right? Gentleness, being like Elohim, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Alrighty, we've just read um, 1 Samuel chapter 15, uh, we, we we did verse 23, and then we read Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through um, 20, uh, 23. May Yahweh have a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his most holy word. If you are reverencing the word of Yahweh in any kind of way, including if you are standing, you may be seated or go back to the, what you're doing. If you're traveling on the road, of course, be safe. And thank you guys for being with us. Alrighty, today, and how you doing, Nanya? Uh, today, we are going to speak specifically um, in this series of removing the leaven from our home. Remember, removing leaven is removing the sin. We have our leaven box that we've been using as SOC. We also have our family leaven boxes we've been using to come together and make sure that we're going through the process of removing leaven or removing sin or anything that puffs up or tries to make the word something outside of itself, right? Well, we also um, daily are making sure we have a theme in that today is day number 12 and on day number 12 what we're going to put into our 11 box of the 11 the sin we're going to remove like we're physically removing 11 we're going to spiritually remove 11 and this spiritual 11 where we are removing on this rising is um is worldly spells worldly spells first samuel chapter 15 verse 23 worldly spells Praise Yah. All right. So this is going to be something that we have to get into. We'll even look at some work, but we, we we must recognize even etymology, culture, everything is going to be at the forefront of today. Thank you for the love. Because if we don't get rid of the worldly spells, right, and how people are spelling things out for you or how you are spelling things out according to the, to the world, we're going to have some problems. So today we come and put the enemy on notice and let him be frustrated. And any enemy or anybody who's trying to represent the enemy, let them be frustrated today. For we use the word that has character to come against the words that cause spells. Now, somebody might not catch that, especially if you're new to SOC or if you're somebody who's new to this knowledge or this might be not be something that's part of your culture. Right. A lot of us raised in Western uh, theology, and even if you say, no, I wasn't raised in Western theology or religion, if you went to public schools, if you went to private schools, if you were raised in Western, uh, of a Western mindset, which by the way, pretty much the whole world is, and it's not just a Western mindset, as far as talking about white people, remember we talk about a spirit, or so-called white people, we're talking about a spirit, right, a spirit that has progressed, it's been there since the times of Babylon, Assyria, um, um, Persian Empire, uh, Medo-Persian Empire, if you will, uh, the times of Cush, the times of Kemet, this seven-headed beast, the seven-headed, led by the seven-headed serpent, led by the Antichrist spirit who can look like a lamb but sounds and, and promotes the beast. There's a lot of things that have been happening with spells. This is why, if you're not careful, there's many people out there who are trying now to tell you that if you say Yahweh or Yahweh or Yahuwah, or Yahweh, or Yahweh, etc. If you say Jehovah, they're trying to say you're saying the devil. Right? Because there's a lot of spells and witchcraft. And so people are promoting things and looking through a prism that is anti-Christ, anti-Messiah, anti the word of Yahweh. Right? Because it, this thing is designed to get you to what? To think that the devil has turned him, the devil, he can turn himself to an angel of light, but we don't know what light is because those who walk in darkness, light doesn't make sense. Light hurts, light harms. Um, I heard a young man today, uh, was it today or yesterday, one of the two, and he was making it a point um, to tell everybody, uh, he, he made it a point to tell everybody that we were, that if you use the term Yahweh, or um, you're wrong because it has two syllables. But Yahava or Yahua or Yahawa is correct because it has three syllables. Like your breath has three syllables when you breathe in, it automatically. There's right, and but then he starts to say in Hebrew, we read words right to left, which is true. But then what does he start doing? He said, he starts saying H U H Y. 
immediately I realized, okay, something's wrong because he doesn't know culture. He's saw, seen a lot of things, maybe even trying to copy off of somebody else's videos. But this is why it's important that we live this, that we speak this, that this is not just virtual, it's reality. Because if not, we can get caught up real bad, right? There's a lot of heresies, a lot of sedition, a lot of traitors to the word of Yah. Some ignorantly so, but still, even if you are ignorantly a traitor, you still can betray your people, right? If if somebody tells you, if, if mom and dad say, don't tell anybody X, Y, Z, this is just for the family. And somebody lies to you and says they're part of your family. And then you as a child, listen to them and don't know certain things. So you just automatically hear them and say, okay, I guess you're X, Y, Z. You could say, well, maybe they're not a traitor, but they still could betray the family by telling them X, Y, Z. You see, so it's important that we always talk about culture and we are supposed to be keepers of culture if we're keepers of kingdom. And how you doing, Sister Iska? You said that what shall we say to these things of Elohim before us who can be against us? Sure. So we should make sure that we deal with those who are with us and with Elohim, right? And not fear man more than we fear Yah, including people who cast spells. See, one of the things we even have to talk about in our culture is that we don't use uh we don't use spells, we don't spell words. This is always really weird to people because you're coming from another culture. Right. And we did. So uh, thank you. So we did Galatians. So our scriptures for today, for those that are asking once again, is uh, we read first Samuel. Chapter 15, verse 20. Mm -mm. Yeah, first Samuel, chapter 15, verse 23. And then we read Galatians, chapter five, verses 19 through 23. OK, and we'll get into those in a little bit. So so we have to recognize that in our culture, we do not spell words. We don't read left to right and we do not spell words, but many of us only come from a culture, right, to where we read left to right and we spell words. But see, everything that is in the kingdom of Chassatan, right, is supposed to be something that is backwards and it's supposed to be something that has no character. We don't use letters to spell. We use characters to put the word together and keep it there. That's why we're not supposed to change one jot or tittle according to Yehoshua um, HaMashachim. The Messiah, he says that we should not in Matthew 5, 18, until heaven and earth pass, there should in no wise, in no way, and not, not in your so-called wisdom, should you change the most minuscule of measurements, nor even the way it is written. And if heaven and earth have not passed away, then we should be keeping his word. He said, is there more information on this? Well, once again, if you, if you know how Hebrew works, you use characters, right? Like the characters you use, you're not spelling the word. In Hebrew, you wouldn't say I'm spelling a word, right? You would say I'm using these characters, these characters put together, or you would simply put characters together, even in the modern Hebrew that you're using, right? You're using you're using characters. I know it's a it's a it's a it's a it's an all right question, right? Or maybe not. I'll go with you, Sister Monica. You know what? Let me listen to you. <laughs> right. And um, but is it a if you're using Zayahu, right? I'm not sure which dialect you use. So um, you know, I, I would pronounces the I the I but I'm not sure how you pronounce this if I'm mispronouncing it, please forgive me right um but yeah so we don't spell words in Hebrew am I a teacher professor yes actually the founder of SOC University right but I promise you if you hang in there long enough you'll be able to see if what I'm saying holds any merit or value or not because you can simply look it up right so Study to show thyself approved, bring it before Elohim and see if I am, in fact, like you can become or like you are, possibly, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of amat or of truth. Right? How you doing, Brother Yosef? How you doing, Yas, my God? So we don't spell words. Spelling is a, is a very English and very much so Eurocentric. Not even all European nations spell words, but, but, but it's a very Eurocentric way of looking at things, but it also comes from a culture. What culture spells things? See, we don't even ask ourselves that question. We just go, oh, yeah, I'm spelling this. I'm doing it, blah, blah. And I get it. And to have English etymology, you have to at least learn spelling. And if you went to school, you were taught spelling, right? You had a whole bunch of stuff in your English class. Even before they called it English, you had a lot of spelling tests. You were part of spelling bees. You were proud when people learned how to spell. And here's the issue, though. Even the stuff that you talk about spelling, people have what? Changed it to where you don't even comprehend where words come from. Like this is, and I know there's older Bibles. You can go to 1591 and even go past that. There's older Bibles written in English. I just so happen to use this one. And it's 1611, King James Version. 
right? And when you read the 1611 King James Version, you'll comprehend you don't even spell words correctly today. Somebody has changed the meaning and changed what words are. And depending on what culture you are in, you have transliterations, not just translations, but transliterations. If somebody's culture doesn't have that character, they'd say, well, this is the closest we have, but in your language, that character might mean something different or how you look at that might mean something different. So you change the spelling, just like many people have changed words. You use the word firmament, not realizing that that comes from uh, romantic, Greco-romantic theology. It comes from their belief system. So if you don't know, as far as when the earth is created in this big bang, you know, the main Titans, the first Titans to exist that have no beginning and have no end, right? Or at least have no beginning, right? But I think that, yeah, no beginning and no end. You, if you know what the earth is, and for Greece, for those who are in Greek and how you doing, Sister Nadine, um, if you know what the earth is, the earth to the Greek uh, uh, philosopher, to the Greek theologist, to the Greek um, mind, to the Greek rulers, to the Greek leaders are what the earth is Gaia in the beginning there was nothing and boom there was Gaia right and Gaia had four sons the main two that you want to focus on as far as the upper seas and the lower seas is Uranus up top and Neptune on the bottom two of your planets that are worshipped that's why they're given these names by people who look up into the heavens correct and you have Gaia who's the earth she has, she had, um, she had, she, she gave immaculate conception. So she did not need seed to have her two sons, right? Or her four sons. Neptune is the son of the lower seas. Uranus is the son of the upper seas. They all, right? Then she has children with one of her sons. One of her sons is, the one is Uranus. The one else who's the upper seas, Right. He is going around, he's starting to wild out though. And one of her sons called Kronos, time, right? And if you look at the order I'm going in, this is somebody trying to redo, trying to spell out something, trying to change your mindset on what the Most High said, right? Because in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the water. And Elohim said, let there be enlightenment or what you call light. It's not physical because there's no sun, moon, or stars until Yam Dalat, or what you call the fourth day, right? The fourth period of time. So, so he says, what? Let there be enlightenment or let there be light, right? And there, right? After the Holy Spirit, she hovered upon the face of the water. Let there be light. And there was light. And Elohim saw the light and that it was taba, or that it was like him or that it was moral or that it was constitutional, but there was still confusion or darkness in other places. So on the surface level where it was, he said, he said, you know, he separated the light enlightenment from the darkness. Right. And he, the, the, it, the, the darkness he called evening and the enlightenment he called what the rising. I know you say mourning, but that's somebody else's culture where they mourn things because of the gods they worship. God morning, good morning, right? People don't know this stuff. So you don't care about, we don't care about culture. So see the spells that are already intertwined. So because this is intertwined, what does it say? It says, now you start thinking different. But anyways, let me go back to where I am. So now Elohim called the, the called these things, right? The evening, the evening, the darkness evening and the light the rising in the evening to the rising is the first day. That's why in Hebrew culture, your day starts when the sun goes down and when the moon comes up. And that's why we, we, we know what season we're in, what month we're in by the position of the moon. Every new moon is a new month, right? A month or a month. Every new moon is a new month. That's where you get these things from, right? So therefore, we see these things happening. How you doing, Brother Duane? And uh, my sister uh, Rebecca's listening. So we see these things constantly and consistently. So the moon, right, or the month, the new moon, the new month, we know that from the position. And every day for us starts when we enter into rest, right? We enter into rest, and then we go into the beginning of the day as our body has had a chance to break down stuff, the food that should have been digested already, uh, the, 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 we get up, we still are, are keeping our fast, we start to get into our work, and then as we eat throughout the day, then we have a chance to be able to do, do these things and get things done. So at the end of our work and then even enjoying our families as the sun is still up, then when the moon comes out and the sun goes down, that's when we actually begin our day of resting, making sure everybody's prepared, praying together, going to sleep, so that then as we get into the middle of the day, we've already, you see, there's a different mindset. So anyways, right, and then, so the evening and rising was the first yam, 
Yam Alav, the first day. Then after the first period of time, the second period of time, the, the waters are separated from the waters. Right? And then out of that, the earth comes out of the waters. And he separates the, in the process of that, he has separated the upper seas from the lower seas. And right, and then there was herb yielding seed that came out of the earth. And then after that comes the sun, the moon, and the stars. Well, what do they do with Gaia? Gaia is a part of the Big Bang. And then after Gaia, she has four sons, immaculate conception, or, or four children. And then after that, she, one of her sons, Uranus, her, her and him lay down. And then Kronos comes out of that Kronos, time, chronology, chronology comes time. <laughs> you see that? Amen, Sister Monica. You see that? So now your chronos or chronology, now you start getting into time. Somebody has redone what the word of y'all already told you is. But this affects you and you still live by this stuff and don't even think about it. When you see chronos on the watch, you don't even think about it. that's a religious mindset. You say who say you don't believe in religion. You have Nikes on. Nike is the same as Hermes, right? The, 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 the one who's supposed to be fast, who delivers, who even takes souls into a place to where they, they go after they a place of rest, so to speak, for their spirit after they pass on. Right. And gets them to the place where they can go across the river sticks and all that stuff. Right. You're, you're dealing with somebody who's redid what y'all said and trying to get you to think about it what differently see so going back to this though you use the term firmament why do you use the term firmament you use the term firmament because um uranus was wilding out after him and his mom had their children her grandchildren slash children his brothers and sisters slash children yeah and he starts wilding out some chronos comes together with his mother or grand slash grandmother Gaia and says, let's go ahead and stop this. So Kronos watches them in a in the bedchamber. And once Gaia flips, you know, gets uh, uh Uranus to flip her into a certain position where his tes testicles are hanging out, uh Kronos comes in, takes his stuff off, and when he does, then Uranus doesn't pass away, but his essence, his physical form, which you can see physically, leaves, but he now goes into a place where it's called the firmament. Right? So they put firmament in because you're coming from an alphabet, an alphabet, even though you speak English, the alphabet is a Greek set of characters that comes from the Hebrew set of characters that preceded it called the Alav Ba'et, or what now modern Hebrew people who are in the modern Hebrew will call the Aleph Bet. Right. So in all that, I just gave you something that goes with the characters. Every word is spelled out by it's not spelled out. Excuse me. Every word in English is spelled out. Right. Every word in modern language is spelled out because they're using spells. They're casting spells on you so that. Right. If somebody casts a spell on you, they're doing something to manipulate something. Whether you believe this, some of you believe there's good spells and bad spells. Either way, somebody is using something to manipulate what is and change it. That's what a spell is. So if I'm spelling something, I'm manipulating it and changing it. This is why you will see even in Middle English, if you're looking for the term Jesus, you will not find J-E-S-U-S. -S. You have to find I-E-S-U-S, -S, which means half man, half Zeus. They are honest about the Greek uh, alphabet that you're using, the characters that they would have used. If you say understand, they 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 don't have a U there. They have a V there because they weren't using these things. Eventually, over time, as you get different cultures that are being captured and encapsulated and more mixing of iron and clay, you're going to see a lot of different things come into being. But you keep talking about the you sound and the us sound and this and that. But these words, these characters, they don't exist. The letter J doesn't exist. If I read a, a if I read manuscript written right by hand to translate something into the language of the 1600s, if they're not using this in the 17th century, then how in the world am I going to tell you? Right, <laughs> that this was something that they believed in. That's a spell. Somebody cast a spell, and that quickly you've forgotten all it took. And I know you think that's not quick, you think that's a long time ago, but 100, 200, 300 years is not that long ago. Even when people say you were slaves 400 years ago, which is a lie, chattel slavery still exists under the 13th Amendment. As long as you're arrested, you're allowed to be treated like a chattel slave. If you know that the United States is not a country, but by law, 
according to USC, United States Code, the United States is in fact a corporation. So if you know that you're part of a corporation, which by law is considered to be a fake person, and therefore you have a straw man in that law, straw man is property law to say that you belong to something else. You are somebody's property, therefore you are a slave. So that's why you have debt, even though you say, how am I born into the United States debt? Well, because you are registered to the United States. That's why you have this straw man or this birth certificate. And your birth certificate is instrumentalization, is publicly traded, first from your state to the federal government and then from the federal government to, to other entities, whether it be uh, the Federal Reserve, whether it be the Bank of England, whether it be you know a, a, whole, a plethora of places, whether it be to the Roman Catholic Church, whether it be to what you want to call Illuminati or things like that, there's, it's, it's publicly traded. There's no such thing as money because you got to have gold to have money. And the people who have all the gold don't allow you to have gold. You have no silver. The people who have silver, they're in charge of your money. So money is not even real. You see, so the reality, remember, we just got this teaching from Minister uh, Tamach, uh, or sorry, yeah, Minister Dr. Tamach on uh, Wednesday, on Wednesday, where she was trying to show us specifically and strategically that real means it actually happened. But when you put that it on it, it means you have to figure out whose prism you're looking through. And your reality is not even yours. It was given to you. How you perceive what is real has been given to you by those who are in charge of your it <clears throat> Oh, of course, prophetess. Thank you for having us. I meant to text you and say thank you for having us yesterday. I apologize. <clears throat> so we have a problem that's happened, beloved. <clears throat> Devad, Yechavadach. We have a problem because we are looking at something that has been spelled out. How you doing, Brother Vincent? Right? And as Brother Vincent's name suggests, it's time to leave America or time to leave these things that have been spelled out for us right they have been spelled out they've been changed they have been modified or manipulated to be able to get you to a place watch this this is why you believe that you can say that, that somebody can tell you god goes by many names but god is a germanic title and god literally means that you can make whatever you want something to be worshipped <clears throat> so when you say god is good all the time and all the time god is good good and god are the same word if you were to talk to somebody about, <clears throat> excuse me, how you say like God's day or good day to you or God's period of time, you would say good and talk, right? Or your good morning where you mourn the gods or goodbye, God be with you. Okay, we want the gods that we like to be with you, right? If you made a sacrifice or worship something, <clears throat> then it's God be with you. See, we, we don't comprehend how you didn't suck him. We don't comprehend how you doing such shima. And everybody coming on. How you doing, Jimmy? We don't comprehend the culture that these words come from. We just use it because somebody made that your reality. And now you have begun to believe that it is what is real. Isn't that German? Of course, because when you're using that language, that's Germanic language. You think you speak Anglo or Anglo-ish, but it's Anglo-ish. Like if I have a blue shirt on, you might say, all right, that's one thing. But if I, right, so this is the color blue. Uh oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm looking backwards on the screen. This is the color blue. Um, or, well, for those who can see it, right? This is the color blue right here, right? But maybe there's a lighter blue. If it was a lighter blue, you might say it's bluish, right? But it's but the color blue is different than what is bluish. You speak Anglo-ish or Anglo. See, you know, Anglo, very few people even know what those characters of Anglo are anymore because they were wiped out by the first Anglo-ish king who was nor from Normandy, which now you would say is French, but was from Normandy. And when the French came over, he was William the Bastard. His father had said had given them lands and stuff, but forfeit his title to take over the throne. And right. So therefore, since he was couldn't take over the French throne, he made some weird claim that nobody knows how he even got there. But he made up a claim to the throne to say, hey, that throne over there for the Angloish people or the Anglo people, that's mine. And when they denied him, saying we don't we don't know nothing about your claim. Then he came over and took over and they committed genocide. And William the Bastard, who now you know is William the Conqueror, defeated half the people who were over in who were Anglo, right? And so, so he committed genocide. And once he committed genocide, he became the ruler. And so now you say all these lineage of English or Anglo-ish kings, right? Not even realizing most of them were French. Some of them were Scottish. Some of them were Irish, right? Many of them were not Anglo at all. Still to this day. 
So you speak Anglo-ish because you speak a lot of different languages that came in. So if somebody came in with a German language and they said, hey, I'm German and I'm the king, I'm the queen, then guess what? You had to learn German. If you're going to be able to come before the throne and come into to the court and have some kind of semblance of stuff, right? English, Anglo is people who speak Anglo and it was, was considered to be the language of the poor. So after a while, if you want to be considered somebody who's not just a poor country bumpkin, you got to learn, you got to learn the other people's culture. So that's why it's in, to this day, 40% of your language that you speak, if you speak Anglo-ish, English, 40% of this language is French. A huge percentage of it is West African, North African. Huge percentage of it has to do with people's theology or religion. A lot of the stuff that you talk about is Greek because those who were in charge of the, those who were Anglish, they liked Greek and they liked Latin. That's what the Romans like. That's why when in Rome, do as the Romans do. You are very romantic. You like romanticism, not even realizing that certain things are romantic doesn't have to do with whether it means somebody likes you or not or even loves you or not. It means more so that somebody had to live like this. So a lot of people couldn't afford light. But if you could get a candle, if you can get a candle in the middle of the night, oh, man, that was a big deal. If you could make a candle in the middle of the night, that's a big deal. So if you could eat around a candle and have light and see what you were eating, that was amazing. Now you say you want to be romantic, so you have candlelit dinners. We don't know where this stuff comes from because people have us in spells. And thank you, moderators. Appreciate you. How you doing, Sister Chambers? Right. So a lot of us, we're, we have had things spelled out for us. And thank you for the love, y'all. And how you doing, Divinely Guided Oneness? And everybody coming on. How you doing favor with, with Christ? Um, if I miss your name, charge to my head, not to my heart. How you doing? Dennis is Sage. Everybody appreciate you on all the platforms. If you join us on the podcast later on from Clapper, if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, if you're on TikTok, we appreciate your presence. Right. So we have had things spelled out for us so much that we're not, we're, we're not even able to walk in amat or truth. For Elaham is a Ravak. Elaham a Ravak. Elaham is a spirit. And they that worship him have to worship him and spirit while simultaneously being led to or living in truth. Do you hear what I'm saying? So, so if I don't know those things, how do I know the truth? If I don't know that somebody spelled something out for me that should have character, once again, in Avra or Paleo Hebrew, you do not use, uh, you do not spell words. You use character. Every Hebrew character has a meaning. There's 22 of them, and each one of them has an, a character, right? If the character is changed, it means the meaning of the word is changed. You grew up, A is for apple, and B is for boy, and C is for cat, and D is for dog, but they could change it up. A is for all, and B is for ball, and C is for call, and D is for doll, but they could change that up. A is for alligator, and B is for bat, and C is for um, chimpanzee, and D is for dog, but they could change that up, right? A, A is for allegory, and B is for best, and C is for chime, and D is for delivery, right? They can, they, you can change it up because you, you didn't learn that every character is supposed to have an actual meaning. That's why alphas talk about alpha. Alpha is A, the letter A. Now, alpha comes from alav, which existed before. The alav in the Hebrew, which is the language of the people who wrote it out, and even for you guys to say, oh no, they've they, they spoke Aramaic while being Hebrew. That's a really wild thing. But nevertheless, if you say they even spoke Aramaic, even if you want to go there, you have to realize the people who were Aramaic, they still wrote in Hebrew characters. So that which means that just like you speak English, but you still write an alphabet, you read, you, you speak English, but you still write in Greek. So you still have to have a Greco-Roman mind, a romantic mind even, to be able to, to speak because you have to know what's written in your mind. There's a culture with every word that we speak. That's why the word of Yehovah says what? That man shall not live by bread alone. This is what Yehoshua said in the wilderness. He says, as it is written, man shall not, it is written. He told the devil this. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but what? By every word. Amen. How you doing, Barak? And Shabbat Shalom, if you're using the Israelite calendar, Rai Shan Shalom to those who are coming in, or, you know, grand rising to you. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word. Yet we don't even look at every word to see where they came from. There's a reason why your culture is taken away from you slowly but surely. How are you doing, Timothy? Thanks for being on. 
I appreciate that. Right. You, you, you have to recognize that every word, how you doing, Donald? Every word. He said, that is why English language is the hardest language to learn. Uh, your children be so confused. Yeah, this is why your children, by the way, everybody's design. I don't care if you're left-handed or right-handed. Your design is usually to go from right to left. But you've been taught what? To think left to right. Backwards. I don't care if you're left-handed or right-handed. The more ancient you go, everybody believed that the right hand was extremely important to extend and to use. You ate food, you laid on your left side. You see pictures of this all the time, right? If you just go to an art gallery, people laid on their left side, but you ate with your right hand, right? You go to West Africa, you go back home for me, and you go home, one of my homes, I, I have a lot of different people that come from, praise God, but you go back home to West Africa, you go even back to Yahshua Al, you go back to North Africa, you go to South Africa, you go to a lot of uh, places in, um, um, in native, and then native, those who are indigenous to the Americas, even those who are indigenous to um, Australia, right? Stuff like that. When you go to these places, a lot of people have a, have a lot of stuff where they do with the right side first. Matter of fact, if I go to... Um, if, if, if I go to eat with a lot of my people... We don't even eat with forks and spoons. Somebody would say, oh, that's caveman stuff, whatever. No, no, no. All right? You were doing the caveman thing. First of all, caves is not a bad thing, number one, because even David lived in a cave. Look in your Bible, right? Adam lived in a cave at one point, buried in a cave. Enoch, more than likely, lived in a cave. If you listen, if you read it, right? So we have there, people living in caves is not a bad matter of fact. There's a whole bunch of for people that lived in caves and had them looking better than some of your mansions, right? But I get what people mean by caveman. You're talking about people who were supposed to be less than. But see, we didn't really do the whole thing as far as we ate with our right hand because we lived in the cave. We ate with our hand because the way we make our food, it even tastes better when you eat it with your hand, right? If I eat with a fork, then I taste the fork, right? Come on, somebody. If you were to have something off aluminum foil, and you kept it in the aluminum foil and you put a fork in the aluminum foil, what you gonna taste? You're gonna taste aluminum. If you eat with a gold fork, you eat gold, <laughs> right? If you eat with aluminum, you eat aluminum. If you eat with silverware, you taste silver, right? If you're wearing clothes, whatever you're wearing, you're tasting. If you put on deodorant, you're eating deodorant, right? But people spell this thing out for you to where now you're arguing over caveman this, blah, blah, but you don't know your culture. See, in our culture, when it says, when somebody says, um, extend the right hand of fellowship in our culture. When somebody says at the right hand of the father, when somebody says righteousness, which is to be in right lawful standing, that's a position of power. I'm not speaking against the left-handed folk. Be left-handed all you want. Be ambidextrous. That's even, even greater. But when I go back to certain places, when I go into certain cultures, certain um, nations, or what some of you try to call tribes, we know that tribe means three, and that was three groups that fought against the Romans. So unless you're part of them, you're not part of a tribe, and you got to be all part of all three of them coming together to be part of a tribe. So we don't have tribes. We have branches of people. We have kingdoms. We have nations. We have countries, countrymen, right? This is why the Bible says Christ, even though he went into Israel, it said he went back to his country. He went to his countrymen. A prophet is not um, received, right? Uh, a prophet, he has honor everywhere except in his own country. Right? This is this is language. We don't use language. We don't speak the right, what, tongue. That's what a tongue is. A tongue is what a nation of people use. What is a nation? A nation is a body. A nation is a people. The word people lawfully means what? nation. If you're the part of the American people, you have to be part of the nation. But if you're part of a nation that then, that never has accepted you as an actual person and a real person, not an artificial person, not a straw man, but an actual person, not a slave, not property, but an actual person, then you can't be part of the people of the United States Corporation. It is impossible. It is fallible to think that somebody that doesn't accept you as a people would accept you as a person. Oh, we going somewhere. See, spelling. Come on, how you doing, sister tonight? See, spelling is something else. How you doing, Damon? Once you realize how to spell, then you realize how they manipulated you. They don't teach you that part in school. See, so you think that you learned how to spell because you know how letters go in a certain order sequentially. However, do you recognize what they spelled out for you when they spelled or even misspelled or respelled? 
these words. Like when they took what was fine and they defined it and then redefined it and redefined it to define something is to devalue what is fine, to deconstruct what is fine. It was already fine the way it was and then somebody defined it. That means they had to break it down. And we think that that means that's a great thing. No, no, no. Because then what happens when you redefine it again, you break it down further and you redefine it again and you break it down further and you redefine it again and you break it down at some point, right? It's a little too much. How you doing, Craig? How you doing, Shannon? And 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 I'm sorry. I have a group of uh, Indian friends that you hang out with and when we eat with a uh, with a right hand never using silverware. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you go and you get a stew, I'm talking about it's going to be hot, liquid, too, and they give you your stuff to be able, you know, whether it's your yam or your yak or your fufu or whatever it is, and you're putting that stuff in there, dip it in, and you have a peanut stew or something like that, or even if you're eating jello rice or whatever, you, you take your right hand and you eat. Now, because we've been westernized, they'll still give you the option of having a fork, but nobody's going to look at you bad. You go to Ghana or Nigeria, uh, right? You know, you go to Akha, Super Akha, Lagos, etc., and you start eating with your hand. Ain't nobody going to look at you strange because that's just the way you do it. It's like if you go to China or you go to Japan, right, or you go to Korea or you go to Cambodia and you go to these places, if you were to start using chopsticks, their food is actually designed to go with chopsticks. As a matter of fact, it tastes best with wooden chopsticks, natural. And they believe that the wood, even the extension of the nature of the hand, to be able to help you be able to get a taste that's more palatable. So if you go there and they have forks and stuff, if you if you can't handle it, they got spoons. Right. If you feel like, you know, it's easier for you to instead of you wanting to pick up the bowl, if you feel like that's something against you. But real talk, they, they the food was made initially, originally to be able to be consumed with a chopstick. And before that, it was with the hand. The hands are supposed to basically be two fingers. That's why they're using what the two finger technique normally. And you're using that right to be able to make sure you're using the finger. It's an extension of your hand. They're just saying culturally reach your hand in and get some. We don't think about it that way. Right. When we're eating of somebody else's culture, we don't think about why would they make the food that way? We don't think about it that way. Right. We don't think about the fact that you have chips. And when you think chips in your culture, you think different than somebody else. Why? Because somebody else accidentally came up with something and they were able to slice the chips and make them skinnier and stuff. And so now it's, it's become something that you like. And then they have all the stuff now that they put on there and fake foods and stuff that you eat. But you go to England chips, you know, they're what you would call unseasoned. But they love it over there. They not they don't they don't when you say chips over here, they thinking, right? Or if they get French fries, even if they go to a McDonald's over there and stuff, they're not calling them fries, they call them chips. You call them French fries, why? Because the French didn't even make them. Matter of fact, the style of, of fries that you eat are really more what? Aren't they um uh, aren't they from Belgium? Right? Or somebody will say Belgian waffles. No, those that's that's that that's in Belgium, that's just what they do, that's theirs. You call it a Belgian waffle because you're not in tune with the culture. So when you go over or you have that, but the Belgian waffle, they don't have to put a whole bunch of syrup and stuff on it. Why? Because it's already sweet the way it is. Your waffles that you make, they, you need to add a bunch of stuff because you're used to adding a bunch of sugars and stuff like that. On theirs, they put in it was necessary. And even those of you who are sugar junkies like myself, I promise you go over to Belgium and have a Belgian waffle made by somebody, by somebody over there. It's their culture. And, and you better not mess up a Belgian waffle. Oh, it's going to be different. Go over to France. In France, you know, in France, it's illegal for them to sell you bread, right, from the from the previous day. They don't play over in France because that's their culture, right? So you go over to France and try to give them some bread that's from yesterday. Try to get them to eat some bread that's from yesterday. They will tear you up. They will literally, you can be put in prison. They don't got time. They don't do that. <laughs> Right. Why would you give me some bread that's not fresh? That's not part of their culture. See, so I'm just trying to give you examples of people can easily spell or put spells or cast spells or manipulate you. All right. How you doing, Brother Emmanuel? Amen, Sister Joy. Yeah. Even babies sort of eating with their hands. Yeah. Right. Like like the, there's spells that have been cast. And so now you begin to think that you're some kind of even though you'd have to be part of a certain culture to be this, but some kind of Neanderthal or some kind of uncouth, un, unseasoned, un, cer unceremoniously bashed, uh, un, un, uh, unrefined. Right. Person. But right. But and they even try to call you bougie if you say I'm going to establish my culture. 
How you doing, Sister Bree? But there's nothing wrong with one living inside of their culture. Only ones who would try to spell something out for you or try to cast a spell on you or try to use, ultimately, if we're talking about using spells, we're talking about people who are witches. And that's why in our culture, I'm not saying physically, this is for educational purposes only, by the way, this is for righteousness purposes only. However, let me say this on, on top of that, with that, I am not telling anybody to do this literally, but this is why your Bible even says back in that day, literally, they would have put a witch to what? They would have taken the witch's life. Why would they have done that? Because somebody who is a witch is somebody who controls. If it's witchcraft, you were one who controls somebody by what you have crafted. So now if I've taken the words of Yah and I have crafted something different, if I've taken the position that Yah has given you and I've crafted something different, if, if you are supposed to be the people of Yah and I tell you you are no longer the people of Yah, if you think you are poor but Yah said that you were rich, if, if I say that I am the ones who belong with Yah, but he says they are the synagogue of the Satan. If I am the one who says, well, I need somebody else who's better than me to teach me, but Yah says you're supposed to be the teacher. If I think that I'm the tail, but Yah says you are the head and never the tail. If I think, hey, we're just this way because we're bad people and we need to look up to these people, but Yah says that there are people that are that are that um, that fill you with contempt and are at ease with your being scorned. That's Psalm 122, isn't it? Or Psalm 123, right? That there are people that fill you with contempt and they're at ease. And, and they say, why are you trying to be this? Why are you trying to be different? Just be what we say an American is. But Yah says in Psalm 122, right, that we're supposed to be a nation that's compactly coming together. That we're not supposed to be of other nations. They say, why are you trying to stick out? Just be like us. But Yah says you're supposed to be a peculiar people. What I wear, it should be peculiar. What I wear. Should be peculiar. I'm not saying you got to have exactly. I'm just saying I'm not supposed to fit in because I'm not part of your culture. I'm not part of your regime. I don't lift it up. I render Caesar's things to Caesar's when I'm in Caesar's territory. But if I'm not part of Caesar's territory, then why would I give Caesar something that does not belong unto him? But if it's Yehovah's, I should give him what belongs to him. This is why you talk bad about tithing, but you'll tithe to McDonald's and you'll tithe to, uh, to Wendy's. And your tithes to Chick Fil A, right? Like I don't even think our people even understand. Like, how in the world can you have it to where you would literally have a line going around the block with cars? Something wrong. Chick is Chick Fil A healthy? I used to fall for that when I was younger. Is Chick Fil A healthy? No. Of course not. So why do you think that it's better to go to Chick-fil-A than it is to go to McDonald's? Well, when they're giving the chicken, who knows? And you know McDonald's had to say that they have fake food. So the Chick-fil-A. <clears throat> no, Chick-fil-A, they get their chicken. Yeah, where did they get their chicken from? When's the last time you studied? Did you ever look? Or you just cast, you have a spell cast over you. Is it witchcraft? Have you ever thought? Have you ever looked up where Chick Fil A? I worked at Chick Fil A before. Probably not supposed to say this, but oh well, it is what it is. I worked at Chick Fil A before. Chick Fil A gets their chicken from the grocery store, same place that you get it from. And if you think the chicken chicken from the grocery store is gross, and you've seen some of the videos of what comes out the chicken, and seen that some of the chicken actually moves because of parasites and stuff in it. And you know that they shoot the chicken with saline and stuff like that to get it to go ahead and swell. So you can say it's juicy. By the way, if I were to take a human, please forgive me. This is going to be gross. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. I'm giving you a chance. This is going to be gross. You can come back in 30 seconds or so. I promise you I won't, I won't go deep into it. This is just a little something for you. If I were to take human skin, right? If I take my hand and I were to accidentally put it in a pot and for some reason I don't notice it's burning for a while my skin would boil up would, 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 would puss up and liquids would come out and all that stuff and that would be a damaged hand right if it was in the pot you wouldn't call that juice you would say that that's disgusting right but then they lie to you they say you want chicken juice just call it what it is you're you're you've, you've off something and you're 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 having 
leftovers of it, right? I'm not saying that I don't eat meat at all, right? I'm not saying stop eating meat. I'm just saying they spelled something out for you to where you even think chicken juice. Ain't no such thing as chicken juice. Juice comes from fruit. So unless you're feeding that chicken nothing but fruit, okay, then we got juice, right? Like there's people that even eat stuff like bear, which I would suggest you don't because bears have all types of parasites in them. There's disgusting videos of bears running around with parasites hanging out of them. I'll, I'll leave that be. But 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 there's people that eat bear and there's bears sometimes that eat nothing but fruit fruits. And so they eat blueberries and stuff like that. And they'll open the bear up, getting ready to cook it. And the inside of the bear will be blue because you are what you eat. But our chickens, I'm not saying chickens cannot eat fruits, but our chickens just walking around all day eating fruits. So if they're not, then you're not eating juice because juice is fruit. That's what you're doing. Fruits juice. A lot of you eat juice co cocktail, but it's supposed to be fruits juice. Matter of fact, the juice has H3O2 in it, which is better for you than even H2O because H3O2 is just is everything you're supposed to have mixed in with the water. So you, there's people who have lived decades and have not drank any water, but they eat plenty of fruit. How you doing, Audrey? Never bought a chicken from the supermarket? Yeah, and probably shouldn't. But a lot of us, that's what we were trained to do. And a lot of us, that's kind of, once again, because of the system we're in and the way things have been spelled out for us, what do we do? We go to the supermarket. How you doing, D? We go to the supermarket. We get our chicken from there. We feel we must. You said you worked at a chicken processing plant. You got stories? I, 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 I'm sure you do. I, I've, I've seen some stuff, but I've only been there a couple of days. But working there every day, you probably saw some stuff they don't let us see behind the curtain. Just like people who eat beef. You know, that's why, uh, you know, there's people now who are treating cows with respect, right? Which you should anyways, even if you're one that believes in slaughtering animals. Um, you should treat the animal with respect as long as they're supposed to live. And the ones that are treated with respect, you, you get charged more for those. Right. Like these are things that they, they somebody has spelled out for you. So we want to make sure when we talk about worldly spells, remember the word world, by the way, it comes from this word cosmos, ultimately, and cosmos with a K, not with a C. Cosmos with a C is talking about the physical uh, cosmos, if you will. But the cosmos with a K is talking about the systemic or even systematic cosmos or even the spiritual cosmos, if you want to go there. It's a system. So when we talk about worldly spells, we're talking about systems infused with spells, systems that are kept intact by spells, systems that are spelled out for you. It's my pleasure, Jimmy, and thank you for being on, right? So did you catch that? So when I talk about worldly spells today, I'm talking about systems that are spelled out for you or systems that are infused with spells, systems that come out of a witch mindset. Because see, you think it's a rich mindset, but many of these rich folk are witch folk. That's a bar. Come on, Holy Spirit. Ah, You see that man and you think he's rich. You don't realize he's a witch. You think he's got to be a female. No, no, no. There's some male rich men out there that are looking you in the eye. And every day, come on, Andrew Tate, bring yourself in here. Let's put you before everybody. Everybody was looking for you and you were going to be the man to show them how to be men and this and that or whatever. And you was nothing more than a, a, a pimp who then started pimping out the men who wanted to be men, who a lot of them were just young boys or people with young boy mentality that didn't know how to talk to women and wanted to be better and were upset that they were these incels or whatever. And they needed somebody supposedly to tell them how to make sure instead of them having to chase after women and having the women always to denying them um, and not wanting to lay down with them and not wanting to obey them. They, they wanted to be able to be the man that walked in and could just look a certain way and snap his fingers and 15 women run at him and foolishness like that. And come to find out you were lying to women. Come to find out you were manipulating them. Come to find out you were isolating them from their family. Come to find out that you were stealing. Come to find out, you know, that you didn't just get arrested for nothing. Now, is, does that mean that Andrew Tate has never told any truth? Sure, but he tells half truths, and a half truth is always a whole lie. He was a he he was and is a witch. His brother it was and is a witch. Look up his family history. His father is a witch. Now, people hear the word witch and y'all think automatically we're talking about they got to have a hat on and they got to have a long nose and, you know, some kind of prosthetic and they've got to be green. And I don't know. A witch is one who controls. And anybody who controls has to take away from free will. Don't miss this. He said he has a warlock directly in his inner circle. There you go, right? 
He R. Kelly them. Yeah, R. Kelly is a witch too. See, we don't we don't think of these terms because we don't think of which somebody even spelled out what a witch is. That's why you think there's the good witch of the north. There's the good witch of the east. There's the evil witch of the south. There's the wicked witch of the west. Where did that come from? Did that come from anything that's biblical, that's scriptural? Did that come from anything that's righteous? Did that come from anybody's culture? Or did somebody, literally somebody who was into witchcraft, write a story called The Wizard of Oz? And here it is where you think that you got to follow the yellow brick road, right? And you got to make sure that you have all these things that are infused. Now precious stones come into place, gold, right? Uh, ruby shoes, all this different stuff that they're putting in there, the Emerald City. Right, this is stuff that they gave you in your childhood so that you would believe. Then they give it to you, black folk. You ain't really rock with it like that. At least some of you didn't. Um, I, I did because, you know, I grew up watching. I liked The Wizard of Oz when I was a child. I'll be honest with you. Right. And then you grew up with the Wiz. So they gave it to you. They just made it black. Right. Oh, this is stuff that black folk like. Let's have Michael Jackson do it. Right. <laughs> if Michael does it, everybody will be into it. The young folk will like it, everything. Let's have, um, I'm sorry, Tracy, but Diana Ross. Let's have her do it. Everybody loves Diana. We'll just, we'll just make sure that it's stuff that they dance to. Instead of it being something that makes you dance, right, now you can groove. Instead of dancing down the yellow brick road, you can groove down the yellow brick road. It's the same yellow brick road, though. Don't get it twisted. Right. We'll give you Rambo. We'll give you uh, Terminator. We'll give you um, Die Hard. Right. But don't get it twisted. We'll give you Passenger 57. <laughs> oh, y'all forgot about that. That ain't quite black enough. OK, don't worry about it. We'll give you the equalizer. Right. I mean, we'll, it's, it's, it's a spirit. Why do we talk about some of the stuff that happened in racism to get you to comprehend that system? But that system is under another underlying system, the system that's coming from people who are led, who are witches. Witches are those who control. We'll give you whatever we need. We just want to have something where we show you how to witchcraft. Matter of fact, witchcraft, what controls people more than drugs? More than alcohol. Matter of fact, my son was calling this out the other day. He said, he said, you know, I'm tired of passing all these stuff that say wine and spirits. Because he knows. He probably heard us talk about it before, but he knows. How you doing, Sister Denise? He knows. And how you doing, Ish? I don't know the, the full title of the name. Please forgive me. Right? But he knows better. He knows. He knows. Like, that. Why, like why are they dealing with people's spirits? He knows, right? I'm not saying you can't ever have wine, but you shouldn't be given to it. That's what's said, given to wine. Think about the mindset. Given to wine, prone to it. It's so involved in your life that you're given to it. You think that you can't have an excellent time without wine. Not realizing you got to open up your spirit. You got to be strong in your spirit. For those of you who are partaking in wine, hey, look, I have a certain vow. So the only time I'm really going to deal with wine is Passover. At the end of the day, though, look, if you're dealing with wine, cool. Just recall, just realize that when you're dealing with it, it opens up things in your spirit. You better have some kind of chet or some kind of protection. This is why a lot of people who deal with, can I say something in the alcoholics, and forgive me, I'm calling it because if you're going through AA or whatever, they say you got to say that you're an alcoholic and recall it and don't forget it. Some of you say, hey, I, so trigger warning, because I know some of you, hey, I don't call myself that anymore, but it's not whatever. But here, hear this now. I'm going to say something that maybe you don't get an AA. Maybe you do. I've only gone through the basics of it. I've never been an alcoholic. I actually ended up having some mental health issues and had to go to the fourth floor, had to go to that ward. And so for about uh, two weeks, I was up there or whatever. I was going through some really tough times and I just about lost my sanity. Right. Um, praise Yah for his protection. Um, that being said, I went to some meetings for the first time in there. Only time I've been and um, actually took some copies of the book. They, they usually don't allow you to do that, but they allowed me. I didn't take a book with me, but I was actually taking some pages of what was in the book with me when I left and studied a little bit. And here's something that I don't think that they said 
for many people, not just those who do AA or those who do NA. I haven't done an NA thing before. I'm assuming there's a lot of similarities, but I don't know exactly how NA works. But here's something that I'm, I'm, I'm promising you to didn't tell you. When you did alcohol, right, or when you took alcohol, if you will, for the first time, I promise you more than likely you weren't protected. Or when you drank alcohol, even when it was by yourself, I promise you that you probably didn't feel protected. Or when you wanted to talk to somebody about something, but the bottle was there to have a conversation with, you probably had a conversation because in some way, shape or form, you felt like your spirit was protected. You were opening yourself up, right? It's about control. Somebody was trying to put you in control. Matter of fact, make you feel like you're in control. Some people drink alcohol because they feel like, hey, at least I can be bold enough to deal with things. I'm not saying everybody. I know there's different experiences and different reasons. And thank you, Sister Sage, for saying that. Yeah, they work the same way. Okay. So I'm not sure. what. Right. So I'm not going to act like I've, um, I won't say I've never gotten drunk, heavy drunk, anything like that. But it's been very rare. Even when I was in the world, I didn't really rock with alcohol like that. Um, I can actually handle it uh, pretty well. Uh, but I've only, you know, usually one time I was actually tricked into it by somebody's supposed friend who I guess just thought it was funny. And they literally just kept giving me chasers. And I didn't know that the chasers were going with the alcohol. And so, you know, I took what I thought was a lot of alcohol already to come to find out, you know, um, woke up blacked out. That's it. And I had a catheter in me. I woke up to a catheter. <sighs> Sorry if that's TMI. Just saying that's that's so I'm usually pretty in the only other time when I was under 21. I forget what age I was, maybe 17, 16, 17. Did a um, New Year's Eve party. And, uh, you know, the mother let them let let us do whatever we wanted in the house as long as we did it in the house. And she went to another New Year's Eve party. So we basically were over there, tore the house down the whole night and I fell out. On my on my stomach, couldn't move. So I'm watching everybody move around. Praise y'all, because you know people could take advantage of you then and stuff like that. But you know, I literally was on the ground like this, like I can't. I, I was laid out and my and I was just looking and I'm looking around and I'm just scared for like three four hours, maybe even longer. But like three four hours. Praise y'all, the person whose house it was at was my friend. The whole time I'm just and because I'm really tall and stuff, maybe people thought you know like don't mess with him or whatever. But I was out. I couldn't have moved. Right. But it possessed me like or it at least controlled me. Maybe I wasn't possessed, but I, I was awake, but couldn't move. By definition, by definition, you've been there. Yeah. By definition, that's witchcraft or that's what a witch would do. They crafted something that controls you. Oh, bad boys one and two. Sorry, I missed that one earlier. Yeah. How you doing, y'all? So why why witchcraft? That's what it is by 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 definition. <laughs> yeah, I went in. Yeah. So by definition, that's 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 witchcraft. Somebody made something that specifically controls people, right? That's it. Some people go to drink because they want to black out. They can't handle things. So to try and get control, they want to be controlled. I'd rather just black out, right? Some people get blackout drunk, don't care if they're with somebody. They know they're probably going to end up in the bedroom with them, whatever. I don't even care as long as I don't recall because life is too hard. So rather than somebody showing you what Yehovah has crafted, that you have freedom and liberty in, that you might make decisions in with a sober mind, you have gone into something where the devil, be aware, right? Be sober, be vigilant. The devil, your adversary, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to devour those who what? Are unaware. Do lions try to hunt what is aware that is hunting them? How you doing, Alanda? Thanks for being on. Appreciate you. How you doing, Sister Sylvia? Thanks for being on. Appreciate you. May I say that again? Do lions hunt? What is aware that lions can, if, if I'm aware that a lion's hunting me, he can, he could get me easily. But would he prefer that I don't see him coming? A mountain lion, I could probably, you know, I, I couldn't wrestle one, but a mountain lion, I could probably at least get it to back up enough to where I could get away or get to the car or whatever, prayerfully, right? But a mountain lion, you barely see mountain lions. You know, the only time you see mountain lions, when they want to be seen, <laughs> right? So if you see a mountain lion, they're actually telling you, get away. I don't, I don't want you here. 
right? But mountain lions, you don't see them because they're going for, uh, they're looking for you to have your back turned and they're trying to crush your skull. That's the way they hunt. If you go to uh, to South America and you go, where is that where the Cayman are? To the uh, uh, Jaguar or the, or the Jaguar, right? And you go down to where the Jaguar is, right? If you go down to where the Jaguar is, do you see, ja matter of fact, there's people who will tell you straight up, um, people who have done military uh, missions down there, people who have gone down there and roughed it, Jaguars will actually wake you up in the middle of the night. They'll just growl over you. Like if you go camping and stuff and you end up camping there overnight, you'll you'll hear a type thing and you'll wake up and you'll look and it's a Jaguar right next to you. It's not even going to do anything to you. It's literally being like, what you doing here? <laughs> right? Like this is my territory. I don't know what you're doing here. I don't like it. I just want you to because it doesn't see you as food. So I was like, I don't know what you're doing here, but I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Right. That if you if you if you stay here, I'm going I'm, so we probably gonna have some problems. Or if you do anything out the ordinary, you mess with my food, you mess with anything around here. We gonna have some problems. And then it just goes ahead. It goes back into the darkness or whatever. Right. Right. So but but if you so if you see one, it wants to be seen. If you don't see one and you feel one, it's going to be too late. Split second later after you have felt it, it's already over. Right. But I say that because this is cat behavior. You go into India and you're looking at tigers. Tigers don't want to be seen. Now, tigers are big enough to where they can jack you up. Tigers can take down, you know, baby elephants. Sometimes if a tiger's on his game and an elephant is weak enough, it might be able to take on an elephant. But tigers, they can get just about to anything that they want. There's nothing safe from tigers. Tigers can swim. Tigers can take down um, deer that's bigger than you and I or deer like uh, things tigers fight Kodak bears and all that stuff. Kodak bears, you know, the, the bear that Baloo is, you know, um, or I'm sorry, sloth bears, excuse me, sloth bears and all that stuff, right? But tigers are what? They like to do things in hiding because even your enemy, even the cat wants to protect itself, right? A shark, a shark wants to come up on you from behind too. Right. Shark attacks don't usually happen when somebody's looking dead at the shark. The shark's trying to come from the side, trying to come from behind. If it's even coming up in front, even if it does bite, it's usually curious as to what you are because it doesn't know that you're stuff. But a lot of people, when they look like seals, what happens? Shark comes up from underneath. Boom. It attacks. Right. Orcas, when you go out there, orcas are very shifty, too. But orcas don't even consider you to be food. And they even know enough to know that you and I are um smart and intelligent so what is it so they kind of look at us like oh like they look at us like we look at them they're like oh what is this thing out here in the water doesn't really know how to swim blah blah like we go and we look at an orca at sea world or something you get too close to the orca and sea world it take you out right but we look at they look at us the same way we look at them they're like what you <laughs> what is this thing out here they'll there are people who have swum they've shown it where they'll that where people will swim and as they have, have swum, you'll see all, you'll see like the helicopter from one point and they don't even know they're surrounded by orcas. And the orcas are just looking at them and like communicating with each other. Like, what is this thing? Like this thing, I don't know if it's going to make it. Sometimes they even going by thinking like, we might have to help this thing. <laughs> because it's like, you don't, this thing doesn't belong out here. Then finally the person realizes and starts freaking out. And the orcas are like, hey, we just here, we each other. They don't do anything. They don't react. They like trying to let you know, like, we're not going to do anything different because you saw us. <laughs> They'll flip that boat over, too. Yeah, that's because human beings have been wilding out. Now they're starting to fight back, right? But I'm, I'm just saying, and all those things, and of course, I'm not saying going to water swim with orcas or anything like that. Even dolphins, people be thinking dolphins are cute. Dolphins will mess you up. Dolphins are worse than orcas, right? Like, you know, um, unless they think you're pregnant, then all of a sudden, for some reason, they something clicks and they'll start protecting you. But dolphins are jerks. Anyways. But I'm trying to say all that, that what you think your predator, your predator doesn't want to be seen. Your adversary doesn't want to be seen. He's compared to a roaring lion. Now, this is interesting because you say, well, if he doesn't want to be seen, why would the lion want to be heard? Come on, somebody. Right. Stay with me now. If, if, if the lion doesn't want to be seen, then you have to say to yourself, why would he want to be heard? Well, lions, when they're heard. There's a couple, there's a few different things that are going on. If you're talking about, right, we could say they're roaring because they want everybody to know they're roaring. They could be just doing that. I don't even know how to do it with the little thing they do, right? Or they, but that thing can travel for a long way, letting people know how they're feeling, letting people know if it's safe, letting the family know, letting the pride know that things are all right. Maybe they're saying they need help, right? But if they're dealing with their prey 
or somebody that might even be on attack for them, they'll usually roar to make sure people are afraid. You better fear me. You better reverence me in this area, right? I got an area that could be 40 square miles. You better reverence me. You better recognize who you're dealing with, right? The male line, as much as we say, oh, he lazy, he don't hunt and this and that. Do you know the male line literally walks around for the most part every day? Yes. Does he rest a lot? Sure. But when you see him, he moving all day because he's supposed to protect miles upon miles upon miles of territory. So he's sometimes roaring just to let make sure not just pray knows, but that anything that might try to attack it, I need you to be afraid. I need you to know that when you come into my territory, fear me. But if the lion roars on a hunt, it's trying to cause confusion. Very rarely does this happen now. But if a lion roars on a hunt, especially if it roars face down, what direction is the roar coming from? You don't know. How you doing, Mama Rose? Right? So, so if I roar, right? Like if I'm talking to you like this, that's one thing, especially if I'm going like this, but if I'm going to do this, it's kind of difficult. I know because you can't hear me with both ears and stuff, that might not make sense, but hopefully you get the gist, right? If I'm talking to you like this, if I'm talking to you like this, that's one thing. But if I start talking to you like this, not only what is he saying, but also where's it coming from? So if he's a roaring lion, number one, either he's a, he's, so watch this, the lion doesn't want you to come into his territory. He's prepared to fight you, but he's afraid of what you might present. He, right? If the lion's trying to say, fear me, he's also saying, I fear you. <sighs> so, so don't miss that, right? Be sober, be vigilant, be sober, be clear-minded, right? Don't get caught up in witchcraft and spells where they're spelling things out and trying to get you outside of what Yah has already told us we are and who we are and how victorious we are. Be careful, be sober, because if you're not clear-minded, you won't recognize that the adversary is scared of you and you're scared of him. But you should stop being scared of him if he's afraid of you. How is your adversary afraid of you and he's the lion? Right. How is the shark worried about you and wants to sneak up on you? But he's the shark and you can't swim like the shark can. Huh. Come on. So, right. You got to see this. These 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 animals, these your enemy, your adversary is afraid of you. Because of what you carry. Watch this. The lion, if he knew better, watch this. A lion cub. Do you know that a lot? See, we, we, we be thinking about lion cubs like being like cute little cats or cute little kittens. Right. The lion cub can be 200 pounds and still be called a cub. But if you were to come up on the lion cub and it's already got claws, it's already got the teeth for me. By that point, it's not, you know, drinking mama's milk all the time. It eats meat from time to time, if not fully. And yet, if you get a lion cub, about 200 pounds in a corner, as much as it will do this and it will try to, and it'll try to act like it's going to defend itself. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but more than likely, guess what it will do, especially if it's in the zoo, but even in captivity, guess, or I'm sorry, not in captivity in the wild, or what we call the wild, guess what it would do? It would probably stay there and let you pick it up by the scruff if you could pick it up because it's afraid. And once you pick it up by its scruff, something kicks in that says, I belong to this, or this person is supposed to protect me. Right? So you got to recognize that even though the lion, even though that lion cub has everything in it, everything is in that lion cub that could destroy its enemy. It's still, if you get close enough, it'll pick up, right? There are lions to where if it knew that you as a human really ain't got nothing going on, it would go ahead and tear you up. But do you know that there's um, a country, our countrymen, our diaspora who live out in certain places and what people try to call the bush and all that, who where they'll have two or three of them that'll be sitting up there, come up on the line after the lion hunts a meal. They get themselves together. They kind of look at each other. They have a little pact that goes on mentally. They stand side by side. They don't even have their guns pulled out or anything. They stand up side by side and they start to walk together in step, in tandem. And as they get closer, the male line, the lioness, the whole pride can be there. The pride will start looking at them. They don't start growling, yelling, trying to warn them. Tails don't start wagging. The lions are looking at them like somebody got to be crazy to come up on me. Right? <laughs> 
that nothing in the wild just walks up on me. No, no, not even other lions just walk up on me like that. Right. So so if if you if these humans are walking up on me like that, come on, somebody, if these humans are walking up on me like that. I doesn't even know they're humans, but whatever this is, is walking up on me like that. Either it's crazy or it can take me out. Either way, I'm not trying to find out. And the lion leaves. The men take what the lion thought was for him. They'll carve off, an, you know, whatever they can to be able to take back to their families because they can't carry the whole carcass or whatever. They'll leave and then the lion runs back in later on after the men have gone. Right. They don't stick around now. They don't give the lion a chance to find out, to find his weaknesses, do that. But they walk boldly with a purpose. What the enemy thought was theirs. They realize that they have authority anyways. They walk up on it. They take it and then they leave out. And the lion knows if, it, it, hey, you got to be crazy or you got to be stronger than me. But I don't want to fight stronger than me. And I dang sure don't want to fight crazy. Right. And so those of us that are crazy in your hover, they'll say you're crazy. Those of us that are stronger in your hover, they'll say you think you all that, whatever. Walk boldly and take what the enemy thinks is his because you get first dibs. Oh, did somebody catch that? Praise your hover. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory. That's right. Like you have the right. Thank you for the love. You have the right. You are righteous enough to walk up on that. Just because the enemy thought he killed, it doesn't mean it doesn't belong to you. Come on, somebody, right? Yeah. Oh, somebody. Just because the enemy said that that's the end of your reputation doesn't mean you can't go and pick it back up. And maybe everything you were carrying wasn't for you, anyways. Cut off what's yours and get out there. Make sure that you have people around you that are bold enough to walk with you and what you've been called to do. Like, like, like. Make sure somebody is is who's walking with you. They bold enough. Who have you selected on this walk? Who did y'all select on this walk with you? Have you even asked y'all who he selected? And if he's giving you people to walk with, why aren't you walking with them? If he's giving you people to call, why aren't you calling? If you if he's giving you people to, to make sure that your children can marry into, why aren't you making sure that their children are being raised like your children are? If he's giving you people who are doing well, why haven't you promoted their business so they can turn around and promote yours? If he's giving you, come on, now, if he's giving you a dream and a mission and a vision and it's and you've seen the people that are supposed to walk with you, why haven't you discussed the vision with them? Then talk about how you feel like you are divided and therefore you're in division. And the reality is he gave a vision with people, with a nation to be around you. See, a culture, because we've had this spelled out for us. We're not supposed to get that. We've had it spelled out for us. We're not special enough to have those things. We are not awesome enough to have those things. We are not worthy enough to have those things. We're, that's what we think about ourselves. Witchcraft. Somebody has crafted something to control and manipulate you about your ways. There are people who literally question whether I'm a pastor or not because you can't be a pastor looking like that. Even when you go back to Africa, you can't be a pastor looking like that. Even when you go back to North Africa, you can't be a pastor. When you go back to native territory, you can't be native looking like what you're talking about. Who spelled that out for you? Who manipulated that? Who controls your textbooks? To make you believe that that's even close to being true. Come on, we awesome. That's right. We got to remove this. We got to remove this from our home, from our family, from our. Le we got to remove the leaven, the sin, from our home. This is called calling us to fall short. We got to take out worldly, uh, uh, worldly spells. Really, and and watch this. All spells are worldly. I don't want you to be on this. This is the better witch than the other witch thing. Every spell that's ever spoken, all of them are worldly. And we are supposed to be separate from the world, or if we come in the world, we should never be of it. And so anybody who's trying to cast spells upon our people, we speak a curse over you because Yehovah says you were cursed. Right? Because if we don't speak a curse over you and we allow it to live, the curse. And I'm here to tell you, I've lived long with enough curses. I've had family members deal with enough curses. I've seen brothers and sisters. I've slept next to brothers in um, in 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 uh, homeless situations enough, right, to realize that there's some curses that are out there, and the only way that we get over them is when we call them out. It is what it is. Only way you're gonna get past some of these curses is you're gonna have to call it out. 
We talk about cry out. Sometimes you got to call it out. I call out lust. I call out lasciviousness. I call out wicked mindset. I call out false apostles who are making themselves angels of light just like their father does. Right? There's only one wise alacham. And if there's anything outside of it, then I call it out. Why do I call it out? Because if I don't call it out, it's something that will curse me. So if I see somebody who's a witch, witches walk around with a curse because the most high said a witch doesn't even deserve life. Now, I'm not talking about physically only. Anybody on here, this for educational purposes only, righteousness purposes only. If somebody goes out and says, Pastor Kofi told me to go out and take somebody's life, we got this one wax. OK, that is not what I mean by that. What I'm saying is that the most high says they don't deserve life. By the way, you didn't deserve life. Right. But you came into accordance with the word of Yah. So this is not just only to say, hey, I don't want to have anything to do with the witch. This is somebody that I'm trying to tell you that we even if you are a witch, get it right. Even if you are a witch, get this correct. Get yourself together because Yah has already told you what happens to witches. Now, I have no heaven or hell to put you in. I'm talking about his standard. He says that you deserve no life, and I deserve no life, but here's the difference between you and I, right? Death and life is in the power of the tongue, but I begin to love it and eat the fruit the fruits thereof, right? Also, here's the difference between you and I. The devil, the enemy, the adversary, the one who you're doing dealing with with witchcraft, <coughs> he cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Yahushua said that he came that I would have life and that you can have it too and more abundantly. Why would I keep in something that is lifeless? You can be a zombie, wake up, go to work, go to sleep. Wake up, have sex, go to work, go to sleep. Wake up, take care of your children, go to work, maybe have sex, go to sleep and put it on repeat. And every once in a while, you get two, three days of vacation outside of the time you have to travel and all the other stuff you have to do for everybody who's on vacation with you. So then all of a sudden, then you go right back to the same zombie experience with no life in it. Some of you wake up, go through your nine to five, do it five days a week, maybe get off on Saturday and then go to church on Sunday, get ready to rinse and repeat and have no deliverance. You're still a zombie. But Christ said, I've come that you might have life. Messiah had said that you I've come that you might have life. Mashiach said that I come that you might have life. Mashiach he says that I come that you might have life and more abundantly. So just because you have life doesn't mean you're alive. Or just because you're alive, excuse me, let me say that different. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just because you're alive doesn't mean you have life. So yes, witches deserve to not have life. But Christ said, even you can give up witchcraft and you can have life and stop just living. You can have life and stop searching for love by controlling somebody else or trying to figure out how to control and manipulate even what the most I said. You can't do it because somebody tried to do that before. That's why you have the Tower of Babel. If you want to have a babbling life and flow like a babbling brook and fall apart like the Tower of Babel, you can do so. Or you can just be in tune and be a fellow heir of what Christ has for us. Yeah, some people just exist in. And amen. Yeah. Like just because you live in. Right. Watch this. Many people are are you say, how you doing? I'm just making it. Hmm. You ask people, how you doing? Ah, well, you know, I won't complain. Don't do you know what to complain? The Bible says different in Psalm 142, verse 2, where David says, I shall bring my complaint before the Lord. See, but you don't know how to how to actually have life. A lot of people survive and never thrive. And look, you can survive your way technically. Can I be honest with you? You can survive your way into heaven. Did you know that? You can survive your way into heaven. Just survive it. Just survive it. But why not have life? You can be out here by yourself and just be like, well, nobody ever. But why not have be part of a nation? And how you doing, bold servant, if I didn't say so early? Right. Why not have what life and more? Somebody say that just to yourself. You don't have to say it out loud if you don't want, but just say it to yourself. Life and more. I want life and more. I want life and more. 
Life leads to more. See, watch this. In Hebrew, this term that you use, and, thank you for the love, this term that you use for and is actually at. At. At means a new thought or going towards. So when it says life and more, it's saying life at more. Life leads to more. That's why etym etymology and your culture in the original terms that we use is extremely important. I want life because life leads to more. If I'm dealing in debt, it's usually because I'm not alive. But wait a minute, I'm breathing. That doesn't mean that I'm alive in the spirit. And, it does, and, if, and guess what? The spirit is what manifests through the soul or the psyche or the psyche into the flesh. Yes, psyche in the Greek means soul. If you want to go to the Hebrew, find the nachivash, the nachivash, the soul, your spirit going through the soul, keeping the flesh into subjection. If the flesh is a subject to the spirit, Right. If it is subjected to the spirit, then also that means that now the spirit is now able to make sure that it is in what it is able to tell the flesh what to do. That means also too now you can speak manifestation. But many people say, I speak this and I speak that. But if my pneuma, my mind, my stoic, the other man, the soul, spirit, body together, if that's not in order, then I can speak whatever I want. If the spirit's not right and especially my soul is not right, then how does the spirit get from this realm? through the soul to manifest into the physical. No wonder we think that miracles can't happen anymore because our soul and our spirit is not even correct enough to have a fleshly miracle. A miracle is just a fleshly thing. When your spirit and your soul is together right now, look, everybody got to be in their calling. I'm not one of these people. You better touch. If you're not touching somebody, you're not speaking in tongues. If you're not doing this and you're not saved, I'm not saying all that. Right. That's foolishness. Everybody has their lane. But those of you who have the gift of performing miracles, those of you who have the gift to just pray something and it happens in somebody's life instantaneously. You know what one of the missing ingredients is, is that you, to be honest with you, beloved, you have a problem with your soul or your spirit. Right. Like like if I'm going to get something from the spirit. To the flesh. If I'm going to get something from the spiritual manifestation to the fleshly manifestation, then my soul got to be in order. My nachivash has to be in order. My psychology has to be in order. Remember, psyche in the Greek, psyche, P-S-Y-C-H-E, it means soul. Logia or ology or the study of is the study of or the logic of, and then ist is, is someone proficient. So a psychologist is nothing more than somebody who is proficient in the study of your soul. So you should be your first psychologist. Am I saying that you shouldn't go ahead and make sure that you get um, somebody to help you out? Please do. Mental health is a real thing. We want to make sure that we're always looking at our mental health. But if I'm, but the first psychologist I should be looking at number one is really Yehava, right? I, the blood of Yehoshua, who is leading and guiding, and who all should be living inside of me in the kingdom. Right. But then once I get to that point, then I should be able to come into making sure that now here's the I have this power inside of me in the spirit so that my spirit can align with to ensure that through my soul, my psychology, that I can now make sure that my flesh is in subjection. Praise God. Right. This is how it works. We work in this thing backwards because we don't have culture. So let's let's hit up. Um, let's hit up. First Samuel. Uh, this is First Samuel, and what do we read? Oh, sorry, First Samuel chapter fifteen, verse twenty-three. Right. So it said, uh "Oh, yeah, yeah." So it said this. It said, "For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft." It starts off there. For rebellion, to rebel, to go against. See, watch this. Some rebel, but you are supposed to rebel. Somebody caught that reference. Revelation is not called revelation. I know people keep saying, I want a revelation. A revelation, revel means that you rejoice. And T-I-O-N means it's a noun, a person, place, or thing. So I as a person or I as a place or I as a thing can revel. Revel means to rejoice. But some people rebel, R-E-B-E-L. So some of you R-E-B as in boy, E-L. Some of you R-E-V-E-L. Um, v as in victor. So some of you rebel against the Most High. Some of you rebel in the Most High. There's two different things going on here. 
right? There's two different things going on. So many people want a revelation thinking that that means you're revealed. No, there are certain things that have been revealed to us. And if we live a certain way, what some are afraid of because they rebel, others revel in because we rejoice. Uh, what am I saying? The, the, the rebellious are the ones that are against the word of Yah. And so revelation actually makes them afraid. But some of us revel in revelation because we are obedient. That's tough. See, but once you know what words mean and you don't, now, now we can't go to the left or the right. We got to leave them alone. We got to make sure that the word is exactly what it's supposed to be. Right? We got to make sure that the word is exactly what it's supposed to be. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Is this blessing anybody? Hopefully this is helping you where you are. I'm, I'm just trying to give you something now. They don't teach us this. They don't teach us how words work. But you're supposed to use the word. You're supposed to live by the word. How in the world are you going to live by the word and you don't know what the word means? How are you supposed to honor the word and you don't know what words mean? <laughs> right? How you know? How are you supposed to know if the preacher's preaching the word and the preacher's telling you, like, grace? I want the grace. And grace is unmerited favor. I need the grace of the most high. Grace is unmerited favor. But no, nowhere in, in the in the nowhere will you find that the biblical term grace that's used means unmerited favor. Somebody preached that in a sermon. A witch gave you a spell. And a lot of us heard it and we preached it, not realizing we were under a spell. But that's why you're supposed to study for yourself. That is why you were supposed to study for yourself. Come on, run to his knowledge. That's right. Now you're doing Sister Beverly and if the Sister, uh, sister Barbara's still on, excuse me. How you doing? Uh, carrying everybody where you get your bible from hey i'm reading right now 6 and 11 king james version bible but you can get a king james or whatever we tell people all the time it doesn't matter which bible you get if you don't know the culture you got to live it it's got to become culture i'm not saying that you can't learn anything from a bible at all but you're gonna get very surface level stuff right if this is going to permeate every every part of your essence it's got to be it's got to be something we live so a lot of people they rebel and therefore, they're afraid of revelations. You know, back in the day, um, a lot of our people used to literally be um, a lot of people down south of our diaspora, south down south, meaning within the United States. Um, a lot of our people used to actually rip revelation out of their Bibles because they were so afraid of it. Pastors would not touch it, would not preach on it because they didn't really know what it meant. And nobody looked at the culture and looked at you know, Daniel chapter two, Daniel chapter five, Daniel chapter seven. Nobody looked at Genesis chapter three to go with Revelation chapter 12, right? Nobody looked at Zechariah, um, I think it's chapter four, chapter two, I could be wrong, uh, like chapter two, verse 10 and chapter four, verse 10, so that we could see what was going on um, with the olive trees and um, Revelation chapter 10 and 11. Nobody looked at Revelation chapter four to be able to see what's going on in Revelation chapter 10 so that we can now see what's going on between Revelation 12 and 13, right? A lot of people don't study the culture that goes with it. So they're preaching a lot of stuff and teaching a lot of stuff that really has nothing to do with righteousness and we listen to it not realizing so here we are this whole time hearing people say i want a revelation because people don't know how english works and they don't realize that there's an a listening missing in the word and reveal is a lot different than rebel right once you have more of a relationship and you know, like those of you who take classes with us and stuff and have even been on some of our live sessions in the past you know what the number of the name is once you know what the number of the name is, the number of the name, you won't listen to somebody say six um, neutrons, six electrons, six protrons. By the way, there's no such thing as uh, a neutron. If we were to just be honest, right? Because we think that everything somebody said in school is correct. We don't study it. There's no such thing. It's not 666. It's 600, three score, and six. That means you have to have 666. So the number is not three sixes. The number is six hundred three score and six. Now, once again, it seems seems like somebody says, "Oh no, that's 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 the same thing." No, it's not. If I go six plus six plus six, that's eighteen. If I go six times six, that's thirty six, and then thirty six times six. So if I go six times six times six, then thirty six is what? Um, thirty six times six. That'd be one hundred eighty plus thirty six. So one hundred eighty plus thirty six is Sorry, y'all. I'm so 216, right? So that's not close to 600, three score and six. It's a whole different thing. But people are afraid when they see three sixes up. 
Or if you see 616, you don't know the difference in between the Greek and the Hebrew and that one of the characters are missing, like we talked about earlier. But because people spell words and are using somebody else's numeral system, you're not aware of how these words work. Right? It's like if you count, you know, in English, it's really confusing to people. You know, what's one of some, of, and, and even to our children, you know, it's one of the most confusing things is when your child starts getting past age 10, especially when they get to teenage years, because nobody, nobody, pretty much maybe there's like a couple other languages but nobody in the world really goes all right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen and then you get to twenty and you do what you do anyways twenty one which is twenty and one twenty two which is twenty and two twenty three which is twenty and three twenty four which is twenty and four right you get to thirty you do the same thing forty the same thing you get to a hundred it's still a hundred and one you get to hundred and fifty it's a hundred fifty and one right right so so nobody else does that around the world nobody has teens or this right if you look at languages right uh if you get you do it in French, you get the French, you're gonna deal with and this, and this, and this. You get to uh uh Kiswahili, right? Kum uh sorry, Moja and Billy, Tatu, Ini, uh Tano, uh Sita, Sabah, uh, Nani, uh uh oh, I'm missing nine. I think I skipped one. Wow, that's terrible. Having a moment. Anyways, then kum kumi is ten, then you go kumi na moja. It's, one, 10 and 1, right? Kumina uh Bile. That's 10 and 2, etc. You're you you everybody says 10 and 1, 20 and 1. Right? You you right? Uh viente uno, viente, viente 20 and 1. Viente y uno, viente y dos, viente y tres, y viente y cuatro, right? 20 and one. Nobody does. So it's very confusing. So you're in a thing of spelling where you don't even recognize you are being, some stuff is being manipulated. Nobody else in the world, it, people have to work really, really hard to try and catch up, to, to try and do what you do. People don't know, like, you know, somebody were to say, you know, give me, you know, mark out 3,000 3, um, kilometers or 3,000 meters, a lot of us would be able to get, matter of fact, a kilo, right? Kilo, what is a kilo? People go lose their mind. Oh, I don't know what a kilo is. A kilo, you're just talking about um, 100. If you got a kilo, then you got 100 or something. So if I got kilometers or kilometers, then find out what a meter is. How can I find out what a meter is? A meter is just over three, um, three feet. It's a thousand, excuse me. I said a hundred. Okay. So a thousand, excuse me. I said a hundred. So so I got I got a thousand. So if I've got a thousand meters, and you know it's just over, right? It's just over three three feet, you could kind of sort of adjust, even if you can't get it correctly. Oh, okay, a thousand meters is like three thousand plus a little bit more. I can at least get a little bit, right? I can at least get a little bit of it. Right. Uh, so 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 I can at least get close to it because I know some I know what the actual culture is. See, this is why it's important. I, I know I'm going a lot of different places. Prayerfully, this is making sense. I know I'm kind of around a bit. We're going to get back into the scripture. I'm just trying to show you how the smallest word change or how somebody's culture being changed or something being manipulated or somebody telling you that something that the world does or that a lot of people do. Let's say it like that, that a lot of people do. And just because you don't do it. Right. It means that everybody else is backwards, right? Because somebody measured out one of their feet, and their feet ended up being, you know, agreed upon one day down the road as that's twelve inches, right? Or you know, not realizing that if you just look at your ruler, you got thirty centimeters on the ruler, so every foot is thirty centimeters. So somebody says, "What's ten? Uh, what's you know what's 10 feet in in meters and you would say oh okay well if i do meters i gotta think centimeters and if i do 30 times 10 that's 300 there's 300 centimeters in in 10 feet but if i if i but i'm, I'm kind of scared about it or i'm kind of scared off or because i haven't pursued something outside of my little thing that i was held into right they told me in school that this is what it's supposed to be all the time and so since in school they told me this is the only thing i can get an a in 
right? Matter of fact, have you ever thought about the fact that they grade you like me? What's the difference between an A student and an A uh, and an A steak? You go out for a date. What's the difference between a date that expires and milk that has an expi expiration date on it? Now, somebody say, oh, see, you just digging for stuff. You're looking, you're, you're, you're finding stuff there that's not even there. I know. I know somebody's there, ready to go there. And, and, and it's cool. I'm not even mad at you for going there, right? Right? But I'm, but I'm saying study and research and see if there's any kind of smoke. And if there's smoke, then I ask you, you know, to look for a weapon that's just been fired. It's just been discharged. How you doing, line painter? Yeah, you would think measurement would be universal. Right? Matter of fact, it tells you to measure things by furlongs in the Bible. Do you even know what a furlong is? You could you could actually start to look at the size of heaven. Now you got to realize it's a heavenly furlong. It's an angel's furlong, and therefore we got to look at this different. But you can kind of start getting the concept of the measurements of heaven, just like you can get a concept of the measurements of the temple if you knew what a furlong was. You said they call it ten way in our math curriculum, public school, just hearing teaching teaching the 27 years mm, okay yeah i didn't i didn't even know that right but a furlong a furlong basically just from here to here that's it sorry facebook from here to here if you if you can get about here to here in your measurement that's a furlong now my furlong that's why i say you got to figure out which angel is talking about right and therefore we can't exactly say we know what the size of it is but it's saying however big the angel is by the way the angel was so huge that he was towering you know over uh, and not towering like we think, like towering over uh, John, right? So angels obviously can be a lot bigger, but it's telling you that you can get a you can get a sense of the size of heaven and the measurements of what it's going to look like. But we don't have culture, so we spell things out. We manipulate things have been manipulated, and we're trying our best to get outside of those spells that people have cast. We want to get back to righteousness. We don't know how to spell things out correctly. We don't know how to measure things out. We don't know that heart in Hebrew is the same word for passion. So if you say you have Yah's passion, his heart, he said, this is why your Bible says that he's going to give us back shepherds after his own heart, his own passion. So if you're of his own heart and his own passion, the word in, in Paleo Hebrew is lab, right? Which is lamed bit which literally lamed means the shepherd meant, right? Pastors after his own hearts, shepherds. And then what? Also, it is bit, which means house or the son or even the son who comes out of the right family or the son who comes out of the right house. So if he's going to give you shepherds after his own heart, it means literally heart means the shepherd who comes out of the family or the house of the son of Yah. Or even the shepherd who comes out of the sons of Yah. Either way you want to look at it, you've got to have a specific type of heart. How you doing, Marky? Even if you, you see what I'm saying? If I have the correct heart posture, then I can be a shepherd. So if you have a shepherd that doesn't even comprehend that, can he shepherd correct? Can she shepherd correct? Or do we have to now start doing spells? Well, you know, that sounds, see, this is when people got to change stuff. Well, you know, I mean, the, the Bible does say that, but this is what I got revelation. It's not your revelation. First of all, it's not what you revealed, what was revealed to you. It's can, can I can I can I show you a verse before? I, I know I promise we're coming back to first Samuel chapter 15. I'm trying to go back there. Holy Spirit. We, we got more time on Sunday, so I don't want to rush this. Right. Um, look. Roll with me real quick. Revelation chapter one, verse one. I'm going to show you something. Revelation chapter one, verse verses one through three that you've maybe read, but you've never read culturally, right? I want to show you something. And this is why you got to be careful with everybody when they say, I got a revelation, because I don't want you to have a revelation. I want you to reveal. I want revelation to become yours as long as it's still Christ. You're going to see the difference. Revelation chapter one. We locked in, praise y'all. <laughs> you done started something, Bruda. All right. Revelation chapter one. This might be my revelation page that be coming out of the Bible. So y'all be patient with me. Revelation chapter one, verses one through three. How you doing, Sister Teresa? All right. How you doing, Russ? I want I, I want I want you to see this because everybody got a revelation, but that's not accurate. 
I want you I want you to see once again reveal means to rejoice and the T-I-O-N on it means it's a noun a person place or thing so every time I rejoice right it should be rejoicing in a person or I as a person can rejoice even I should be rejoicing in a place or because of a place I'm headed to and I am rejoicing in a thing something that prayerfully belongs to me or I'm in something that belongs to somebody else. So what am I reveling in? Because it's got to be holy if we're saying this is reveling in the kingdom, rejoicing in the kingdom, revelation. All right. So let's read this now. Now that we have this context, I just thank you, Holy Spirit. Take over this place. Watch this. Revelation chapter one, verse one, it says, the revelation of Yehoshua HaMashiach, which Elohim gave unto him. Stop. So the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Elohim, manifests this thing through the process to where now John is going to receive it from just one that he knows. Remember, he's going to see Yehoshua and how he recalled him, how he remembered him. And when he sees him, he's going to fall down because he knows the next time he's supposed to see Christ, at least in his mind, that's when the end of the world is supposed to be. But he sees him and he falls down and Christ is to say, get up. And he recognizes him. He recognizes his skin color. He recognizes his hair. He recognizes his eyes. He, he Right? So, so he recognizes who he is. He hears, the, hears this, hears this. That's, that's what uh, Revelation chapter one, verse 14. So we know this to be the case, correct? That John is getting a revelation, particularly from Christ he knows, but this is ultimately a revelation of Allah. If it's not his, it's not revelation. At least it's not the rep, what we should rejoice in or revel in. Okay. All right. So the revelation of Yehoshua HaMashiach, which Elohim gave unto him. He didn't give it unto me. He gave it unto him, right? Did you catch that? Yehoshua didn't give the revelation, or sorry, Elohim didn't give the revelation to Kofi. He didn't give the revelation to John the Revelator, or Yehachanan. He didn't give it to them. He gave it unto Yehoshua. Yehoshua is the one who's going to present it to John, because John has this relationship where he can at least get it because he knows Christ or the Messiah or Mashiach for himself. And they're going to continue a conversation that they had in Matthew 24. They're going to start where they left off. If you read Matthew 24 and then start after they finish, he finishes introducing himself when you get and, and reminding them who he is and recalling and saying, write these things down when you get to Revelation 2 and 3. And especially once you get to Revel Revelation chapter 6 or so, 4, 5, and 6 in there, you'll see, oh, this is just straight. I could literally read Matthew 24 and start at Revelation chapter 5, Revelation chapter 6, and I'd just be having the same conversation because they, they he's had this conversation with him before. See, so this is a revelation, Right. That is Yehoshaphat's, that has been signed off by three and one to be given in this one manifestation to John the Revelator. That's where it is, right? To, sh to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, to show to who? His servants, not to everybody. Uh-oh. You said correct, the father gave to the Messiah, Messiah gave to the messenger and, and messenger to John, right? So, so, so peep game. And yes, there's the messenger, the angel. We haven't gotten there yet, but yes, amen, right? And the messenger. So this is a revelation of Yehoshua HaMashiach from Elohim. Elohim is not Abba, right? But it's Abba, Yehoshua, Arba, Chakodash. Three in one, giving it through one to another one, angel, messenger, who will then give it to John, who is also a messenger, angel. Yes, apostle, but remember, don't get lost in these words that they've changed up, that they've spelled out for you. Angel means messenger. Angels don't have wings. Seraphims, cherubims do, but angels do not. So this is one messenger, right? This is saying that Yehoshaphat, who was a messenger in the flesh, who's also from Elohim, established even when he was baptized and Father, Son, Holy Spirit show up, giving the message through another messenger, an angel, that John the Revelator might be able to have a conversation, but even John, when he turns around, he sees who? He doesn't see the angel, but it says he sees the Christ. He sees the Messiah. He sees the one he knew. So we know that this is signed, sealed, delivered in every way, shape, or form, whether it's through you talking about the Messiah, whether it's talking about through Elohim, whether you're talking about through the messenger of the Most High, whether you're talking about he had to see him for himself and not just hear it, whether you're talking about even he heard the voice as many waters. 
He knew what time it was. This was not his revelation. It is not our revelation. Exactly. We're going to get there, right? But it's not given unto us, but it's given unto them in this line, right? And then once we get past all that, then it says to show, John is supposed to do what? To show this unto the servants things which must shortly come to pass. If you're not a servant of this, this is not for you. I know, it's tough. Look, I'm sorry, beloved. One of the problems that you're having with your family, trying to give them revelation, is that you could show this to them all that you want, but they're rebellious. They rebel, they don't revel. I know it's tough, it's, 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 it hurts. It hurts me to say, because I look, I want everybody in my family to be saved. I want everybody who listen to me, even the people who come on here and just dismiss it, even the people who, who sell lies on us and try to get us kicked off. I want every one well, because that's Yahweh's will. It is his will, not that any would perish, but that all would have everlasting life. I want every single person to get this. Feel every piece of this. I want you to taste it and see that there's nothing like Yahweh. I want you to revel in this, but not everybody revels. Many rebel. And unfortunately, you're trying to preach revelation to people who are rebellious. Until they are willing to reveal, to rejoice in Yah, this is not going to hit. You think it hits different. It hits different for you. <laughs> this is why you can tell somebody the law and show them that Christ talks about the law and they'll still say, I don't want to hear it. They'll call you a legalist, all this. When Christ literally says, you got to know the law better than the scribes and the Pharisees. He says, you shouldn't change anything in the law, not one jot or tittle. He says, those who do not uh, follow the law and those who teach others not to do it are the least in the kingdom, but those who follow it and teach it are considered to be the greatest. He says, he did not come to destroy the law, nor the prophets, but came that it might be fulfilled. He said, do unto others as you want done unto you, for this is the law and the prophets. He said, when they uh, rebuke you and say a man of evil against you and lie on you for my name's sake, when that happens, rejoice and be exceeding glad because they did the same thing to the prophets that came before you. That's all the Sermon on the Mount, which they say is Christ's best teaching ever. But they're rebellious. You said, so when does the Bible say that the angel of the Lord is not a cherubim? Um, look up the word cherubim, first of all, in seraphim, and even look at it in the Paleo Hebrew, number one, because I'm not going to, you know, if you're talking about, oh, well, show me in the English version of the Bible. I mean, when does the Bible say that there's not a firmament? Learn Hebrew. There's no such thing as firmament. Firmament comes from somebody else's culture who speaks another language, therefore has another theology. That being said, though, it's pretty simple. Look in your Bible when it talks about angels and try to see when they have wings. Look in your Bible when it talks about seraphims and cherubims and see if they have wings. You'll, you'll discover pretty quickly there's a difference between an angel and a difference between a cherubim or a seraphim. Look in your Bible when it talks about angels that are physical. Look in your Bible when it talks about angels that you can't tell if they're spiritual or physical because they look the same, just about. But, you know, teach their own. If you're saying that because you haven't read the specific word, that's like saying, do you believe in the Trinity? Some people say, I haven't word, read the word Trinity. If you know how to spell it, Alakam, it's literally Aleph, Lamed, He, Yad, Mem, which is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit leading us in the water, blood, and spirit. You can't say Alakam, but you say Elohim without knowing that you have, to have three and one leading somebody who's three and one. That's what that title means. If you look up the name, Yahweh, that's different. His name, Yahweh, He, Vav, He, it literally means the hand of the Father through the Holy Spirit reveals um, one who will be nailed for us and therefore will have access to the Holy Spirit. Again, if you look up love, Yahweh, Ahaba, or what you call God is love, you have um, Aleph, He, Bet, He, which means the Father through the Holy Spirit reveals the Son who comes out the right family and will give you the most high praise. So, yeah, I'm not coming looking for your standard. That's why in all you're getting, getting understanding, but who are we getting it from? Are we getting it from people who spell things out, worldly spells? Are we getting things out when we actually keep the characters in the word the way it was initially and originally? Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's probably because you haven't studied it and probably haven't been shown that. And guess what? No shade to you, but that's why we have scripture like Romans chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Anyone can call upon the name of the Lord. They shall be saved. But how can you be saved if you don't believe? And how can you believe what you have not heard? How can you hear what's not preached? And how can it be preached unless the preacher be sent by the most high? For how beautiful are the feet of those who walk in the way. Therefore, who, as Isaiah said, prophet before us, as Isaiah said, who shall believe our report? Not those who are not aware of it, who don't live it. No shade. That's just word.
Now, if you argue that because you're like, well, I've never seen it and you got to show me blah, blah. Look, I'm not going to sit here and stop a whole thing to make sure like we have tons of stuff recorded. We have classes that we do. We even have a phone number you can text and be able to say, hey, could we set up time to talk about it and go through it and we can go through it on Zoom. Right. But I don't have time, to be honest. At least not today. We have a QA and a session if you want to do on Thursday. We'll have the whiteboard up and everything on Thursday. And you can ask away if you want to come back Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern New York time till about 11 a.m. Eastern New York time. We'll be here and you can ask as many questions as you'd like. Right. But to be honest, this is why you got to live it. Somebody who's not living it. I'm mentioning stuff. Some of you already know what I'm talking about. Some of you are like, I think I kind of heard that before. Some of you have no clue. But that's because we live in different ways. That's why, once again, it's revelation, not for the rebel, right? But for the re those who revel. If you rebel, as First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23 says, if I am rebellious, it's the same as witchcraft. Because in order to, a witch wants to control. A witch might not even comprehend they're trying to control, but they're still trying to control something and they will craft things, craft spells, craft spelling, even say how I do it, I'm going to take that language and I'm going to say their language is not as important as mine. I'm going to make it rather than actually listen to what is said in the actual interpretation. See, you can't say I interpret it as because if you say I interpret it as what you're saying is, is that I'm going to change it to what I see. That's your reality, but that's not real. Remember, it on a word means that you're looking through your prism for it. So real means what it actually is, but reality is what your prism is looking through. Can it be real in reality? Sure, but it can't be your prism if you didn't write it. Because by law, interpretation means that it has to be a language involved, the person who said it, the people in the nation they come out of, what is the culture they're talking about, what is the context, et cetera. If, right, even in a contract, right, you have to be able to interpret by what was actually said or instituted, right? Or even sub what you suppose, you even know the proper supposition, right? If you don't know those things, then you're just talking blindly and you're the blind leading the blind or the blind who've been led by the blind. If you don't have eyes to see or ears to hear, somebody can show you something 7,000 times. This is why, once again, when somebody asked earlier, what version of the Bible should I read from? I said, it doesn't even matter if you don't know the culture because you can have somebody say something all day and you never knew. How many people know what barashat means when they first come into knowledge of, 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 of this message, right? Of this type of message. People don't even know that barashat is the actual name of what you call Genesis and barashat is the actual first word of the bible and it literally means in well it means in beginning but the characters not how you spell it but the characters literally mean bit or so bit aleph resh shin yao ta which is um the hand of the or, or sorry the son who comes out the right family sorry the son who comes out the right family who's one with the father becomes our head being by being destroyed being led by the holy spirit to the top the place is finished the lowercase t to the cross and so when Cain is marked, he's tavved. That means that he would have had a tav on him. It doesn't mean his color changed. But if you come from another culture, if you come from Mormonism even, which wants you to be white and delightsome because you follow the Mormon Jesus coming from Elohim, who's supposed to be a, 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 a mystic you know, character that really was a human, but did all the stuff that you could do today, supposedly, and get into heaven and become a god yourself and have as many spirit babies as you want. Well, then you'll mess around and you'll, you'll, you'll fall for the okie though. You see what I'm saying? I have no idea what the commemoration is. Sorry. Um, so, so, so you have to you have to be part of it. You have to listen to it. You don't even know the culture. You don't know what the words mean. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not coming against you, Raphael. By the way, welcome. Right. I'm just trying to say we have to be careful when we go through these things. This is why things have been spelled out for us. Right, but you will never see the Bible talking about an angel with wings. Now, if you're talking about somebody who starts trying to manipulate that, well, you know, there's an archangel, but well, okay, well, is there such thing as archangel? Does your Bible use that? Or is somebody just talking about there was an ark, there were angels on the ark? And so what they're trying to say is those are archangels. And so now they're trying to say the ones that you now call, um, you know, like who's the one that Jehovah's Witnesses say Jesus is, uh, Michael, and all the different guardian angels stuff. They try to say those are archangels, but we don't have a word that means archangel. Not in Hebrew. Somebody came up with that. So every time you see that, you're looking at somebody else's prism of what we believe. Somebody else's reality. Um, okay, line painter. Um, it's a full moon. It's not a new moon. So we don't do full moon. New moon literally means when the moon is new. 
So some people have already done it, but if those of you who are doing Passover today, I guess, you know, at least you're observing, you know, praise God for you. But yeah, we don't necessarily do Passover when the moon is full. That's not a new moon, right? A new moon is literally when it's being conceived, right? When a baby's being conceived, conception starts with the beginning, right? Not the middle, but to each their own on that, right? Just if, if you are doing Passover today, I guess we'll be doing ours April 22nd. We still haven't even gotten to the new month. You got to get to the new month before you get to the new moon. Actually, the new moon, the moon has nothing to do with Passover. The moon has to do with the new month. Yeah. So anyways, but if, if however you celebrating, you know, praise you that at least we're starting to have people want to come back into knowledge. How you doing, Black Steel? You said you hit it. We have we have to instill the culture of the kingdom of heaven here on earth is given to us to have dominion and authority. Yeah. By the way, we have dominion and authority to even bolster your point. We already have the dominion and authority to establish kingdom on earth. So, right, but I'm sorry, we didn't finish Revelation. So y'all see Revelation chapter one, verses one through three, I think we didn't even finish verse one. So it says, this was given to Yehoshua um, HaMashah, which Allah gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel, his messenger, unto his servant Yehachanan. Right, he sent and signified it by his angel, his messenger, who bear record of the word of Allah and of the testimony of Yahashua Hamashiach and of all things that he saw, of all things that 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 Christ saw and that John will see. And he's supposed to give it to us who are the servants. That's why it's going to say later on that there's the seven stars, the seven stars are the seven messengers, right? These are angels, messengers that are supposed to give this word to the seven assemblies, the assembly of Ephesus, Smyrna, uh, uh, um, I'm skipping one, uh, not Thyatira, at least not yet. Is it Thyatira? Smyrna, maybe, uh, Smyrna, Thyatira, uh, um, Sardis, Philadelphia, I'm skipping one because um, Laodicea is the last one. What's the one? I'm skipping one. I apologize. Um, Pergamos, the, and they're all the Pergamon dynasty. I was like, I know, I know this one because it's the whole thing. They all were part of the Pergamon dynasty at one point. Amen. But he's supposed to give it. So these seven messengers are supposed to be given seven assemblies. These seven assemblies are representing not only what's happening at that one time, at one point in the story of mankind, where at that one point, you know, you already have seven stops on the way of this road, this trade route that everybody was making trade on. But also, these are seven assemblies that um, are going to represent what we deal with, right? The assembly of Ephesus is the assembly who's gotten into a lustful spirit with that Artemis spirit, and we lost our first love, right? So we have to repent from that. The second assembly, we think we are poor, but really we are rich. We got to make sure we get back on track with that and know who we are, right? And that the synagogue of the Satan is not who they say they are, but we are who we say we are. This is our report. And then you get to the Pergamon dynasty, that third assembly, right? The third third assembly is dealing with their stuff. And they're basically having an issue to where they're getting the Bala Am doctrine, which is when preachers are getting paid in gold to be able to betray their own people by shifting the word into something else, right? And then also they carry something called um, Nicolaitan doctrine, which the first assembly, at least they were against the deeds of those who did this. But the third assembly is dealing with people who are trying their best to ensure that they are what that they are actually um, in the Nicolaitan doctrine. They conquer other people. They control other people. They use witchcraft against other people. Right. Then the fourth assembly, the assembly of Thyatira, they their problem is, is that they're actually laying in bed with they're selling everything they can to be with the support. What's who's called the whore of Babylon. Right. This person who literally is in control of the of of the government sitting on top of it and at the same time is in bed with with the satan so people might not think that they're laying down with the satan but they'll still pay whatever it is to lay down with this whore who's married in essence to the satan right whose pimp is the satan she's his bottom and so people can't wait to get in tune with his bottom and stuff like that then you got the fifth assembly that's when you get to revelation three the assembly of sardis sardis is dealing with this Her Herculean or Hedocles, but this Herculean and Her Hermes or this Herculean and Nike type spirit to where men would literally just be gladiators. They would be into um, activities that were man on man, woman, woman on woman stuff. And at that time, you weren't allowed in the gym unless you were a male slave who was a gladiator. Right. So people who are into that type of stuff or whatever, it takes us away from who y'all wants us to be. We need to get back on track. That's why so many of you are taken by sports 
taken by your soccer team, taken by all this stuff or whatever. You're dealing with stuff you're not aware of. Then the sixth assembly, the assembly of Philadelphia, which people will preach, had no sin. But here's the deal. They were dealing with phileo, which is one of the words for love, but brotherly love. But brotherly love for them meant man on man. So now you're dealing, dealing with some stuff that comes out of the gladiator thing, Sardis, Fifth Assembly, Sixth Assembly, man on man type stuff that's wicked and decrepit and stuff like that. And people who are doing things that are against the will of Yah. And now you're getting away from what Yah's will is for the family even. So now guess what? He has to repeat what he said to the Second Assembly. He says, look, this time he even adds a little bit on. He says, I'm the one that's holy. This is Yahshua, right? I'm the one that's holy. I'm the one that's true. And I'm the one um, who is uh, this, um, who is um, holy, true. And uh oh, uh oh, holy, true, and um, oh, of David, right? To have the key of David when he says he has the key of David, the key of David is so I can talk about divide. If you know how to write that in Avra or Hebrew, that's Dalit Vav, uh, so what Dalit. Uh, Vav Dalit, or what you would say, DVD, Davad. That's why you get, or David, some of you say, depending on your culture, David, etc. But Davad, Davad means beloved. That's why it says beloved and not your heart be troubled. That would actually be Davad, sons of Davad, those who were part of David, right? Those who were grafted into that vine that we'll talk about in the next chapter. Davad, beloved. So he says, so he says, look, I mean, even of the throne of David, I'm of David and I'm over David. And I therefore, he says, since I have the key of David, Vav in Hebrew, right? So he has two doors and in between Vav means the one who's nailed. So he is the key, he says, for the door. And after that, he says, I open doors and no man can shut. I shut doors and no man can open. He says, you only have a little strength. And he reminds us, he says, I know there's a synagogue of the Satan and they say that they are the people, but they really are not. And he says that I'm going to have, have it to where I'm going to show the world that I've always loved you. And I'm going to have people learn how to worship by sitting at your feet. That means you've got to become the teachers. And then the seventh assembly, he comes and he says, the assembly of Laodicea, I wish I knew if you were hot or cold. One day you in my word, the next day you're not. One sitting you say all glory to God, the next minute you cussing everybody out. One minute you saying that we need to be better fathers, the next minute you bring 20 children on stage and say we got to be better fathers. He said, you're so confusing. I got to vomit you. I got to spew you. As soon as I taste you, my body comes into, right, everything in my body realizes something's going to make us sick and literally throws, has to throw you up. So this is not for everybody. He's not even talking. When he's even giving the warnings, he's not warning the world. Those who are in the world that want to come into this, they have to come into this and be grafted into this and start to believe it before this can even become a revelation that they can partake in. But first, it has they have to be in line with the teachings of the Most High, of the Christ, of the Messiah, of Elohim, of Abba, of Ravach HaKodash. Then they have to be in line with the angel. Then they have to be in line with John. Then they have to be in line with the angels or the messengers or the leaders of the seven assemblies. That means they have to become part of the seven assemblies. This is not written to people who are out there by themselves. This is written to those who will come in. Am I saying we shouldn't preach to those that are out there? Of course, preach it, but realize that they're not even going to receive a lot of it. Don't fall into this position where you're sitting up there and being frustrated and mad and angry. And why is everybody not getting this? Because this is not for everybody. This is for followers of the way. Come on. This is not for everybody. This is for those who live this. This is not for everybody. This is those who uh, adhere to this. This is not for those who are going to come and, and come to church on Sunday and say, oh, we're so thankful and we're so thankful that we're not legalists and stuff like that. And they're all going to be ordained preachers say that, which means that they have to legally be part of the state. This is yeah, exactly. Come on. This is talking about a specific nation. This is not for everybody. Right. You can be mad about me saying that. How you doing? Oh, I think I said a lot earlier. Hey, how are you doing? This is Sheila if I missed you earlier. This is not for everybody. This is for those who will follow it to the character. Law, statutes and commandments. So then verse three of Revelation chapter one. And then we can finally get back to first Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. We've already been in there, believe it or not. But let's get, let's get back to it. blessed is he that readeth Barak. So the blessing. For those who do this is what? He that readeth, but it doesn't stop there because a lot of people read it by itself. Blessed are those that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. This is prophetic. Watch this. And keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So it's not blessed are those that read it because a lot of people read it and they'll say, well, I've read it and this is what I get. Mm -mm. Blessed are those that read it. But don't stop there. 
have an ear to hear it. That's why at the end of each one of the seven assemblies, starting in chapter two, he's going to say, those who have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit saith. That's what it's going to say in Matthew chapter 13. Let those who have an ear to hear, hear. Not everybody has an ear for this. Not everybody is developed enough. What you say? You said your little grandson was praying and he mentioned free will. Come on, right? Amen. Come on, little baby. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's something awesome, right? Don't beat yourself up because there was a time where you didn't comprehend the word like this. There was a time you didn't give Yah his due and his glory and his glory could not be upon you because his grace was not upon you because you didn't know who he was. There was a time where you didn't do those things, beloved. That's all right. They can change just like you did. There was a time where some of you thought that you were men, even though you were women. Praise Yah that you were able to come out. There was a time where some of you who thought you were women or swore that you were more like a woman rather than a man. Or there was a time that you thought being a man was to be manipulate and control other men. Or to manip if you were a woman and thought you were supposed to control and manipulate other women. Or even control and manipulate yourself by allowing some strange spirit inside of you, figuratively or literally. Take your pick. Or even spiritually. Right? But because Yah is in us, and because Yah is around, and because somebody was was uh, didn't change, somebody didn't say, I'm going to make it easy. Like, I'll still love you, but I'll love you where you are because love has to have standards. There's no such thing as unconditional love. Conditions are set. Boundaries are set. So, so because I have these boundaries specifically, I recognize exactly what it says. I'm not going to come out of the boundary. And so when somebody finally said, you know what, I'm I've come to myself, I'm in the pig pen, I got my inheritance early, and it wasn't what I thought it was, and I'd rather just be a servant, when they come back to the house, we say, man, don't come in here like that. Put your robe back on and put that ring back on. Uh, you know how long I done had them taking care of this calf waiting on you? Come back in here. Matter of fact, the father didn't even say that he just hugged up on them, and he kept telling them that I'm sorry. I just let me be. Just let me be a sir. He ain't listened to him. He told him to get the calf. He told him to get the ring. And even when people that are in the house, in the family, in the congregation, in the assembly, when they got something bad to say, because how dare you? I've had people do this. Pastor Kofi, don't let so-and-so back in. Now that they're gone. But that, I'm, that's, I'm, I'm the spiritual father, so to speak. I'm waiting for the prodigal child to return. And when they return, as long as they return, recognizing that they're supposed to serve the most high, if they come back in here correct, put the ring back on. Right. It's only a matter of time. Put the ring back on. them, And if the sons of the are mad at it, then I'm going to say the same thing. The father said, look, why are you so upset? Do you not notice as your brother? Do you not notice as your sister? They was out there. And yeah, you're right. They did all that stuff, but they once were lost. But now. This is not for, see, in our mind, we're thinking that means it's strangers only. Look, strangers can come in, but that's, but this verse that I just mentioned, that, that parable I just mentioned, that's not for the stranger. That's the, for the one that was part of the family, left out there, for realized who they really were, and realized that it was better in the family, in the house. And how dare I, when they try to come back in the house, lock the door. You said you believe it's talking to the churches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Blessed is he that readeth. There's a lot of people that readeth. And they that have hear the words of this prophecy, there's a lot of people that even will hear it. Some people even have ears to hear, but here's the next part. And keep those things which are written therein. Why? Because the time is at hand. Don't play with this. Don't play with your soul. Don't play with your family. Don't play with your yah. With your Abba, with your husband, your house band, your husband men, your 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 groom, your your bridegroom. <laughs> Don't play with this. This is important. All right, Amen. Salah. First Samuel chapter fifteen, verse twenty-three. Praise your husband for his word. If you're getting some out of this, give him give him glory. Come down. There's gonna be somebody that's gonna say say today on Sunday they, they went they they went to their place for church and 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 not or they came for change uh, they didn't come for church they came for change. Problem is is that it's the heart that's gonna to have to change and your relationships is gonna to have to change. No shade. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. All right, praise y'all. 
First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. We've been all up in it. It's just going to confirm what we've been talking about. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for having your way. Um, First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. If I rebel, not rebel, not to rejoice. Those who rejoice at it is different. But those who rebel is different too. You said, what do I think about the three days of darkness that's coming with the eclipse? Everybody keeps talking about that with the eclipse and the three days of darkness and all these things. Um, and we'll see. And even if it is three days of darkness, it's not going to hit the whole entire planet. It's three days of darkness, too. But when people talk about three days of darkness, it's a lot of, um, I'll just say this. The Bible says that there'll be changing of seasons. There'll be earthquakes. There'll be rumors of war, all this stuff. When this stuff happens, it says, don't don't marvel at it and, and realize those things must happen. But those are the beginning of sorrows, right? Yahushua says, those who can endure all these things that are that are coming up, the same shall be saved. And then also, too, after that, it makes it a point to say in Matthew 24, verse 14, when we preach this proper interpretation of the kingdom throughout all of the cosmos, throughout all of the systems, throughout all of the world, the Arats even, then that's when the most high is going to come back. So anything outside of that is not really something that worries me. So um, outside of that, I really don't have much for you. Um, anybody who's trying to tell me that a physical thing is going to be the determination of what brings Christ back when he says in his word not to look at it that way. I just, you know, I don't I don't give it too much thought. Right. So. I, I don't know if that answers answers your question. Uh, anything outside of that is an opinion. And really, it's an opinion that's not based off of much because I haven't really studied and researched it because I don't really, I'm not really concerned about it. Um, but thank you for the question, though. Oh, appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you, Drew. Thank you. So, and thank you for being on. And thank you, everybody, who came coming over from the podcast. If you're on Facebook, uh, Clapper, YouTube, TikTok, we appreciate your presence. All righty. So here we go. And um, thank you for being on Clapper, too, because we're trying to see if we can build back our presence. I, I used to be on Clapper all the time, um, like a couple years ago, and I just kind of stopped. Or whenever Clapper kind of got big or whatever, I kind of stopped um, a while ago. So we praise you that we're at least getting back there slowly but surely and prayerfully. We'll have the same effect to people that are there to help them um, in life in general and stuff and be able to support one another. All right. So here we go. Uh, where are we at? First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. The rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Once again, witch means one who controls or one who crafts or creates things to control. Thanks for being part of the community, Daryl. How you doing? So and how you doing? Praise y'all. So a witch is one who controls a craft. So what if you craft something you have created and really when you're dealing with witchcraft, what are you doing? You're really kind of merging things for the most part to bring things together. Earth, wind, water, fire. Right. You're merging things and then you always have to have a fifth element, usually somebody's somebody's essence or something that has life. Right. So you got to have like, you know, now these are various hyper stereotypical. I'm not even saying this is the way it works. But, you know, when you see stuff like I of I of newt or something or tongue of toad or, you know, somebody's hair, or blah, blah. But it's supposed to be an essence of something. Right. Um, those are usually highly exaggerated things, but there are people that believe in that. Matter of fact, um, my well, I won't tell you who it is in my family, uh, but I can tell you like three sisters in my family, um, three, three uh, women in my family actually were trying to study some of that stuff before or at least knew somebody. Some of them did. One of them just knows about it. But uh, they were trying to get into this little coven. Um, which was trying to become a hive, but, you know, it was still a coven. It was smaller. A hive is many witches. A coven is a small amount. Uh, I forget what the number that makes it become a hive or whatever. Forgive me. But they were trying to, you know, study this stuff. And they were told straight up. Now, this is an extreme example. This is not the norm. This is not me trying to do the racism thing or reverse racism thing, because y'all y'all already know somebody going to come up with that stuff. And that's not even where I'm at. But just hear me, please, if you don't mind. There, in this particular case instance, there was um, a witch that they were trying to learn from. And the witch straight up told him, if you're going to um, be part of this, here's your assignment. You know, make sure you that you know about certain things, have your earth, wind, water, fire together. But when you come for our meetings and our teachings and stuff, you better make sure that you bring a person. And to be honest, in this particular group, in this particular coven, they made it a point to say, you better bring somebody who is black. You have to have a black friend 
and hopefully you can bring them with you, but you at least got to find one black person you can be friendly with because you need an essence. That's what they were using in this particular coven. Now, I'm not here to tell you that everybody does that. I'm telling you in this particular coven, okay? I don't want to out the person in my family, right? Um, none of you even know them anyways, but you never know, right? But they were telling them straight up, that's what they want. But even get outside of that, look at the fifth element. It's a movie, but people oftentimes are telling you real things. And a lot of these people are into witchcraft. So fifth element, you have earth, wind, water, fire. And then what is the fifth element? Supposedly the first woman, not the first man, but the first woman, this Lilith, or even if some of you think the, what, what do they call it? La Lutha or La, which really should be like Lava Lava uh, Ata or something like that. But, but the, uh, but but you know th this first woman that they come around with, right? By the way, can I can I can I just put a pin in the pin that I'm already putting the pin in? <laughs> By the way, be careful. I'm not saying don't study, 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 but always know culture enough. Be careful because I know floating around, and I'm not even talking about anybody particularly. I don't know if it's just an SOC thing, but I know in Israel right now, one of the big things, obviously we should read some of the lost books and stuff, but I know one of the big things is anything that's considered now just called a lost book, we just start reading it, right? So anything that we call a lost book, we just start reading it, right? So be careful. I know one of the big things that people have now been seeing, I've been seeing a lot of teachings on um I don't even know what the official title is. I, I recently read it again. I had read it before. I even listened to it the other night. Um, you know, the audio book. Um, what is it? Uh, Adam and Eve, the first and second book of Adam and Eve. Um, be careful with this whole thing that people are getting into and trying to pull the whole, you know, the daughter now is the Lelavatha or Lelavatha or however you want to pronounce it in your dialect or the, the Lilith and stuff like that. And that every boy was born with a twin girl and that was supposed to be his wife um and that adam was in a cave right and then and he was still out in the garden but before he got kicked out the most High put him in a cave underneath and then as they were coming out they passed the tree that the bible says specifically that they were guarded against they couldn't get to but now all of a sudden this book is saying they had a tree that they were underneath and and, and adam was adam was near the garden, not checked out, not that the garden went away, but Adam was in, just put in another part of the garden and that he was put in a place to where he couldn't, um, he couldn't get away from smelling some of the fruit or was it he couldn't get away from, or he couldn't be allowed to smell the fruit or whatever. Um, but no, he, no, he couldn't get away from smelling the fruit of the trees and stuff to make sure that he always recalled, you know, the wicked thing that he had done and stuff like that or whatever. Like there's a lot of inconsistencies in there. I think I might even just be in the first two chapters of, of the first two, right? Just the ones that I brought up. There's a lot of inconsistencies in there. Be careful about spells that put people are putting out there that don't go with Enoch, that don't go with Genesis, right? And even in these things you're right, you're you're reading about. Make sure that's why I always say culture first. You better recognize like what the actual story is. You better recognize what's been kept up for centuries. You better recognize what's been kept up for millennia. Before you just all of a sudden somebody wrote something in 1920 something and then they say that it's King James, not because it was written in the King James, by the way. Be careful with that, too. They'll say, oh, no, this is King James version, but it wasn't written in the King James. They call it King James because they say, oh, well, we just took it and then we translated it. And then they say we made a new King James version of it or modern version because we just changed the these to thuses and all that stuff or whatever, or the these to thus or the the the, the, the yees to your and all that stuff. And that's that's not how that works. They're telling you it's King James and it's not. It wasn't originally in there, not even in the 1600s. It, right? So be careful about fallacy. People are spelling things out and you'll swear. You just like, if you're not educated, you'll go, oh, okay, it says King James Version. They kept this out too. No, no, that was not in what you call the Apocrypha. That was not in there. I'm not saying everything even has to be in the Apocrypha. Jasher's not in the Apocrypha. I'll tell you, read the book of Jasher in the heartbeat, but start looking for certain signs that. This seems to be made up, right? All they need is a little bit of truth for many and many people who don't read their entire word, right? Or are seeking things. There's some things, watch this, and all of the riches of the most high, you know, there's a certain thing called the unsearchable riches. There's some things that he's going to reveal it to you in time when you know his face, when you see his face, you'll be able to get hold of stuff. But there's some stuff you're not going to know. And we want to know everything because we want the knowledge of good and evil. We want to know everything that God knows it from his position. No, focus on the tree of life. That's what the reward is. And through the tree of life, you'll be attached to the one who knows all anyways. 
right? So just wanted to throw that out. I didn't know when that was going to come up. I've been looking at that for a little while and studying that for a little while. And I was like, I don't know when you're going to have me talk about this, but okay. But just, just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. But when we get into this stuff, a lot of people are all over the place. A lot of people are all over the place telling you, make sure you know enough about culture. Make sure you know enough, enough about what the Most High says. Make sure you know enough about signatures of authors, things that we can see. Oh, this author says this all the time. Like I've said before, be careful. Be care if you ever hear somebody and they say that they're me, or you get a text from somebody, they say they're me, or you get some kind of voice thing and they say they're me, you can know how you can tell pretty easily if they say good morning. Because do I say good morning? No. So you can tell pretty easily that's not his signature. Right. If I'm talking to some of you in person, I say certain things to you that I don't say to everybody else. Right. If I text uh, Brother Emmanuel, if we text back and forth, we have a certain um, whatever you call those smiley faces, whatever those uh, emojis. We have a certain emoji that we're going to use. I don't really use it with anybody else. With him, I'll use it every time and he'll use it every time. Right. So you see what I'm saying? Relationship. Don't let people spell things out. There's certain things relationship wise. There's some language I would use for some of you that I wouldn't use for others. There's some things I've revealed about myself that I wouldn't reveal to others. So be careful how people are spelling things out. Right? Be careful how things these spells. Once again, in Hebrew language, you don't even use spelling. That's a very uh anglo-ish way of doing things right they use character if you change the character you change the word the character should be the same every time so you said someone um bought the rights to a certain form in the bible and rewriting to be more inclusive uh you feel like that has been happening for years this is what oh thank you very much appreciate you tian how you doing if i didn't say hello earlier i didn't i don't think i saw your name pop up so Right. And how you doing, Emmanuel? Right. So these are these are things that you better be aware of. So the devil will do whatever it takes to try to corrupt the word of Allah. Hmm. You say you feel like this might be part of why people are asking or the version that we read. Yeah. And that's why. And, and I used to try and be like, OK, yeah, I just reading, you know, King James Version. Sometimes I read other versions, too, even for study purposes. I don't only read the King James Version, but I usually do this, first of all, to just kind of keep us all, you know, unified and together so i'm just like let's just have the same thing that's coming out of the same version together let's have the same middle english let's have the same if we're going back to our original language and stuff let's have the same way of getting there so that's the reason why i'm led to do it that way but you know if somebody reads are there certain ones i'll say don't read like i'd say all the time like niv niv is from alexandrian teachings and doctrine a lot of people don't even notice this difference there's an alexandrian bible people don't even know there's such thing and that's and the niv literally erases verses and a lot of them they don't believe in certain things that we believe in that's why they erase certain verses if you get a new world translation they obviously don't believe in christ matter of fact they believe that charles taze russell um well their belief has changed a lot now but you know their belief is that the world was already supposed to have ended long story short and so you know and and um, christ although born of a virgin has no divinity in him at all so he was just a regular person, just having to be born of a virgin, even though his death is something that covers everybody's sins. But he had no divinity in him at all. So there's a lot of stuff like when you read different versions of the Bible, you got to ask yourself, like, where did it come from? What's this? That's why I say be cultural. So in the New World Translation, they say what in the beginning. Um, so we would say in the beginning was the word. The word was Elaham. The word was Elaham. Right. That's about a shot. They would say in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was like God, or if there's even some versions of it where they say the word was a God. Now, even though we're talking about Elohim, they talking about God, we get what they did there. They shifted that thing real quick, right? It's a spell. So you have a lot of people who are under that spell and they'll go door to door earnestly, by the way. I was one of them, earnestly, um, intensely, uh, in their mind, purely. I'm not here to like tell you that every Jehovah's Witness is evil or, or has evil intent. I mean, purely, really, and sincerely want you to get what they consider to be the sincere melt. But they're under a spell, right? Charles Taze Russell, who's not the first person to kind of start their whole, the end of the world's going to start here. Nope, it's going to be here thing. But he's somebody who said, when he wrote the insight to the scriptures that, the, the, um, that they have, he said, if you had a choice between reading the Bible or reading his insight to the scriptures, you should read the insight to the scriptures every time. Right. That's when we get into the spells. Right. That's when it's dangerous. You always check John 1. 1. There are certain verses you should always check. 
right? If you're talking about NIV, check where it talks. Please forgive me for forgetting those verses on top of my head. But if you're going to check NIV, look in your Bible first in the King James or another version of the Bible. But look in your Bible where it talks about Christ um, drawing the line in the sand. They'll take that out. They have a lot of verses that they've taken out, but they'll take that out. And if you do the research on why, you'll start going, oh, they don't believe what we believe. You see, so there's a lot of stuff that you'll hear preach, taught, spoken into, versions of the Bible, people rewriting even books that people have written about the Bible, people changing up what C.S. Lewis was talking about. You'll see a lot of stuff that happens over time. Um, but Ravi Zacharias, them having to beat his name up once he passed away. Uh, a lot of people are trying to take us away from stuff that actually gets us to free uh, through free will to the most high. Military Bible, of course. Yeah, I mean, well, that's you know, what song. And they do that. I don't even. Well, I guess it's become the military Bible, but a lot of people use it where, you know, you got songs, proverbs. And then but also too, look at what the military believes. The military believes that everybody, which I'm not even necessarily against, but the military believes. Right. I was in. I actually went, thought about becoming a chaplain, at least a chaplain's assistant. I thought being a chaplain's assistant would be fire. Like I wanted to go over to chaplain when I want to defend the chaplain. I want to defend the man of the man of God. That's what I wanted. <laughs> I thought about it. That's why I ended up doing the musician thing and then become the MP. And then from there, I was like, shoot, I'm going I'm to start defending the man of the man of God everywhere he goes. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do in the military. For real, for real. I was going to be his line of defense. I wanted to be his number two. But anyways. Um, and then eventually started thinking about becoming a chaplain. And I was like, you know, at, by that time, now I was kind of like, I'm out. But, uh, but yeah, the, um, they believe in the military that you are supposed to make sure that everybody's spiritual belief is represented. And even if you're a Christian chaplain, a chaplain means you got to be able to do everybody. So if somebody, if you, you'd be a Christian chaplain, but let's say somebody's a, a devil worshiper, you have to speak to them and help them to through the devil or through Right. But you have to help them to be able to get where they need to be. That's that's what you're supposed to do. If you are a um, devil worshiper chaplain, but you um, come across a Muslim, you have to come outside of your devil worship and you have to be in tune with Allah, and what Allah teaches and help them to be able to get where they need to be through it. That's that's a chaplain. That's what they do. Right. So in our mind, we just go, oh, every Christian chaplain believe and they might believe what the Bible says, but they have to be willing to what? To capitulate. They have to live double minded. They have to. It's part of the it's part of the law. Matter of fact, if you're a chaplain, you better not say. And, and look, I'm not I don't pre pray this. Right. But one of the problems I had is when I saw this stuff coming down the pike, I saw people get arrested during change of command service services for this, where people would say in the name of Jesus. Right now, that might not be, be my belief, but you should have the right to pray in the name of whoever you say you believe if everybody's religious rights supposed to be. But they say, no, you can say in his name. Matter of fact, some people have a problem with God, but you can get away with God. But you better say in his name. Don't say in the name of Jesus or the name of Allah or in the name of whomever. What you say? You said right. I was very intrigued by the chaplain, but all, but I knew all they had to uh, had to do, and, and was like, no, <laughs> yeah, take strong mind. Take, yeah, and I, and by the way, um, it does take strength of mind. It takes courage to do that. It's just once again, you got to make certain concessions, and you work for Caesar or Kaiser, right? And Kaiser said, do it like this. So you got to make a decision. How you doing, brother TJ? You got to make a decision. I hear you have a, yeah, it's painful, right? And even like, so so I'm, I'm just saying, but see, it's witchcraft and witchcraft is the same as rebellion. We rebel, Reve revelation, we rejoice because we know what's coming for us. But those who rebel, it's not for them. Rebellion is as, as, the, is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion equals witchcraft. That's what that says. Is that in your Bible? I want to make sure I'm not making that up, right? I want you to make sure. I know I'm not making it up, but I want you to make sure I'm not making it up. Is rebellion in your Bible? Because if rebellion is in your Bible, if it says that there, for uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, if it says rebellion there, and then it says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, that means rebellion equals witchcraft, and witchcraft equals rebellion. Period. You can try and shift it all you want. See, it's interesting. That's why I say be careful of people who want to give you a half truth and have you living a whole lie or want you to support a whole lie by giving you a half truth. If witchcraft 
is rebellion against the most high, then they can't say, well, I'm picking and choosing. And so I like this part of the Bible, but then I'm going to do that. No, you're trying to control. You're trying to manipulate. You're trying to use witchcraft. If it says in my Bible, if you say in this culture that you say you claim even partially, well, guess what? This what this is dedicated on is zero rebellion against the king. If we were on a ship and you rebelled against the captain, what would they call that? Come on, y'all know. Some of y'all know this from Pirates of the Caribbean and stuff, but y'all know it, right? Some of you know it from being in the Navy, USN, like I was. Some of you know it just because you study, right? But 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 if we were on a ship. And you went against captain's orders. If we were on a sub and you went against captain's orders, heck, if we were, uh, if we was on, on on the ground in the middle of Iraq, and you went against uh, staff sergeant's orders, or went against, especially if you went against, um, let's say, you went against, well, not just sergeant major. Sergeant major might not even be out there for real, for real. <laughs> but let's say you went against um, uh, lieutenant's uh, uh, second lieutenant's order or first lieutenant's orders. As mutiny. What is the punishment for mutiny? Or what could it be? We, we just want to make this clear. Right? We need to put this in our 11 box today. We want to make this so clear. The punishment for mutiny is what? Come on. Walk the plank. Loss of life. Hangman's noose, firing squad, <laughs> right? That's 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 the price of mutiny. Now, watch this. When you join the military, did they want you to commit mutiny? See, this is when people try to get into this free will thing, or they don't want to talk about free will. How you doing, Remnant? Did they did did, did when you joined the military? Did they want you? Did they put you to boot camp? Give you all that training, dedicate money to you, even though it wasn't enough. But you hear what I'm saying? Dedicate money to you, do all this stuff, put you through basic, send you to C school, whatever they had to send you to, A school, C school, whatever. Get your MOS together, allow you to be uh, recognizing your MOS or your NAC. They did all that stuff. Did they do all that because they wanted you to go ahead and leave? Or did they do all that because you were supposed to be part of a unit? You were supposed to be part of a group. You were supposed to be part of a nation. But people will be up here talking about, oh, well, uh, why is it that's not fair that we would be separated from the most high and that we would go to Sha'al or go to Sheol or what you guys call hell and all this stuff? It's not fair that we would go down there or whatever. Why would a loving God, why would he do that to us? The reality is, is that that wasn't his intent. It's not his will that any would perish. But if you decide to be rebellious and do mutiny, there's a punishment for mutiny. Sometimes when you rebel and you leave, guess what? Because you're not protected, especially during a time of war, when you go out there, it's easier for you to lose your life. It's easier for you to lose your life when you're not part of the nation. You out there by yourself. You're not under the protection of the most high. But to be against the most high or to leave under his protection is to be in mutiny, to be in, to, to cause a mutiny or to be an enmity. And there's only two sides. Either you're the seed of the serpent, Genesis chapter three, Barashat uh, Gaimal, right? Either you're the seed of the serpent or you're the seed of Israel or the wife of the most high. So therefore you're either an enmity against the most high or you're an enmity against the Satan. You're an enmity against the Satan's children, or you're an enmity against the Most High's children. There's no in between. So if you're going to be rebellious, you are at mutiny. You are going to walk the plank. That's the way that it works. And you can't blame him because what you're saying is, I should be able to do whatever I want. I should be able to blow up the ship and have no, and still be able to get into, uh, and still get promoted to Admiral. I should be able to off the captain, take his place, and you guys should promote me to captain when I get back. I should be able to go ahead and help my enemies to destroy us, and then I should be allowed to become lieutenant, lieutenant junior grade, and you take me from seaman recruit to lieutenant junior grade. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense, right? People want to do whatever they want. And then say, I should be able to get whatever I want. But you know that's not even real. 
Okay, watch this. Should who's the guy on everybody be? And I mean, I know he got issues and stuff too. Uh, Antonio Brown, right? Is that the wide receiver cat from Pittsburgh Steelers? Those of you who know I'm talking about. If not, you know, please forgive me for going off the rails a little bit for you. But Antonio Brown, great wide receiver, all this stuff, right? Won a championship. Did, didn't he win championship with Tom Brady and stuff? Okay, I remember the next year he walks off the field. I know people have mixed, you know, have varied positions that they take on this dance. Should if if the if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had won the championship the next year after Antonio Brown walked off the field on them, I know I, I, this is gonna be a weird. I might have to go somewhere else with this because I know this that one's a little weird situation because people will defend. Well, you know what? I'll just put it out there. Let's do a little think tank. How about that? Antonio Brown, if he walks off the field and says, I'm done with the team and I don't want to be here anymore, regardless of whether you agreed with him walking off the field or not, should it be right? Would you be would you say that, hey, we should look at him as a champion? Because he can do whatever he wants, right? Matter of fact, let's do it like this. Let's say Tampa Bay didn't win that following year, the next year when he doesn't even sign for the team, he's not on the team, but he did whatever he won. He comes out. And so let's say the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won a championship Tom Brady's last year in the NFL. Antonio Brown didn't even play in the NFL, let alone with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But let's say Tom Brady wins championship number eight and he wins it. Antonio Brown sees it. Should Antonio Brown be able to say, man, you know what? I won a championship too because my heart was in it. Tom knows my heart. He knows I got problems, but he knows I got love for should, 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 should they just say, man, give him a give him a championship ring? But that's what people in the world be doing all the time. You know, y'all knows my heart. He knows what it is, and he knows I can't, and he, he knows that I don't have time to pray, and he knows I'm not really gonna give to anybody like that. He knows I've been hurt before. Come on, we've been coming up with some excuses, some doozies. And then we like, but uh, even though I'm not doing what I'm supposed to, man, you know, he he gonna make sure look, my mama go to church. So since she go, I've heard this from family members, my mama go to church, so you know that means I'm saved, right? Witchcraft, rebellion. Rebellion is the same as witchcraft. It's the same. Not kind of sorta. How you doing, Shabbos? Not up. Oh, he just reaching for something. Not just he just trying to come up with something off the dome. Not I'm trying to use fear tactics. No, rebellion is the same as witchcraft because once you're rebellious, you got to start coming up, crafting up things to make it all right for you to try and control which control the narrative. And you have to start forming your own it to put on what's real because it what means that it's coming from your perspective. So I got to figure out how to make this perspective work so that everybody will think it's real. And if it's my reality, but I can explain it in a real way, like I'm a real one, that maybe they'll become their reality too and they'll defend my reality. To say, y'all knows my heart, but don't trust when he shows us what's in it. Oh, come on, Minister Shante. Whenever you preach, you better say that again. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just playing with you, sis. You be saying, you, you know, you be dropping diamonds on here. Minister Shante be throwing grenades and stuff, and then don't be telling us until it's, it's, it's almost too late. We be looking and we be trying to get away. And we get away safe, but we, we be feeling that thing when she say it, boy. She be throwing them bombs. Uh, I mean that positively. All right, praise y'all. That's my sister. All right. Don't say anything against my sister. I'm sorry for putting you in that position, sis. All right. Look. <laughs> She know what I mean, prayerfully, all right? Uh, and if you don't, please holler at me, and I'll make sure I correct it, but I'm pretty sure you know what I mean. All right, so so, but, but do you, you hear what I'm saying, right? You hear what I'm saying? Like, like, like you got to, you, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you've got to get to this place. Thank you, sis. You got to get to this place where you realize if I'm rebellious, it's sin, and it's the same sin as witchcraft. If I'm rebellious, then it's sin. And it's the same sin as witchcraft. If I'm rebellious, then it is sin. And therefore, it is the same sin. What is sin? To miss the mark. Also, too, remember we talked about this word sin? Uh, sorry, kahafasalav, right? And meaning even if it's sin, it also means I've got to repent at the same time, right? Because the only way I can repent is if I realize that I'm in sin. Why repent if I'm in sin? If I'm not in sin, but also too, if I've sinned, then it means I must repent. Therefore, if in my mind, I don't need to repent, it's not even considered, I'm missing the mark or doubly because I don't realize it's sin. And thank you so much. It's 11, 11, babe, if you want to appreciate that, right? 
So many people are sinning and are not aware that it's sin. This is when it gets really in depth. This is when it gets to the inception, so to speak. This one is like a layer within a layer within a layer within a layer. Many of us are in sin and don't even recognize it as such because sin means to fall short, to miss the mark. So if I'm missing the mark, but nobody's told me that I'm missing the mark, if I don't know the difference between Genesis and Barashat, and nobody ever tells me that I'm sinning. See, there's nothing worse. Now, this is when we got to talk about these preachers out here, including myself at one point, right? But now we, at, at, at SOC at least, and I can say there's others as well, but now we get into a place where we're starting to correct a lot of this stuff, because this is real talk. This is real talk. You ready? As somebody, if I'm not careful, who might be in sin. If I'm not careful, somebody who might be what? In sin. If I'm not careful, somebody who might become and be what? In sin. Falling short. Missing the mark. Right? You hear what I'm saying? If somebody, if I'm not careful and I'm dealing with somebody in sin and I know that what I'm doing is sinful. I've said this before quite a few times in the series. I'll say it again today. There are preachers who already know. Right? Let's keep it a buck. There's preachers, they already are aware, they fully recognize, they fully know that what they're teaching you is not correct. If you were to ask them, am I supposed to have a Christmas tree? Is Jeremiah 10 verse 1 through 5 say no Christmas tree? They'll tell you yes, but my wife likes it. Yes, but you know, the ladies like it. Yes, but you know, the season and it helps people to come to church. If you ask a lot of preachers, is Easter, is Ishtar, excuse me, against the word of Yah? And should I do Passover? They will tell you yes. If you say it's communion in the word, they'll tell you no, it's not in the word, right? And, and but, right, if, if they say, if they were, if you were to ask them, is the letter J something that's in the Bible? These are people who've gone to school, four-year degrees, six-year degrees, eight years, 10 years, 12 years in school. These are people who's got doctorates, PhDs, all that stuff. And you ask them this stuff, they will tell you straight up, you are correct in saying that what we're doing is wrong. However, we're going to keep up the tradition of what is wrong anyways. That means that you're in league with somebody who is what? Rebellious. Is that not rebellion? Right. Can you rebel against something that you that you that you don't know? Right. See, even rebellion, a, re a rebel is somebody right. A rebel with a cause, so to speak, is somebody who what? who was part of something and knowingly is seceding. You're rebelling against this. Right now, those who are born. So watch this. Those who are the daughters of the Confederacy and the lost cause rhetoric. Those who are the daughters of the Confederacy. They were raised on what the Confederates did. So you can call them whatever you want, but you can't necessarily call them a traitor because they were born into what was created by those who betrayed the Union. So even though they might be off on what their stance is, at least I can comprehend that better. And I can even empathize a little more, right? It's easier to empathize at least due to the fact that, hey, I can see you were born into it. I can recognize that. I can see that. It's harder for you because I'm talking about your daddy. I'm talking about your granddaddy. I'm talking about the one who paid you that. I'm talking about the one that made you rich. And when you lost, you lost your, your, your pappy. You lost your grandmama and your mama who was out there. You lost your house when we started bombing your, your city. I can comprehend that more, right? You were born and raised into this thing, right? You went by what they said. Some of you even were raised into the South shall rise again, right? Some, so you were still, when you were going through re, uh, reconstruction, it didn't even look like what it was supposed to look like. So, so I see what is what you're going through. You made your your family was rich off of chattel slavery. Now they don't have no more slaves. Of course they might be upset. I can empathize with that. Believe it or not, as bad as we say they are, blah blah blah. Look, if you raised in foolishness, you raised in foolishness. I'll give you that. If you raise the foolishness, you raise the foolishness. I'll give you that. But here's where it becomes problematic. If you're the one who betrayed the people and rebelled, well, you're, you're a traitor. And the and your Bible says, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, read your Bible, it'll bless you. It says specifically, one who is into rebellion, it is the same sin as witchcraft. Because one who rebels has to change up what's there. That's why you have a lost cause rhetoric. Because if you didn't have a lost, if you didn't have rebellion, you wouldn't have to fight a lost cause. Come on, Holy Spirit. Oh my goodness. I'm a man. I swear if I was if this was back in the day, if I had some 
shoes on, I'd kick them off. <laughs> right? If 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 I'm a rebellion, I only am fighting a lost cause because of a rebellion. But in order to make it to make sense that I'm fighting a lost cause and to say that fighting a lost cause has value, I have to. To it, I have to admire the rebellious. I have to lift them up. I have to worship them. I have to defend them. And when I defend them, now I'm defending sin because rebellion is the same sin as witchcraft. I have to conjure up things to allow rebellion to exist. That's just the reality. <laughs> right? That's the reality. If I'm going to defend rebellion, I have to defend traitors. Now, I get it. I know somebody says, well, then there was a rebellion against shadow slavery. Okay, cool. I get what you said, right? I'm giving you a specific instance. That's why I said the lost cause. All right? I get it. Haiti needed a rebellion. Gullah Geechee needed a rebellion. Seminoles needed a rebellion. And technically, it wasn't a rebellion, though, because those people were never part of what they came out of. The slave masters called it a rebellion, but that wasn't our rebellion. That was us fighting for who we were, for our freedom, for what we deserved in humanity. But to be a true rebel, you have to actually be part of something and say, I'm no longer part of it. Now, some of you can become true rebels of the world if you would say, I'm, I'm of the world, but I'm not going to be part of it anymore. But your nature, your natural um, um, supposition and what you're usually, as far as your inquisition even, your nature is not of the world, but it is of the kingdom. So really, we're not asking you to be rebels of something that doesn't belong to you, but if you've identified as the world long enough, fine. Be a rebel with a cause. But if you're in the kingdom, you can't rebel against the Most High and then talk about you're not into witchcraft. Does the Most High say Husbands, love your wives if your husband love the assembly. Does the Most High say that a husband that won't take care of his family is less than an infidel? Does the Most High say that a husband should be willing to give up his life for his wife if necessary? Well, if he says those things and you do not do those, then do please do not marry one of these sisters because it'll be an unlawful marriage because you are rebellious against the kingdom. And if you are rebellious, then that could put you in a really bad state when you get in front of the Most High. And it will cause you to abuse, abnormally use, abuse a wife who you coveted, but you covet means that you lusted. You wanted something that didn't belong to you. So how can you love her if you lust in? Lust and love, they're not going to be able to really exist in the same space unless you create cognitive dissonance and fight for a lost cause, which for many of you has become a marriage that doesn't make sense and never really gels and grooves and works together the way it's supposed to. Why? Because you're trying to be rebellious while trying to be in the kingdom. But if you rebel against the kingdom, be ready, because if you rebel against the kingdom, the kingdom has to fight against you. Because <clears throat> if one rebels against a kingdom, then are they not violent? And the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent are trying to what? Take it by force. So if you try to take something by force and rebel against it and change it and manipulate it, craft something, to so you can try to control it to allow yourself to stay in something that you no longer deserve as a witch would, then witches deserve, figuratively speaking, to be put to Salah. You say you remember your name called you a rebel? <laughs> She's right because you don't celebrate Christmas. Yeah. See, those of you who used to celebrate Christmas when you come against it, why do the people who don't like you or why do people who swear they love you but they're now mad at you because you don't celebrate Christmas? You're rebelling. You see? And they know that that means, in a sense, figuratively speaking, they're suffering violence because somebody who's supposed to be part of this thing is now not only taking themselves out, but now their spouse won't show up. And now that means their grandbabies might not show up or their great grandbabies or their nieces or their nephews or their cousins. Right. And how dare they not show up? See, we have it set up. We're in the world. We don't even take time off of work. We don't even have our own businesses. We don't even have free time of our own. We're always working and working and working. So the only time we have to be together is that like this is this one time of the season. That's all we do. We don't try to actually take care of each other and love each other throughout the year because that's not our culture. We might we just take one time a year and we say, let's love each other on this one, two days that we meet up and then we'll go ahead and leave. Let's sing some Christmas carols and then we'll go ahead and leave. Let's go ahead and have some eggnog and we'll go ahead and leave. Let's play blackjack real quick or let's play tonk or let's play bid whiz or let's play spades or let's play. We do that real quick. And then that's it. Then we can go back to where we're coming from, right? 
and go right back to not even talking to each other all year long. How dare you rebel against that? This is our time. But but I come from a place to where we can see each other and love each other and talk to each other and give gifts and sing all year long. <laughs> I mean, we could. And if that's something that you're against where I say, well, why don't we just do this all year long or any other time or, you know, hit me up. Matter of fact, you ain't got to do anything. I'll take off. You only have to take off. I'll take off and I'll put everything together and you just tell me when to do it and, and we'll celebrate together. We'll just celebrate life. But you're rebelling against them. And now you're their enemy because you're putting a chink in the armor, even if they're putting the chink in the armor of their cognitive dissonance to where they can see it more. See, you are. A oh, let me help somebody out. You are reminding somebody that they're into witchcraft. You're reminding somebody that they're into cognitive dissonance. You're reminding somebody they're double minded. You're reminding somebody that they have two ways of thinking and they're two competing ways. And so when you show up, it's a reminder to them. It's hard for people to talk to me sometimes. I was even, um, the Holy Spirit, I don't know when it's going to happen, might not happen anytime soon. Holy Spirit told me to prepare myself to possibly do some kind of, um, I don't know if you want to call it debate or something like that. Some down, down the road has been a long time since I've done any of that at all. Not because I can't, just because there's got to be ground rules. But the Holy Spirit said, just get yourself ready. And as I was praying about it and saying, okay, well, if I'm going to be ready for this, that, or whatever, I recognize that I'm a hard person to debate because I'm not going to turn into left or right. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. Um, I'm not going to turn this into black versus white. I don't really care what color your skin is or I don't do colorism. And thank you all for the love to appreciate you. Right. I'm going to come in. I come with a mindset. I'm not even going to deal with your opinion. Like if that's your opinion, I'll tell you. Okay, if that's your opinion, so be it. However, this is what the truth is. And if somebody says, well, that's just your opinion, I'll say, no, I don't opine. I'm not just coming with facts or context. I'm coming with contextual facts. Right? And, and I can do so without having to say who's better. I can do so without having to say Trump is the greatest. I can do so without having to say that Biden's the greatest or, or, or Rick Nixon is the greatest or or uh, Roosevelt or Roosevelt or or Lincoln or Washington or whatever, because all of them are precedents that set precedent. And if we're still in the place where people are fighting against each other, then none of them set a great precedent. Right? Like I can do that. That'd be fine. Right? And, and it makes me difficult. Like I can be somebody who um, can stand before my people, have on, have the locks, have on our culture, our wear and stuff, and still be able to tell somebody um, we can't blame the white man for everything. Like some things are curses that we brought on ourselves. How you doing, Bradley? Am I saying that we, we can't say that there's not a group of individuals who have not controlled and manipulated things through witchcraft? Sure, but you're not going to get me invo involved and engaged in witchcraft because I'm not going to rebel against the truth. So it's really difficult. I'm not trying to say somebody say, oh, he patted him on himself, all that. Yeah, sure. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Right. However, I'm not trying to do it for that. I'm trying to tell you that I become stronger in what I do because I don't go to the left or to the right. Right. As the man who said on here who it became a meme and everybody's excited about it now. But I don't lean to the left. I don't lean right. I don't lean. I stand. When you stop leaning. You can stand. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Monica. Appreciate you. So are you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You know, so so I, I don't have to be caught up in a lot of stuff because I have a standard and I understand. I stand under the standard. As long as I'm under the standard, then we can have a conversation. Just realize there's certain things that are my standard. And if you're going to talk about something, I'm going to always talk about culture. And if you're going to tell me, well, you know, like like, um, <laughs> like there's the man uh, like they be trying to do the spell stuff on us. They try so intensely and so intensely to ensure I've been pronouncing intent more, uh, by the way. Hold me accountable for that, fam. Uh, I used to say all intensive purposes, but it's for all intents and purposes. And I know it, but I'm so used to hearing intensive. So I've been trying to remind myself, say intent, intent for all intent and purposes. But if you're not careful, it'll sound like all intensive purposes, right? Somebody might be today years old when they found it out. Um, <laughs> I wasn't today years old when I found it out, but I was, I was like, a, f a couple days ago when I heard it, I was like, I think I do say intensive, even though I know it's not. Anyways, praise y'all. Back to what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> and how you doing, Russell? And thanks for being part. Of, thanks for being on today. Appreciate the love, fam. Um, how you doing, Peaches? So, so anyways, 
Um, where was I at? I'm talking about intensive purposes, intents and purposes, intense. Oh, they make people will make it their intent where they're trying to get you to lean one way or the other. But I stand. I stand on business. I stand on principle. I stand on my square. Right. And so it doesn't matter what somebody intends. See, once again, witchcraft, somebody's trying to control and manipulate. People use gaslighting. Hey, you know, well, right. So there was a there was a guy I was listening to. And um, something that popped up on my stuff. Matter of fact, I think I might even be able to share it with y'all. Maybe I can share the link on Patreon or something and uh, maybe screen record it for you guys and put it on TikTok or something. But um, there was a guy I was listening or I was listening to a short YouTube short. And there's a preacher, pastor, and he's being very dogmatic or what would be considered to be dogmatic about um, LGBTQ plus. And this is an African nation. But he I'm going to say Africa. Because even though there's many nations and even within the nations, there's nations within nations. However, he's he uses the term Africa. And this is very true. So I'm going to go ahead and just say it the way he said it or represent it the way he, he would want me to represent it. He um, is being in interviewed by somebody from the West. I'll just leave it like that. You can try to guess what they look like and all that. But so he's being interviewed by somebody from the West. And he is a preacher. He's got on the preaching robe, the crosses, you know, black whole black spiel and all that stuff. Got the robe on, the the red, uh, the red hanging over with the yellow crosses on them, all that. And they're having a conversation. And so he says, um, you know, what do you guys think about LGBTQ plus stuff? And he says, Well, to be honest, that's not a he was like, um, he's like, Oh, you know, to be honest with you, I I I feel um terribly about it. Like, you know, we I, I feel like those people now, this is what his thing is, right? I wouldn't say necessarily we, I have a hell, have a hell to put it in. I'm just representing his position. He says, basically, I'm going to make sure I say this where I can't get canceled. Unfortunately, got to do that still today, nowadays. Um, he says, uh, okay, he basically says, and this for educational purposes only, for righteousness purposes only. He says, um, well, you know, that it's something that's messing up our communities, and it's something that um, God is not pleased with, using his terminology. And the guy says, well, don't you see how problematic he is? He's like, but don't you see how problematic it is? Why would you want to cause those type of problems for us and cause those type of problems for our community and our society? And he said, um, he said, well, you know, that that's a problem that we have all over the world. We're trying to deal with that and coming against it to where people can actually be accepted. And, uh, that. and he says, well, Africa and African nations and Africa, period, that's not something that we deal in, right? Because that's something that is against our people. It's something that's even been used. He's really saying, he doesn't say this, but in essence, he's saying it's even something that was used where you're talking about uh, buck breaking, or even if you're talking about women who did stuff with women, which we don't even talk about that much. We always talk about the women that did stuff to our men, men that did stuff to our men, and men that did stuff to our women, but women did stuff to our women too. And so he said, and, and said it was okay because we were property. So he's out here basically making it a point to say, Hey, um, we th that's not a problem for us, this and that. So then the guy starts to, and uh, and so he says, What what is it? So the guy who's interviewing him says, He what did he say? He basically said, So if I were to, how does he say? It? Oh, yeah, so can't you see how? how that um, causes a small frame of mind and basically that could that could cause you know somebody to um you're, you're basically by not accepting that that you're actually saying it's okay to um that if you you know that that basically you're showing that you're wrong or whatever in it and he said and and that you're actually messing them up by doing so and he says well if Adolf Hitler were to come in. I think I'm guessing at what he says. I'm, I'm forgetting. I'm kind of hazy on this part, but I'm, I'm in the ballpark. If Adolf Hitler were to come in into us and I were to fight against Adolf Hitler, am I, you know, am I am I the one who's, I, I, am I wrong for saying that Adolf can't come into my community? Then he says, well, are you trying to compare LGBTQ plus to Adolf Hitler or whatever? And, he's, and he said, look, no matter how you want to slice this, he starts laughing at him. He says, look, no matter how you want to slice this, it's not in my culture and my culture has a specific way that we look at this and we're going to protect it no matter what. Right. And so, and so he was, he was frustrated. The guy was frustrated, but he can't change it. And what people are trying to do, they're trying to get us to lean. There are certain things in our culture that look, 
So I was very careful to select them, not only because of social media and how it acts, but because of our stance. I'm very careful to make sure I don't believe you're going to hell just because you're LGBTQ+. I don't have the right to judge any man or woman. I use the word of Yah to say what is righteous and not, and say you might want to be careful when you go before a righteous judge. And I also have am commanded to keep the commandments. So if he says marriage is this, because marriage doesn't mean just male or female. Marriage means you're already qualified as husband and wife. So if in our culture, marriage means something specific, we must guard it. Right? Matter of fact, we believe that male and female is sacred because if the Most High created us, if he created male and he created female, then that is sacred. Right. So marriage is sacred because what the most high believes about marriage is sacred and male and female is sacred. Just like we shouldn't ask somebody to lighten their skin or even now some people darken their skin. Or we shouldn't ask people to feel so bad about themselves that they got to get BBLs or that they have to get breast implants. All right. And they have to live unhealthy. And every 10 years they have to get their breast implants redone, which means I, I'm assuming that they got to do that with that. Well, if you get butt implants and you get BBLs, and all that, I'm assuming you got to do the same thing there, too. So we shouldn't be asking people to do stuff outside of who they are, or asking people to change who they are. Well, the same thing happens with your race. You shouldn't try to change who you are. You should be comfortable with being who you are. Well, it's then the same thing happens with, you know, even, um, you know, who we believe the most has as far as, as far as male and female. And therefore, we also believe that the way male and female should conduct themselves one with another and even in their personal time should be what the most high says as well. Somebody will take that and try to declare that you and I are bigots. When the reality is, that's our culture. If you want to do it outside in your culture, then do it. If I come to your house and you invite me over there, if I accept the invitation, I can't be upset that you and your partner are doing stuff in front of my child. I got to be upset at me or have to prepare the child for what he's about to see because I'm coming over your culture. Your house is how your family works. Your family is how your culture works. So if you're doing those things, then I got to recognize that. That's why I have the right to accept or deny your invitation. It's always interesting. How you doing, babe? My wife is on the Honorable Amma. As always, check her out on TikTok, YouTube, or website, and Pinterest at Bloom and Flourish, not A-N-D, a letter N, Bloom and Flourish. She's a healer, herbalist, chemist, and biologist, biologist by degree. Thank you for being on, babe. Love you very much. This is something that's very interesting um, that people don't catch because you have a right to accept the invite. I have a right to accept the invite. The invite is called a call. The name, the word called, kletos, it means to be invited. If you, right, even the word phone or phone, spelled the same way, phone in the Greek, uh, P-H-O-N-E, but it's pronounced phone, we say phone, it means voice. So if you get a phone call, you've gotten an invitation to the voice. If somebody gives me a voice from outside my culture and says, hey, we'd like for you to come in to what we do, I'll probably study your culture or be aware of what culture I'm going inside of. And if I go inside your culture and I see some things that I know that y'all do, I can't be sitting up here looking like it's weird. Right? If I'm going in there, I know what I'm going in. But also, too, this is why Yah says, be in the system. If I got to go in there, if he even leads me, or the Holy Spirit, she even lead me in there. Go in the system, but don't be what? Of it. Don't rebel against your culture, against your people. But the best way for you to make it, unfortunately, many of you, is to what? Rebel against your people. This is why. See, watch this. I'm not saying, the Bible doesn't say everybody's supposed to have long hair. The Bible doesn't say everybody's supposed to have short hair. So I'm not doing that on here, but I'm just trying to show you something. This is why a lot of you were afraid to grow your hair without making sure that you don't do a lot of treating to it so that it looks at least as white adjacent or as friendly to white people as possible. I'm sorry. I know there's really no such thing as a white person because somebody made up that term. Uh, we could have said Eurocentric. We could have said the modern American. We could have said, even though Caucasian is kind of a racist thing to call all white people Caucasian because not everybody's from the same place. But nevertheless, right, that's what we could. Right, That's what we could call it. But that's what a lot of us do. We were taught to make sure that we were accepted as much. This is why when you get your corporate job, your corporate job, meaning that people there are property to a fake person, you go on that plantation to your corporate job and you make sure that you look like what the head of the corporation would say is acceptable. Because if massa don't like the hairstyle, then you could be fired. 
You go into a place where it's been crafted to control that you would never be able to get to the best point, right? And therefore, if you go into that system, trying your best to get rid of yourself, then what, what happens? You rebel. And it doesn't feel great to rebel against your father. I'm just trying to help you out. That's why you don't like your job. You're going to have to use it for now because that's what we're in. But the time's going to come to where you're going to have to at least get the promotion. If not, make sure that you go somewhere else. If not, start your own business at some point because you just don't like the fact that you rebel against Abba every time you go. I mean, you blame the, the, the boss. And yeah, the boss is a jerk, all that stuff. You blame the manager. And yeah, the manager can do better and all that stuff. And yeah, you blame the district manager. Yeah, you know, they come through and they don't even care about y'all, yada, yada, yada. You blame the CEO. And yeah, he making a bunch of money and you making pennies. I get it. The reality, though, is that you're going into some places against your father and you just you, you don't like it. You know, you're rebelling. You go to the hospital, you got to get checked out, but you got to rebel against common sense or against kingdom sense. Right. They want you to have common sense as a commoner. But you as somebody else, kingdom sense knows the hospital is dirty. They sticking me with stuff. Why is stabbing me something that's going to help me to get better? On top of that, they give me here. I am coming up with stuff where I'm diabetic. They give me grape juice or apple juice or the orange juice to concentrate with all this sugar and stuff in it, taking the lick, taking the actual water and stuff out of it. And then giving me all types of crackers and things that's turning into sugar in my body. And then here I am in the emergency room. Right. And either I'm going to have to end up, I'm going to end up kind of almost like getting worse or almost flatlining while I'm here. And then try to talk about, I got to have surgery or stay in the hospital or, I leave the hospital and immediately feel terrible because they just gave me all the stuff that makes me have a have a sugar attack. <clears throat> but I got if I'm going to go to the hospital, I have to listen to somebody who's not even allowed to cure me and only practices medicine. How you doing, Minister Tamara? You hear that? I, I got to go somewhere where I, I recognize this doesn't even make sense. This is why you get frustrated. Same thing with your job. You know that at that job, they don't they don't honor the most high. Right. People say, oh, blessings and this and that. Matter of fact, this is why a lot of you are irritated with your churches. Some of you could be in your church building right now. It's tough. Right. But some of you haven't gone into your service or haven't been for a long time because you know that it, they're at enmity with the most highest word. And you're tired of going somewhere where even though everybody smiles at you. Right. I'd rather be around some people who are mean to me every once in a while, but give me the word all the time. Now, I don't think we should, I, I really don't think the two should exist. How about we say it like this? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the correction. <laughs> How about we say it like this? I don't know if we say it like this. I'd rather be in a place where they might not always be smiling at me, but they always give me the truth and they always show me love. I've had situations where my tire has blown out in the in the middle of the night and everybody who smiled at me, none of them would answer the phone. Even if even if I could tell, they right, because sometimes you can tell when you text and stuff, you can even tell. The person saw your text, but they ain't going to answer. And you even tell them, hey, I'm stuck, blah, blah, They ain't going to answer. But somebody who you thought couldn't stand you, they're the person that shows up. That's love. There's some people in my family that I, that, that I used to think. I, I even asked them at points in my family. It was finally when I could had the courage to ask them openly and honestly. I'd be like, man, I, I thought y'all hated me. And they'd be like, what? Hated you? No. And they'd actually genuinely, you know, they'd be like, why? Well, if you felt like that. And I was like, well, you know how our family is. We got all these rifts and sex and all this stuff like that. And we don't talk to each other. And we got all these little break offs and stuff. And they were like, yeah, I'm not I'm not into that. If you notice, I don't show up to none of that stuff either. If, if it's family, they need something. Yeah, I'm there. But I'm not into that either. Right. You said not text left on red. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, but you'll see it. Like, so I'm sitting there, I've had people before where I, I needed help in the middle of the night. Somebody came and helped me. Right. But I swore before that happened. Oh, man, they can't they can't stand. No, no, they love me. But we have it in our mind. You know, they weren't. <laughs> right. They were doing that. <laughs> so they're not. They, I can't I can't depend on them. But then all the people that was. <laughs> where were they at when I needed them? Grand Rams and Shalom, how you doing? What's up? You just coming in to say hello? Okay, come on, you can say hello. You did your Bible verse and stuff yet? Mm -hmm. Mama, I took my tablet. Oh, okay. Oh, you want to say hello? Hello. Right, right. Go back. No, I don't know if everybody can. Well, okay, there you go. <laughs> okay. Oh, you have Bibles in the room, right? Go ahead, get a Bible and pick a verse. Mm -hmm. 
And then I uh, ask you about it. Then we're going to get ready for family day, okay? okay? Make sure you get some water and ask mom if you can have some magnesium and stuff, okay? okay. All right. Love you. Very close to the door, sir. Yeah. Um, how you doing, Slater? So, yeah, well, I, I, I'm sorry. Where was I at? I'm sorry. Where was I at, family? Somewhere. Somewhere. Where were we at? I can't recall. Somebody help me. If you can help me out, I don't recall. People showing up for you. Thank you. Yeah. So people, so the people that you swear would be the people that would show up for you. They don't show up. You thought they hated you, but they really had your back, right? Now you get to know them better and you get to see, right? It's like when brothers be all the time and, you know, go ahead, smile, smile, girl, smile, girl, smile, girl, smile. Well, she'll smile when she's happy, sure. But also, too, she can be happy without smiling. That's something that comes from Massa. Smile, smile. Right? That's that's where that came from. That's, that's, <laughs> you can be happy. Like, I don't, I don't smile as much as others do. It doesn't mean I'm not happy. Right? When you get to know somebody, right? Like, even if my wife... Well, I won't give all the details, but my wife can be smiling and she has certain mannerisms she does with her body. So she can be smiling. And if I see her do certain mannerisms, I already know. She's not even doing them to me. I just know her body language enough to be like, oh, she she's at least irritated right now. Even if it's not, she's mad. She's irritated with something. So I might ask her to say, everything all right? You all right? I saw you doing blah, 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 blah. And she'll let me know. Oh, no, no. You know, I'm just whatever. Okay, cool. Right. But there's certain things. That you know, right? When you have a relationship with somebody, you're not looking for the stereotypical thing. You said it's been friends show up and blood relatives refuse. Yeah, so it can be a lot of different things. You'd be surprised, right? Yeah, so-called mean people, you know, can have a great heart. And I'm not even here once again. I'm not judging the heart. I'm just trying to tell us we got to be ready for this. These worldly spells have spelled out different things. Remember, in our culture, we use character to put words together. We don't worry about spelling. We're not trying to manipulate and shift. So back to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, it tells us specifically, those who rebel are those who are witches. And you know that when you go to your job and you know that when you go to your families and when you know when you go to certain cultures and you know you go to certain churches, when you know you go to certain things that you swear were all that, you realize there's no Abba in it at all. Right? La Abba at at lab at Yahshadal, in a lot of cases, there's no Yahava, there's no Abba, there's no Father in the midst of Israel in a lot of places, right? And so we're having we're having problems because we know that this isn't righteous. This is why, as much as I love, and how you doing, Sister Serlin? If I didn't say so earlier, as much as I love our brothers that are in the street corner, and I genuinely do, as much as I love our brothers that are in the street corner, unfortunately, many of them, right? There's there's a lack of Abba there. If you cuss everybody out, and if a woman who might not have her head covered, if that's what you believe is the only way she can ever show herself is with her head covered. If she's has her doesn't have her head covered, and your first response is you're gonna call her the B word, how does she get better? Look, look, if, if your first response is if somebody's a heathen, because they're white and then you don't even check to see even in your definition of whiteness are they mixed do they pass this and that or did this so-called white person was he a john is he a john brown like you know what i'm saying like pastor john brown has done more than a lot of these brothers did on the street corner for me because he gave his life and then like a g when they were hanging them basically said y'all gonna pay for this y'all's coming for y'all because of what you did to his people like pastor john brown is like that you know what I'm saying? Y'all look afflicted up there when you won't shed no blood, but he done shed blood. Right? Talking about MLK as a traitor. He shed blood. Where your blood at? When's the last time you fought for us? When's the last time that you did any march? When's the last time you, you let them throw stones at you? You know one of the greatest MLK speeches ever? One of his best sermons ever? I don't know if you've ever heard it. It takes a minute for some of you who wanted to be excited and stuff, so he doesn't get to the he doesn't get to the voice. This is like this. You know, he doesn't get to that voice like this, that, that, that soon. And then, but you listen, and it's one of the greatest sermons ever. It's called, If I Would Have Sneezed. And the whole thing comes from a place of, 
he legit was hit by I think it was a stone, a rock, something like that. Or um, but basically one of them like basically like um went into or damaged his um into his neck. And so the way everything was set up, he they told him like they they had done the best they could for him in medical care. But if he they felt like if he sneezed, it was over. They had patched him back together the best they could. They were like, if you sneeze, it's over. Right? And so he literally was sitting there all day, all night, praying, falling asleep, waking up, had the people all around the nation even, or at least people that knew what was going on with them to that degree, praying, hoping he just didn't sneeze. Right? Preached the whole sermon. Oh, if I wouldn't have sneezed. That's how damaged, that's some of the damages he took. Some of the ones we don't even know about. Right, we should know about that one. We only seem to know about like two or three speeches he gave. But that's one of the greatest sermons that I've ever heard in my life. If I would have sneezed. And, it and I'll be honest, energy-wise, it takes a little while to get there, if that's what you're looking for. I'll be honest, first time I heard it, I was looking for the energy because I still was not that familiar with all his speeches yet. So I didn't realize sometimes he didn't lift his voice at all. He didn't raise his voice at all. And if he did, he did the stereotypical thing where he started like this and he made sure to talk slow and then when he sped up you saw the energy and then he'd get louder and then he'd start to hoop right um so when i first started studying the speeches and started listening to him it was really that i'll be honest i was i was like where's the energy but if you listen <laughs> right to what he's saying one of the greatest things i've ever heard and it reminds you what he had to go through just walking down the street that you could lose your life and catch me out here but he's a traitor I mean, look, I'll tell you, I would even give you as much as I don't like, I still don't believe him to be a traitor. I'll even give you up to like 1964, 65-ish. But by the last three years of his life, you just own some stuff. Like they offed him because he wasn't a traitor, because he didn't give you up, because he wouldn't. He started telling people that he thought that he messed up because he brought us into a house, a burning house. Matter of fact, people that y'all love, who you think are the most Afrocentric, they walk with King and left King when he started saying the stuff that y'all want to hear King say, when he was saying, yeah, you know what? Y'all talk about putting the man up, a man should pull himself up by his own bootstrap, but that's really bad to tell him if a man, you're right, if, if um, when you when you took away his boot, if he has no boot, but you give him a bootstrap, what's the point? <laughs> right? Like, but but for whatever reason, we just have this in our mind. He's a traitor, he this or that or whatever. Meanwhile, Farrakhan can help get rid of Malcolm X and will preach it from a pulpit and y'all still ain't got no problem with him. I'm just saying. And even Farrakhan, in my heart, I've forgiven him for it and still can listen to him from time to time. I know what time he's on. He thinks he's the Messiah. Y'all don't want to hear him in these sermons. Right? Remember that long time ago? With, what was that? Five, six years ago, whenever it was. And he was like, you know, um, you know, I know, I know my Redeemer lives. And everybody was like, oh, I can't believe you said that. And you didn't even listen to the whole sermon. And then the sermon, he said, he's the Christ. He said, Elijah Muhammad is who you're looking for the Muhammad of things, and he's the Christ that's supposed to come back. And y'all didn't even listen to it. Because once again, we're under a spell. See, the spirit, these spells of stuff, it's not just white versus black. You gotta catch your own people too. You gotta be aware of it. This is a cultural thing, this is a kingdom thing. Everybody was up. I know I, I saw so many posts all over, and everybody was saying the same thing. See, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. See, uh, of things of over the earth and under the earth and things in the earth, and every tongue will confess. That's not what he even did. But when you're under a spell, it's not that hard. It's not difficult at all. And my people who are not called by his name anymore. Right. We don't humble ourselves and pray and fast and turn from our wicked ways. So he can hear us from heaven and heal our land. That's the entirety of it. That's the entirety of it and heal our lands. Y'all know I ain't lying about it. I'm not somebody think I'm just making it up. You know, I'm not lying about when he literally admitted from the pulpit of his preaching one day that they off Malcolm. As a matter of fact, he said, so what, even if we did, this is what he said out of his mouth. So what, even, and this wasn't on somebody's show. This is when he was preaching. He thought he was comfortable here. He said, so what, even if we did off Malcolm, he, right. And we dealt with him as a traitor. He said he was our traitor to deal with. 
That's what he said. He was mad. He was frustrated. Remember, Malcolm was supposed to be obedient to Elijah Muhammad, and Malcolm was supposedly Farrakhan's, you know, mentor. And Farrakhan was never in line by Elijah Muhammad to lead the nation. It was Elijah Muhammad's son. And Elijah Muhammad's son, while Elijah Muhammad was alive, Elijah Muhammad sent him to uh, Africa to be taught from a Muslim school. And he came back and he said, we don't teach anything correct at all as far as what they believe. He said, we don't do Ramadan correctly. He said, they don't acknowledge you as far as who you say you are. They do any of these things. He said, we would not be allowed into Mecca if we tried to go. White people didn't say that. The people in Mecca didn't say that. Elijah Muhammad's son told Elijah Muhammad, if I kept up your teachings, I would not be able to go into Mecca. He said, so when I become in charge, I'm going to teach them the truth. He began to do it, and NOI actually began to get into the truth. Once they started getting into what they would consider to be the truth. Once they started getting into the truth, Farrakhan twice took over. He took over once, and he wasn't able to really do it. Second time, then he was able to finesse it completely. And then they started from scratch. And this is why it's more now in Farrakhan's image. And a lot of stuff you guys think about Elijah Muhammad doesn't even necessarily come from him. It comes through the prism or the reality of Farrakhan. You see these spells? But because... We have gotten into witchcraft and because we have rebelled against the kingdom and we're looking for just anything and anybody or anything that smells like the truth. It's not the truth, but it kind of sort of at least well, what we know. It might be artificial cooking, but it's, it reminds of what we think truth smells like. Now we get into something for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity, uh, uh, iniquity and idolatry. We become stubborn and, and rebellion. And now it's become iniquity, sin, right? Or being on the opposite side of the law. And it has gotten us to what? Idolatry. You idolize Farrakhan. That's why Farrakhan gets away with murder out of his mouth. Farrakhan has his family married into his. And look, I don't care about this. Do, do you. But I'm, this is his, supposed to be his belief system. Ready? Ready for this? He's the one that says. He says out his mouth. He thinks white people are the devil. He defended Elijah Muhammad saying white people are the devil, right? That's what he did. Not me. I'm not on that. We not on that. That's what he did, correct? Okay, then why is, why is his family married into so many devils? Why did he make sure his children are married into so many devils? Some of which, right, he married into him to make sure that his family was making money. I didn't say... I believe it. I'm talking about his belief system. See, if you idolize somebody so much, if you become so stubborn, if you're against the law, iniquity, if you fall short into the sin of witchcraft, because witchcraft is the same as rebelling, then you'll miss that some of these people you're trying to follow who are rebellious, they don't even live up to their own standard. I don't think it's wrong for somebody as long as they become Israel. I don't care, by the way, what color you are. If you marry into Israel, you must become Israel. That's what it is. I don't care what color your skin is. Real talk. As much as people don't want to hear me say that, I believe that, yes, Israel, I know what Israel looks like as far as ancient times, but I don't care what color your skin is. If you're going to get into Israel or the kingdom, you must become Israel, right? So if you're going to become Israel, fine. I don't care. That's our standard. That's your standard. I don't believe in colorism. I don't care if you're light-skinned or dark-skinned or in between a red bone or mahogany or ebony or pencil shaving color. I don't care what color you want to talk about yourself. Palm colored, right? Yellow covered, uh, red colored, whatever. I don't care. Red bone. I don't care whatever they call you. Blue, black, daylight, nighttime, whatever, whatever you would call somebody. I don't care. John, just, I don't care what color you carry in because of what condition you have or how much melanin you do or don't have. And by the way, even concerning um, um, science, you know that they don't measure melanin from the outside in. They measure it from the inside out. You'd be surprised. Some of these dark-skinned brothers are not more melanated than some of these light-skinned brothers because it's me measured from the inside out. Right? Obviously, percentage-wise, ch chances are if you're darker on the outside, you're probably darker on the inside, but not always the case. So I don't care about that. I care about your ways because there's a lot of people that are really dark skinned and they better and you better not be bringing them to us talking about can you make sure you marry us because they clearly aren't about the word. Right. There's some brothers out there that are extremely dark skinned and are going to go ahead and abuse our sisters. We ain't we ain't, we ain't with that. 
Hey, Eamon, is that the best that you got? We all look the same, especially if we have locks. Cool. Thank you for being on. Appreciate you. Have a great day. Right? So, so these are the things that we have to get into. I don't care. As much as this person cares about my locks, apparently, I don't care about the color of your skin or this and that or whatever. I care about your ways. Didn't we just talk about that yesterday? How we had to put that into the box? Was that yesterday? I believe so. Non-Israelite ways, non-kingdom ways. He can't, he can't direct your path if you don't acknowledge him in your ways. Right? Yeah, what's the fruit? What's what's the fruit? What's the seed that's in the fruit? Is it real fruit or is it modified? We've idolized these people. Now watch this. Because of your idolatry, here's the next part. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. The next part, because thou hast rejected the word of Yehovah. Because what? Because you have rebelled. It's the same. Rebellion is the same as witchcraft. Out of your witchcraft, you have become stubborn. Because you are so stubborn, you are anti-law. But the kingdom especially, because you'll obey a red light, but you won't obey the spiritual red lights. Right? And then on top of that, now you got to a place to where you are in idolatry. You idolize things. You have put idols in places they don't belong in your, in your life, in high places, wicked places. So because of these things, because of these idols, because of these moves that you've made and allowed, what's going on now? Because you have allowed these things. Because you have let these things into your life. And because you become so stubborn that you'll idolize. That's why I say, even with me, don't idolize me. Please don't become a fan. Fan is a fanatic. Don't become a fanatic of me. Because what happens if I mess around and I make a deal with the devil one day? I pray that it don't happen. I don't believe it will. I don't like to even speak it, but I'm just got to warn you, to be honest, nobody is above the will of Yah. If, if this stuff that I'm preaching today, if you say, I still don't like it, fine, study it first. Don't idolize nobody. My wife shouldn't idolize me. If I mess around and do some stuff that's against the word and try to do stuff to some of these other cats who say that their followers are the way they do, she need to leave me immediately. In the name of all three, she need to leave. <laughs> Straight up. And how you doing tomorrow? I apologize. I was trying to, I just realized the other day, I don't think I actually have your, uh, I think I got it now. I've, I've, I've been trying to actually reach out to you, make sure that we got you connected with somebody. So I apologize. I know you've been putting your stuff in the shout out. So um, you shouldn't have to worry about it today. Next time I update the system, your name should be in there. So if nobody's reached out to you or whatever, that's on me. Um, I realized I kept screenshotting your name. There's so many T-A-M-A-R-A -A um, possibilities out there, you know, combinations. I could not. <laughs> I could not find you, even though I took a screenshot of you. So please forgive me. Um, but that should be taken care of today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the reminder, or for helping me to recall and bringing it back to my memory. All right. How you doing, Northern Lights? So for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as um, iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of Yahweh. You rejected his word. When you started to idolize, whoever you idolized, they caused you to reject. When you idolize, see, watch this. When you idolize T.D. Jakes, you forget along the way, hey, Bishop, please stop visiting Puff Daddy's place because even if you don't go inside his house, the fact that you're there is going to open up sin. Who told him that? Who said that? Who's the person that has, has the right to, in his life, say, hey, son, hey, spiritual son, hey, dad, hey, husband. Does anybody have that right? Jamal Bryant. You was out here, yo, you built up a church in Baltimore and you did all this stuff, but Jamal Bryant, you were out here and you were having sex with a whole bunch of women that weren't your wife, had a bunch of children that weren't your, were that, that you said weren't yours, you got a bunch of abortions, you wouldn't even, right, your wife finally found out about it when some of the women wouldn't get abortions. Now all of a sudden, you know, your wife left you, you tried to go ahead and when it addressed it or whatever, all you did was preach this really wild sermon called I'm the man and never address what you did and try to say the way that David had to deal with sin. But David had to be sat down. David lost his kingdom for a little bit. David was really sad. David didn't get to keep his child, not because he chose not to. He was actually praying for his child. You chose to make sure that your children were off and murdered. Then you tried to walk the streets of Baltimore and got your behind just about kicked. 
ran away once cats were tired of you, when especially when it opened up where another supposed man of God lost his life, more than likely the AIDS, and was probably, now we don't know if he was physically doing stuff, but at least he was trying to set up an environment where he could do stuff to underage boys. He loses his life, and then you pop up there all of a sudden after promising that you would never leave the stuff that you built up yourself with your own hands and that you built with them in Baltimore. You would never leave that place. And then sure enough, as soon as you were able to get more money, you left. And now you get over there, and now you're quick to say, hey, let's make sure that women's bodies are protected, and it's their choice. Which, by the way, hey, you have a choice to do whatever you do with your body. But why are you saying that? Because you were already offering these babies, and now you say, I got to give them a new God spell, a new gospel spells out here. I got to give them a new gospel. I can't tell them that they're supposed to go ahead and make sure that they are pure and chaste and not laying down as much. If they already in their 30s, I got to let them do what they do. I got to give a new God spell, a new gospel. I've got to go to um, uh, bish or, uh, Bishop or Pastor, what's his name? Uh, um, never would have made it. Marvin Sapp. I got to go to Bishop Sapp or Pastor Sapp. I think it's Bishop, Bishop Sapp's church. And I'm going to make sure I preach a sermon that says that for 80 something percent of Christ's life, he never reached his potential or that's how Pastor Mike Todd actually said it. He said what Pastor, Pastor Brian said was that 80 something percent of Christ's life, he was out of order because he didn't make sure, even though according to the law, you can't become a Levite until you're 30 years old, or you can't become a priest rather, until you're 30 years old. So he had to wait till his 30th born day to be baptized. That's why his thing is three and a half years old. He passed away at 33 and forgave the ghost at 33 and a half. But you listen to Pastor Jamal Bryant and he'll flip it and bell it and do all this stuff, all types of manipulative ways. And you say, well, why is he doing this? Why is he doing this? Why is he going now to the LGBTQ plus church? Well, the, edu the same group of people that are in line with the people that say off the, pe the children that are in the womb and continue to lessen the lives of their own people and their own nation. And he goes over there and, and to a person who, who's, who's now become the bishop who's brought his husband in front of everybody. And he says, what? He says, we owe y'all an apology. And the same Bishop Jason who came out not too long ago, right? And I don't even mean that literally. I'm talking about he came out on what CNN for the other guy that finally got fired. And the guy said, well, should we go ahead and change what uh, we think about LGBTQ plus? And T.D. Jakes was quick to say, I think that we should change stuff on everything because I'm not educated on everything and I'm starting to learn. And now Sarah, uh, or not Sarah, is it Sarah Jakes, his daughter, is now out here talking about, yeah, we got to make sure that we change things that we owe the LGBTQ plus a community an apology the same way that that, that part, Pastor Jamal Bryant went on there and said the same thing. It's almost as if somebody's paying these people, uh, Balaam Doctrine. It's almost as if there's more money. It's more lucrative. There's more people that will show up to you. It's almost as if somebody might stand on the sage of the potter's house and make sure that they lay hands as they tell everybody they're giving a million dollar donation. They can lay hands on the bishop himself as if that's in order, because how would the person that's not even a bishop or a preacher be laying hands on? I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry if that seems like I went too many places, but I'm just trying to say they, uh, right? Because you idolize somebody so much that you'll forget that who you idolize is just a human being. And if you idolize them too much, you won't even recognize the sin and you become stubborn. And now you want witchcraft. And because of all these different things, you're in the witchcraft trying to control the narrative, trying to figure out ways to be able to defend it. And because you have, you have rejected the word of Yahweh. And since you have rejected him. He said, now this is where you got to realize this is where a lot of our problem is. He said, because you rejected me, I'll reject your king. I'll reject who you are as a king. You rejected my position, I reject yours. How you doing, Sister Austria? I'm going to say it again. You rejected me, I reject you. You rejected my position, your position's gone. My husband doesn't treat me like, like royalty anymore. Your husband never was always in rebellion with me in the first place. And you were still going to try and be with him no matter what. I'll give you over to a reprobate mind. My wife, she doesn't listen, blah, blah, whatever. Okay, well, what are you doing? But even besides that, was she righteous in the first place? And if that's the case, fine, I'll give you over to a reprobate mind. Well, they don't they don't appreciate me on my job. Look, your job is just temporary. Don't focus on the job. Do what I've called you to do, because don't you realize I have something greater? If you keep idolizing the job so much, OK, I'll let the job be over you. Then when you come back to me later on talking about here, help me, they have lost a job. I worked 50 years and all they did was give me a little watch. Well, they never cared about you. I told you to watch as well as pray. 
They watch you as prey. I told you to watch as well as pray. Come on, Holy Spirit, she getting bars today. Come on now. <laughs> Come on, Israel, right? I told you to watch as well as pray, and they watching you like you pray. And then you're mad that they jumped on you? You're mad that they never showed themselves in front of your face, but they hunted you and brought you down behind your back? I told you watch as well as pray. You busy making sure that you watch as watch. As a matter of fact, some of you watch as pray. What do I mean? Some of you watch as pray. Some of you guard watch what it is for the people who pray on you. And how you doing, Silver Loki? Right. Some of you, some of y'all watch. You guard the things for those who hunt you down. Some of you, some of some of your experience, you know, I ain't lying. Some of you know this experience, you know I ain't lying. The people that you would think would caper for you the most are the people that think you're going to steal when you go to the store. <sighs> I don't know you. Come on. Come on, Auntie Marion. Come on, Bruda. Come on, Brother Chris. You hear what I'm saying? Right? Like, like the people that you would think would have your best interests at heart are the people you got to keep the most eye on when you go to the movie theater because they're the ones thinking you're stealing. The people that you think would celebrate you you get ready to go on the cruise and the people that are saying, oh, look at them, they bougie and this and that or whatever. The people who pay your bills when you had nothing, now all of a sudden you done made it and you acted like they don't deserve to get the respect and to get the thanks and to get the love and to get the honor and to get the connection. I'm just saying the way it is, right? That, that, that you, we, were, we were told, this is an old school thing. A lot of y'all grew up on this. Watch as well as pray, especially if you went to churches. You heard that, watch as well as pray. A lot of us heard that when we were growing up. Watch as well as pray. But some of you, you watch for your pray. You keep, you guard things. I'm sorry, you, keep, you watch as pray, excuse me. You guard things for the people who pray upon you. And they get upset. Like I said, don't be upset with what you consider to be mean. Somebody might have to tell you something. Like somebody might help you. Like watch this. This is very uh, Nigerian. This is very uh, Ghanaian, not so much, but we do this too. This is very Nigerian. You ready? If somebody, if you if you go to somebody and just be like, hey, uh, I actually, actually, I saw somebody talk about this recently. How did they talk about it? Okay, so this guy, American black guy, we all the same people, but whatever. American black dude or American Israelite or whatever you want to say, right? And then you have somebody on the other side, diaspora. He said he finds a Nigerian in the store. He went to the store uh, or he went to the mall because his phone was jacked up. The guy said he could fix his phone. So he went there, no problem, cool. He leaves the phone there. He says, how long is it going to take? The guy's like, it's going to take a couple hours, come back. Cool, no problem. He leaves. He's walking around the mall. Um, he wants to know how much time is left. So he ends up going to the to uh, to a guy and he thinks, you know, he, he's African-American. Right. Whatever, you know, we use. So he says, I'm going to go ahead. Let me just ask my man what time it is real quick. See how much time I got left. Feel like I've been walking around for a while. Um, you know, I went here. I went there. I feel like I still got some time. though. let me ask my man what time it is to see if it's time for me to go back or how soon I got to start thinking about it. <laughs> so he goes to um, a guy and he runs into a Nigerian. So he asked the guy, you know, what time it is? And, you know, the Nigerian, you know, what what, what do you ask me what time it is? What, what what do you mean what time? Where's your watch? He says, man, I don't even carry no watch, man, bro. I just got my, you know, I use it in my phone, but my phone is on there. And so the Nigerian go into this whole long spiel, you know, where you cannot walk around not having the watch, you know, and you do not have the phone. Hey, hey, how you walk around with no, with no watch? This is, this is not, this is not plentiful. This is not what, what, what you should do. Never be in a position to where you cannot know what time it is, right? He goes through this long thing. The dude's just sitting there. He's like, okay, I'm listening to him, but I just really want to know what time. <laughs> it was right, but 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 somebody would say so. He so he finishes the whole spiel and he says, "Okay, I will tell you the time, but next time make sure that you are not in any position to where you have to look at somebody." And he was very flustered and frustrated. And somebody would say, "Man, that's mean and that's evil." But the way he is in this culture, he if he sees that you're doing something that he thinks is not going to get you where you need to be, he's obligated to tell you, "Hey," because he because it's love. It's tough love. It's tough. It's, what, it's not even what you what you wanted. But if you show up to me and I say, wait a minute, you don't have no watch and you don't have a phone and you have no way of telling time, that's a dangerous place to be. So even though he's like, look, you could have just told me the time and that'd be it. You came to the wrong one today because this one that you came to, even though you think it's mean, I'm actually telling you something that is going to be something you'll remember. Matter of fact, because nobody else would have treated you like that, it actually will stand out in your mind. That guy will never forget. 
right? He will never forget that if you come to an African, especially a West African, and you're asking about something like that, and you and it's going to be something to where somebody can have any way of making sure that they tell you life lessons, he knows don't, don't come over here because that's what we do. I used to feel bad about that. People be like, you're always trying to teach and you always do. I'm like, yeah, I think because that's that's what we do. <laughs> that is who we are. That is what we do. That is how we operate. Okay, I see you, Brother Craig. Amen. Right? That's how we operate. That's what we do. If we have a chance to give you a life lesson, we're going to give you a life lesson. But and, and, and if we do so, even if it irritates you, oh, well. You know how many times in many different cultures, they could care less about if you're irritated, you still won't get the truth. Always be learning. <laughs> yep. It's like ABC, always be crewing. <laughs> always be learning. Yeah, but how many times? Because because if we didn't love you, we wouldn't tell you. If we didn't love you, right? And, and so you say, I've heard it before. So what? Hear it again. And again. And again. And again. And hear it to the point to where you never want to hear it again. Because hopefully you'll never hear it again because you're going to hear it so much today that you'll never do it again. Right. If I tell my son something and he starts, OK, son, sure. Huff and puff. By the way, I'm counting your huffs and puffs. You got about two, three of them left. Right. But while you huffing and puffing, do exactly what I told you to do, because if you did what you know you're supposed to do, what I tell you all the time, you wouldn't have to hear it. So huff and puff because you're hearing it again. But while you huffing and puffing, get it done. Right. That's why these spiritual babies who will be on here, spiritual babies of all ages. If you're my spiritual child in any way, shape or form, that's why sometimes you're going to have to hear the same thing over and over and over again. And I know some of you, some of y'all even tell me I can't hate. I can't stand it. He talking about marriage again. He told me you're going to hear it again and again and again until you help us to get it right or you get it right yourself until you get it righteous. Matter of fact, not just right, but righteous. You're going to keep hearing it. And even when we get it righteous, you're going to keep hearing it because you need to hear it so much that you start saying it just like you said. You couldn't stand when your parents said this. And man, when you start getting away from your parents, you're not going to repeat it. Now you say the same stuff in the same manner with the same mannerisms, with the same faces, facial expressions that your family did. Right. Because no matter what, at some point when you got in the place that you got into and your child needed guidance, what did you do? You went to the old tried and true. You went to the thing that you heard over and over and over again. You went to that place that you got some kind of result in your life because even when mama passed away, it's like mama's still standing here today. I can testify to that, that even though mama's been gone for over 20 years and even though I have a lot of mother figures and even some sisters who call every once in a while and remind me some stuff like mama would and get all up in my head and allow me to cry a little bit and wipe myself off and then I can keep on moving. Right. But even though my mom has been gone for 20 plus years, when I do certain things, I hear it as if mama's right there in the room. You know, you're supposed to do that. You know, you weren't supposed to say it like that. You're right. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? You know that dishonors me. You know that dishonors the most. I hear it in my head. I hear my father's voice in my head. I feel his whoopings still. I don't steal because of the most high all the time, as much as you would think, hey, because I'm the most high, I don't steal. That's not always the case. Sometimes I don't steal because I remember my father's uh, belt or hand on my backside and I recall and I don't want it. Now you would say that is 70 plus and you 40 plus. So what? I still don't want it. I don't want no parts of it. <laughs> I don't want no parts of it. I don't want no parts of the memory of it because he didn't withhold discipline. I don't even care. Look, as much as it's going to sound wild, I don't even care. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm not advocating for this. I don't even care because I've forgiven now. I don't even care that sometimes the whoopings might have gone too much, too far. I just know that I'm thankful for what he did because sometimes when I be th even thinking about stealing, I mean, come on, I have a flashback. Immediately, I, I, I'll be sitting down and I think about, you know, I could get away with this. And I immediately stand up because I'm like, oh, that hurt because I remember I got that whooping. You couldn't sit down. You know what I'm saying? Right. I immediately will snap up like, oh, gosh, like, I'm, I'm not even joking with you. I will immediately. And look, you can say, oh, that's abusive. And like, I get it. I'm just trying to tell you straight up. Like there's times because my father didn't withhold discipline. He didn't just whoop me randomly. Right. But he might have gone to. But because he didn't withhold discipline, I'll be sitting somewhere as soon as I just did. Like I'll be I literally have a moment because in my mind, taking from somebody Lusting after something, coveting, being a thief, stealing is something that should be equated with pain. That's why your hospital even says, if your if your if your eye offended thee, pluck it out. It's better that you walk. This is 
educational purposes only. If your eye offended thee, it's better you pluck it out of your head than walk around with something that's offensive. If your hand offended thee, or if your arm offended you, chop it off. Matter of fact, there are some people, and I think this is too far, but because it's talking about a place where we're going into marriage, some people even believe that means if your hand, as far as, forgive my language, masturbation, if your hand offended thee, some people even believe that's what it means. I don't. I don't go that route, but some people even believe it to be if your hand offended thee, that's why it's better to be chopped off. That's why in some cultures, they'll chop off your hand. If you sexually do something to a woman that's, that she doesn't want or boy or child, or they'll chop it off if you steal or something, because they literally believe if you if your hand is offensive, we might as well get rid of it. And you'll know not to steal from now on when you don't have no hand. I'm not saying we believe that. I'm just telling you, people, you know, once again, be careful about spells and how people shift things and what they want you to believe. Da, 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 da. Right. All right. I don't know if I have anything else. Well, we didn't go to Galatians. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Galatians going to preach itself now. Galatians chapter 5. It's going to preach itself now. Galatians, it was Galatians 5. We started at verse 19, I believe, and we read through 23. We're really going to just focus on verse 20, though. So those who were there earlier for the reading, um, you know, if you want to go back to the recording, we probably read that within the first 20 minutes or so. If you want to listen to the recording and read with us, I apologize. Uh, Holy Spirit said we're just going to go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. And after that, we're going to do our shout out and um, enjoy your day. I'm going to enjoy my family day. And hopefully you've gotten something and been encouraged. How are you doing, Onion? Appreciate you. Galatians chapter 5. And well, let's go to verse 22. Right? No, 20. Verse 20. Excuse me. I'm in Ephesians chapter 5, y'all. I'm tripping. Sorry. I was like, that's the marriage scripture. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing over there? All right. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Sorry. All right, I'm going to start here. We can really go from verse 19. I've been commanded, I've been led by the Holy Spirit. We're going to start here. All right, and we're just going to go to verse uh, 21. For those of you who want to go into verse 22, 23, feel free. Matter of fact, our podcast yesterday literally was dealing with verse 22 and 23. So you, if you want to continue this or, or feel like I'm falling short, you can literally just look at the, listen to the recording from yesterday. If you can't find it, just let me know. I'll send you the link. Okay? All right. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. It says, idolatry. Same stuff we just talked about, by the way, right? Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, all over the place. Emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings. By the way, if you have a 1611 King James Version, this is one of those places where I was telling you we don't even know how words were even spelled back then by the elite, by the intelligent. People have changed them again. Envyings is actually spelled here. E-N-U-Y-I-N-G-S. Remember, U and V interchangeable. Um, murder is actually spelled Murthers. M-U-R-T-H-E-R-S. Okay. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings. That's spelled with a U as well. And such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. If you're into idolatry and witchcraft and casting these spells, it's very clear. You shall not inherit the kingdom. So once again, I have no heaven or hell to put you in. Matter of fact, the devil has no heaven or hell to put you in because as much as you've been taught that the devil is in Sha'al or Sheol or hell, the devil is not. The devil is on the earth like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The devil is going to and fro. Okay? So so if you're somebody that doesn't get it, Yah is in charge of what we call hell or Sheol or Sha'al. And if it's he's in charge of it, his angel watches over it, right? Abaddon? So if he is in charge of it and he has his own angel or messenger who keeps guard over it and he will eventually throw the devil in, He'll also eventually throw you in if you're not careful. And then you can be thrown into the lake of fire. To not even be, to, to, to basically have it as if you were never here in the first place. That is not his will. And I be his child and his and who was sent on his behalf. So it's not my will. I'm not preaching this. Like I said earlier, my goal is not to be up here talking about if you're a witch, you can never come into the knowledge of the most high. That's not scripture. What I am here to tell you is if you're a witch or into witchcraft or casting spells or using spells or living by spells, the most high says you don't deserve life. Now, if that's his standard, if you get before him, 
I mean, I guess you can argue. But I don't know how it's going to work. It says literally in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, that witchcraft is the same type of sin or is the same sin or equals um, witchcraft equals rebellion. So when we say we want to put these um, spells in our leaven box today, we're talking about we want to put a rebellious spirit. Because only a rebellious spirit would take time to craft something that would be an enmity with the Most High. Especially if you know that you've already lost. See, this is the problem about the devil. This is why the devil has to go to hell. Because you know it's not Yah's will that any would perish. That includes the angels. He didn't even want them to go. Right? He made the devil before he made you. The devil's not his name. Lucifer's not his name. Those are all titles. But he made the devil. He made the Lucifer before he made you. Did you know that? Did you know that? And that he made the devil to be something that could be worshipped. That's why a lot of your worship music is infused with spells. A lot of witches and stuff, they can put on a gospel thing real quick. Kanye can come into these churches and while he's going through. I remember saying this while it was happening. I was trying to tell people, people ain't want to hear it. But I was telling people, look, man, there's no way that Kanye's had a real sh show enough change in his life. And he's, and he's putting on stuff where you got about $300 tickets to listen to him. To, to listen to his testimony and then listen to this this group. The, the music was fly. I don't know. Some of y'all said y'all didn't like it. I thought the music was, was like that, right? I still play some of it. Music was fly. Music was like that. Music was all that uh, as far as ma how it made you feel. But nobody, I'd be sitting there and I would say, hold on, where's his testimony? You listen to him. He's never talked about how he came into the knowledge of who the most high is. Even if you want to call it Jesus Christ, right? Uh, that he came into the knowledge of, he never gave you anything. To make you be like he's changed, but he's selling three hundred dollar shirts and still should selling three hundred dollar shoes, three hundred dollar tickets. Never told you how he actually got saved, and then everybody was shocked when he went right back to saying he's a, he's he is he is he's a god or he is god. He had mental health issues, and we were so worried. Watch this. See, this is why you got to don't don't get into idolatry and don't even idolize the systems things and don't get into witchcraft. We were they they crafted this thing so well. Kanye was used so well. Watch this. All these churches, Joel Osteen included, all these people. It wasn't just black churches that were letting this go. Everybody was letting this go. Right. And even some of these people in camps were letting this go. And even people that were Muslims were letting this go. And even non-believers were trying to hope that at least he was getting his mental health because we were so sad his mother passed and he wasn't the old Kanye. We idolized. As a people, as a nation, we idolize the old Kanye, even though he did what he told us he was going to do. And when you get on, please forgive me, I'm quoting. I'm just quoting educational purposes, righteous purposes only, or maybe not so much righteousness. I'm about to use an unrighteous word, but I'm just quoting. And he, he did exactly what he told us he was going to do. And when you get on, when he got on, he left your ass for a white girl and then danced on it and told you get down. And we danced to it and then watched him do it and still was trying to. Figure out. We were so busy. He's with Kim Kardashian, who had made her name, whose mother, right, made her name by basically cheating on her husband who freed OJ with OJ. And then mother helped her to come together and mess up Ray J's uh, position and mindset for the rest of his life. And how we looked at him and Ray J had to come out and show y'all the contract that he signed. That he wasn't supposed to show, but since the mother lied and since Kim lied and said that he didn't do it, right? We literally have seen this happen and take place. And then he did exactly what he told us he was going to do. And yet, and then all he had to do to get people on his side was to say, well, you know, the Jews are black. Yeah, you know, he's sure enough right about that. He's sure enough right. Let's go. And we started, forgive me for the language, we started coning for this cone. I know that's strong. I don't even use that regularly. Y'all have rarely ever heard me say that word out loud. But that's what it was. We started cooning for this coon. I'm going to just call you what he is. Call him what he is. Literally walking around in a mask now. I even like the song. I forget who, who, who did it. The same guy who said, I'm on my wheel or whatever like that. Um, did the song with uh, J. Cole. I can't remember uh, his recall his name at the moment. Um, but I even like the song. Hold up. 
Yay, not crazy, right? I like that song. I love. I bump that song from time to time. That song like that. I know I'm not supposed to. Pastors ain't supposed to. I'm just being honest. I bumped that from time to time, and I think the lyrical stuff in there, even some of the stuff you're saying, makes sense. But 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 all it took was Yay to literally come out and say, you know, Jews are black, and we was just yeah, you're showing up, boss. Yeah, you know he rewrite. Yeah, Jordan Lucas, thank you. <laughs> you you know show show enough he is but we we already knew that what you talk what why are we why are we caving up for this man we know this i have more respect for Kyrie because Kyrie be on his stuff and living it and even though he's not even being doing a hebrew stuff he's been living that native thing ever since he found out for sure like he knew his mother was but when he finally went back he's been giving money and everything and showing up and wearing his stuff and saging stuff before he plays basketball and we was making we were the first people to make fun of him i'm like that's us that's our stuff. You ain't never had no incense. You ain't never read about frankincense and myrrh. What are we doing? That's native. Some of us native out here. I've worn feathers in my hair before. And even though he ain't following Israelite ways, he's out there playing basketball and working, folks, and, and doing that, that shot that y'all saw, the left-handed push shot that he did. It looked like a hook shot. Everybody was saying the greatest thing they've ever seen before. He was doing that. He was on. He's in Ramadan. Now, that's not the Ramadan, but he's doing Ramadan during that. So at least I give him credit. At least he's trying to live. We try to say Kanye never changed. All he had to do was act like he wasn't cursing. He did that to us before when he stopped doing the college job. Out stuff, then he started tripping and stuff. And then he started playing nice for a second. The next thing you knew, he went right back into the same stuff. Like, I'm not here to argue whether the Illuminati made him give up his mom, blah, blah, this and that. Because I'm going to be honest, overall, I'm not, I'm not really sure. But I'm just saying, right? I have more respect for Kyrie for being like, yeah, this is something that y'all should look at. And a lot of y'all would have never even looked at um, that uh, the Amazon stuff or looked it up or supported the brother if Kyrie didn't say it. It literally just left a link. And they tried to take all this money that they could and take his reputation, right? But they did that for Kyrie, Kyrie Irving. But Kanye, right? Yeezy, who literally had an album named Yeezus, terrible album, by the way, in my opinion. <laughs> right? And but all he had to do is say, you know, the Jews are black. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, boss. Yes, show. And we just got right in line. Y'all need to go ahead and support me. But you was only talking about, you don't know, Sway. You don't know, Sway. In other words, he was on in that interview, he was cutting us off. He was telling us we ain't nothing no more. He was saying, I'm leaving y'all. I gotta go to the white folk to make real money. And it was like, but we supported you. We lifted you, lifted you up, make music for us. You know what? Get some land, put us on there and stuff, get some stores and stuff, and let us fill up our stores with your stuff, with your brand. And you get paid for it because it'll be your land. We gotta pay you rent and everything, but help your people out. No, he ain't trying to hear none of that. But then, but then, oh, the Jews is black. Yep, showing show up, boss. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and support them all over. I told y'all, yeah, what Kanye said is truth, but I told y'all straight up, I was like, keep an eye on him. He does this every time before he getting ready to make some more money off us. And short, right? And then he's going to go right back to the white people. When the white people say, okay, black people, okay, with them again, we'll, we'll go ahead because they follow our lead. So Kanye gets us to be on some stuff, witchcraft, and then we turn around and we do this stuff thinking innocently and stuff, idolizing him. And then white people who idolize us and idolize him, they say, okay, they said it's all right again. Let's support him again. Now he gets on the Super Bowl commercial, literally just has a phone in front of his face and doesn't even say anything. It looks like it's a really bad selfie video or whatever. Tell people to go to a website. He paid seven million for the video. And next thing you know, you know, he made 20 million, whatever, in like a couple weeks. That's not that's not that's not. See, that's why this is for us. We supporting this nonsense. We putting our stamp of approval on this. We're we're supporting this, trying our best. Right. Don't give him that credit. Hashtag SOC. We still doing that. We still looking for our products first. We still looking for our videos first. We're still looking for what we can sell into first. Is anybody anybody still doing that? See, that's how you build your stuff up. Kanye is not us. This is not for Kanye because he don't live it. How you doing, Christian? This is not for Kanye. You said that book is not for us. Why? Because you think I'm a Christian? Right? Do you know what Barashat is? Barashat bara al-Hamad Shamiyam at Arats. Right. Or you have no clue. You just came on here making an assumption. Right. OK. Make sure that you're ready for me. Right. The same Aman is different than Amun. The same Aman that I'm talking about is phonetically. Right. Phoenician. Do you even know what culture I speak? So you got to be careful. Right. Yeah. I, I see he's muted just in case he's he's listening now. Right. He can at least listen. Amen. Right. So just in general. But once again, 
you got to recognize that book is not for us. Okay, which scientific book should I read? Well, we should look at the science of the universe according to who? What language are you reading it in? Right? If you're talking about Kemet, Kemet didn't even believe in a globe. That's why they can't they can't figure out how the Kemetic people got the stuff to line up with the stars, the stars that supposedly move. And if the stars are moving and the earth is rotating at the same time and the earth no longer rotates in the same position, and the stars are no longer in the same position, then how are they still pretty daggone close to what they used to be? Because you're going off of somebody else's prison. You see what I'm saying? I don't go off of spells. Right, who is us, right? <laughs> Anyways, appreciate y'all. It's Sunday, so we normally go longer on Sunday, but I will not prolong. Uh, we'll do a shout out. Our shout out will probably be a little longer than it usually is because, um, you know, Sunday longer message. So we'll go ahead and let it ride a little bit. I thank you all for being on. Appreciate you. If you want to come over to TikTok and join us for the shout out, feel free to. Um, uh, you said. Uh, um, sorry, what is it that I was saying? I was saying da, 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 da. Something I'm looking for. Oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just do our shout out. Thank you guys so much. Um, brothers who were part of that committee that I was asking about, I put out a little, um, I'm sorry, I'm doing my own thing. I'm tired. Text. Brothers, I put out a text to you guys so that we can have a meeting uh, and see if we can have a meeting at some point. I can't recall the day that I asked for it. I'm going to try and see if we can set up a meeting too for the preachers, especially the ones that are going to be doing stuff, those messages that are just for the Facebook group only. So we'll have that. Please, um, SOC University, everybody who's also part of Patreon in general, make sure you're looking for updates and different videos that are coming on. We will have tomorrow. Uh, look out for your Google Calendar invite. I'm not sure. You'll find it about 1.30 if this is the week that when life happens, happens, and when it's the following week. You should see that reminder also to uh, see, uh, uh, see tomorrow. At 6.30 a.m. Eastern New York time, we'll also have our early rise of Bible study session. So if you'd like to join us for that, feel free to do that. And um, we look forward to having you guys on that. I think I'll preach here for tomorrow. Let me double check and see who it is. It should be Minister Tama again. I'm on. All right. So prayerfully, you guys can join us for that at 6.30 a.m. Eastern New York time, and then I'll see you tomorrow for the live session at 8 a.m. We Oh, before we leave, I apologize. One last thing. I'm out of order. Before we leave, we got to make sure we do our 11 box. Praise Yah. So today is day 12 of removing the 11 from our home, removing the sin, and we're doing our 11 box today, so let's make sure that we get that together and in order. And do our index cards. All right, so what we got? Let's see what we got first thing first. And make sure that we put day 12 in the corner. 12. Today we talked about worldly spells. Today is the 23rd, correct? No, today is the 24th. And once again, to Prophetess Carolyn, thank you for the invite. We enjoyed ourselves yesterday. We're excited to be supportive of what you're doing. And prayerfully, your um, your documentary makes it to the the Black, uh, I forget what it's called exactly, but the Black, um, I know you got a couple of them. It's probably going to hit already. But prayerfully, it makes it to that Black uh, showing. I forget what it is. What do you call those? The, uh, the film festival. And if it can be bought uh, by, by a certain group of people, then that means that it'll make its way to other things and you'll be able to do pretty well off of it. So hopefully we, we hope that that works well. But anyway, uh, worldly spells, worldly spells. Anybody got anything that we want to put in our on our index card? Any bullet points real quick for our index cards? And we'll get ready to take our leave for today. Dealing with worldly spells. Remove Babylonian influence. Hypocrisy. Anybody on any of the platform, let us know anything you want to put as a bullet point for today. Thank you, David. Appreciate you. And thank you for the reminder. I see you. 
How you doing, Coco? Anybody else right now? We got to remove Babylonian influence. We have hypocrisy. Be of character. Ooh. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Be of character. <laughs> Not of spells. Come on now. I wasn't re I wasn't ready. <coughs> Excuse me. Anything else? I know we lost a lot of people two Sundays were really long. So all righty. If not, <coughs> we'll leave it at that for today. If we need to revisit it, we can. Uh actually once it goes in the 11 box, I can't pull it out, but you know, we'll go over it again on Passover and we'll go over it again. Um, we'll actually kind of do a review of all these. Um, um kind of in reverse, actually, the way the Holy Spirit gave it, because we'll go one way with it, and then we'll kind of go over all of them on Passover, and then starting after Passover, we'll kind of start going on all of them in reverse to um to get back to the beginning of it. So it's gonna be very interesting. We'll see how that flows. I've never done anything quite like that before. Amen. So uh, we thank you guys. We appreciate you. So we're going to do our shout out. We'll explain how that works. Matter of fact, I'll explain how that works before we take our leave. So thank you, everybody. Again, we kind of announced what's coming up in the next few days. Um, April 9th is fast approaching. That'll be the beginning of um, our new year. Rosh Chedash uh, Nayasan. Um, and when that happens, Shabbat will be shifted as far as the Israelite calendar. Shabbat Shalom to everybody. If you're following the Israelite calendar uh, or the Aish Shalom, of the, the Shalom piece on the head of the week, if you're following the Gregorian calendar. So we, yeah, and everything else that we mentioned is there. You can always look at the website. Also, too, if you're on any of the platforms, you can always go to our link tree. And um, from there, you can look up our link tree and discover what um, you can discover in the link tree. What am I looking for? Oh, yeah, you can look in our link tree and find ways to reach out to stuff like that. We also started yesterday trying to make sure that we put... Um, present everybody and send out to everybody the form for if you want a Passover package that we were talking about. So if you want to fill out the form on there, if you didn't get it or whatever, just let me know and we'll send it. I'll try to put the link on our, um, in our different um, WhatsApp and Facebook and all that stuff, but you should be able to fill out the form for yourself. Um, I'll try to put the form on YouTube as well, the link for it as well. So um, if you guys are interested, remember we do have to have all that in pretty much by March 31st, uh, the evening of, if we can, so starting the rising of April 1st, we can kind of start putting orders in and stuff that we need to and uh, make sure that we we know exactly where we will be. We can plan, travel according, et cetera. Also, too, I found out that after the meeting, the women's meeting last night, I guess during it, that their sisters that are already decided they're going to meet up or families, if, if you will, that'll meet up the day before the women in red cruise to make sure that everybody's there and everybody can get their own time so december 5th so i guess there's going to be more details that come out about that once i have more details we'll make sure that um you know about that uh um so we'll, we'll get that information to you guys but thank you again we appreciate you we honor you i'm gonna go ahead and take my leave and uh, thank you guys for being on appreciate you once again um hopefully you got something out of this message so yeah and other than that Please, man, please, sir, have an excellent day. We give our honor and praise to the Most High. We give our praise and honor to him for my wife, the Honorable Amma, who lives a life that's able to be honored. As always, check her out on TikTok, YouTube, or website, and Pinterest at Bloom and Flourish, not A and D, the letter N, Bloom and Flourish. She is a healer, herbalist, chemist, and biologist, biologist by degree. We'll get ready to do our shout out on TikTok. If you've never done a shout out with us before, this is how it works. The music's going to begin to play. Once the music begins to play, we ask that if you can wait until it begins to play, if you can put your information in the chat. We do not, by your information, mean your phone number. We do not want your email address. We do not want your residential, residential address. We do not even want you to put your real name on here. What we are asking for, or your strong man name for that matter, what we're asking for is for you to put your country, province, or state that you're in, and then also put your city in the chat. And once you do that, that'll allow either for one of us, a moderator, ministerial staff, myself, or somebody to reach out to you, or you can reach out to us. You can see where other people are located and see for us, it's not just virtual, it's reality. And also then, if you are still interested, you can, of course, um, you know, or, you know, one of us will also be able to reach out to you, give you some information to fill out. And simultaneously, you can um look while the music is playing in the background and you'll see different slides so to speak that will pop up that you'll be able to see what's going on with us and maybe something piques your interest and in. maybe you're something for you your child your spouse um or something just in general that you'd like to be a part of 
So we thank you guys. Appreciate you once again. Uh, we look forward to talking to you guys very soon. And uh, you guys take care. And until next time I see you, prayerfully tomorrow, please remember, uh, uh, as always, your hashtag, that you are loved, you're necessary, you're majestic, you're fearfully and wonderfully made, and you, which is all of us working together, will be the reason why people who are in this system no longer have to be of it. Shalom, family. Peace. Have a great day. Don't forget your affirmations as well. Romans chapter 8, 1, 11, 18, 19, 28, and 37 through 39. All right. Peace, family. Take care.